Seth freaking Rollins with a super kick to Shinsuke Nakamura after the Kinshasa. My God. And then a just unbelievable super kick. Subscribe. It's the Payback WWE Review. It's still going on. And a twist and a turn. Seth Rollins. He might be in trouble. What's up, wrestling fans? We're live early. This has been a pretty good match so far, I think, but what do you guys think? shows for over 30 years never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security my safety my life was in danger at a wrestling show I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. Hey everybody, we got a brand new $17 donation tonight. <clears throat> and we are celebrating uh, Jimmy Buffett tonight as well. WWE Payback, Seth Rollins, a clothesline miss. Kinshasa, no! Insegiri! Domo Arigato! And uh, Shinsuke, yeah. What the? Wow, look at Shinsuke's ass. That looks nice. Let me hear it in the chat, everybody. Hit that like button if you guys can. We're watching the end of Payback here. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. And you afraid for your life at the wrestling show. You gonna fuck around and find out, you ho. Your Middle Eastern fuck daddy's got cash. CM Punk gonna scare you so bad. Gonna shit your pants, you old hag. My life was in danger. My life was in danger. Now your life is in danger. My life was Yo, in danger. Your life is in danger. My life was in your danger. Life is in danger. Yo, your life is in danger. My life was in danger. Life in danger. My life your was life in danger. Your life is in danger. By a stranger. By a ranger. Yo, your life is up. Your life is up. Your life is in danger. My life was in danger. Your life is in danger. My life was in danger. Life in danger. My life. Was in danger. My life was in danger. Yo, your life is in danger. Yo, your life is in danger. My life was in danger. This match.
match is crazy right now. Getting crazy right now. Yo, your life is in danger. My life was in danger. CM Punk, put your life, put your life in danger. My life was in danger. My life was in danger. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. the pussy era of the NFL, hence why they stopped this game. I miss the era of CTE, the concussions, <laughs> the death, and that's My life should... was in danger. Yo, I swear to God, if you don't stop, I will shoot you, Joe Cronin. Biggest, most jacked guy, and please let me come. <sighs> oh. God, feed me Omega. Unbelievable, man. Tony Khan feared for his life. I mean, listen, I, I, I saw most of that opening statement by Tony Khan, and I thought it was all right. I was kind of in shock still at just like, this is really happening. Like, this is really happening, bro. Um, but then when Tony Khan said, man, I feared for my life. Guys, we're watching a gem right now with Seth Rollins and Shinsuke Nakamura. I'm just going to listen to some of this really quickly because this has been a good match. And Seth got him. <clears throat> with the curb stomp. I thought it was an okay match. I thought that was a good match. What's the match of the night, guys, in the chat? Everybody right now, tell me right now, what is the match of the night in the chat right now? <clears throat> this match kind of crawled to the finish line at the very end here, but it it, it was pretty good. I want to say that the tag team match with the with all the blood and everything might have been the best match of the night, but that's kind of what I think. Unbelievable. Man, that Kinshasa, that looked crazy. I thought I thought Trish and Becky did pretty good to open it. But what was the best match? I mean, they did all right to open it, you know? What was the match of the night? I'm going to put the poll up right now. All right. There you go. That was payback, guys. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about a lot of things tonight. We're going to talk about WWE payback and what we thought of that. We're going to talk about the fact that Tony Khan said his life was in danger and that Tony Khan feared for his safety in life earlier today. Unbelievable. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. That is kind of shocking to hear, man. But uh, Tony Khan feared for his life. Wow. Wow. Tony Khan feared for his life. 
fired CM Punk. That's crazy. That is some crazy stuff, guys. We're going to play the clips. We're going to talk about WWE Payback tonight. What was the match of the night? Is there a match on the poll that you don't see that you think should be there? Let me know if there's one that's missing that you thought was worthy of it, that should have been there, that isn't there on the poll. So far, 86 votes. We're just starting it out. Yeah, I think Judgment Day carried a lot of the action tonight, which is not a surprise, which is, you know, they've been doing that here at WWE. Judgment Day has been really, uh, you know, on top of things, crushing it and doing their thing. So, quite honestly, you know, much, much expected at this point, to be honest. Um, we do have the donations on. Super Chat's available. What did you think of WWE Payback? Usually on a Saturday night, it's monetized this. But tonight, it's going to be a payback review. We're going to talk wrestling all night. Um, and, well, and we'll talk anything. It, we, we will sort of devolve into non-wrestling if you guys want. We'll talk about Jimmy Buffett. Obviously, you guys have known on my show over the years, we've talked a lot about Jimmy Buffett and done some funny little Jimmy Buffett things. And for those that don't know, when I was, when I was eight years old, my dad died. My mother got a boyfriend, and the boyfriend was kind of a crazy, drunken weirdo. But he loved Jimmy Buffett. And Jimmy Buffett, you know, kind of irritated me a little bit at that time because I was, he was a drunken fool and he always talked about Jimmy Buffett. But after a little bit, I liked the songs. And then as I got older, I really just, it, it's almost like I loved it. It's, it's weird. It's like if a prisoner had to listen to something and uh, it was awful, but then they grew to love it because of that for some reason, if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, man, I loved Jimmy Buffett for years since I was nine, really. Um, and we'll, you know, mention that later, but let's get into payback. We'll get into this night. Um, and, uh, right now it looks like that tag titles match is running away with it, man. That tag titles match is running away with it. You can give me your, your score in the chat with what you thought about tonight. Feel free to do it. And if you want to donate Streamlabs, the Streamlabs link is pinned to the top. We're going to be giving somebody points or giving people points here on the show tonight. So if you think I'm making a good point, you think I've been good all night, you give me the points, baby. I'll take the points all night long. You want to give them to, you know, Omar or somebody who else is on the show. You want to give them to Luke Rojas or somebody like that. Uh, you feel free to do it, man. But the most important thing right now, guys, is that you guys click that like button and help me pump up this show. So stick the thumb up my ass right now, guys. Share this video. Stick the thumb up my ass. We need you sharing like crazy, guys, because I'm shadow banned like you wouldn't believe on this freaking platform. It's almost unbelievable, dude. It really is crazy. Shinsuke and Seth was pretty good, but it wasn't It wasn't great. Cody Rhodes comes out just to introduce Jay. They basically use Rhodes as a middleman for the return of Jay. Yeah, that was weird. I'm surprised that we didn't do more with Cody Rhodes tonight. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. I'm surprised that we did not do, that they did not do more with Cody Rhodes tonight. I am surprised. That is weird. I'm surprised. Super chat party. Super chat. Awesome PPV. I actually enjoyed it and I love the push LA night is getting night versus Cena. Yeah, that would have been cool. They sort of like teased it for a second, then they didn't know. But, uh, you know, if they don't have anything for L.A. Knight, I mean, I guess if they're th are you really thinking a good guy versus good guy, Cena versus L.A. Knight, I don't know. I, I don't think they're really thinking that, but it's it's not unheard of that they would think of that. Ghost from the Coast in the chat. Guys, if you're in the chat, hit that like button. We love you, and I want to get you hard. Giving it a 9.5, Wow. Wayward Legacy, loving the show. I wish I, I wish I loved it that much, man. I wasn't that much in it. Shiva Jones says I have to give wrestling an extended break. Yeah, well, Tony Khan was in fear for his life, and that's why he fired CM Punk. Tony Khan fired CM Punk because he feared for his life, guys. I've been going to wrestling shows for over thirty years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. Yeah, I think they forgot. They, they didn't remember the cues of when somebody was coming out from the back. Uh, broken Gazamania. I feel like that's what it was. I could be 
I don't know if I missed something else, but um, yeah, I'm not sure. Super chat party. Jay and Joe's world. Thank you so much. Phil screwed Phil. No wrestling organization wants him go back to UFC. Yeah, I don't think CM Punk is going to get taken back to UFC. I think he's done there. But uh, Jay and Joe's world, thank you for being the first two two five dollar donations. Appreciate that. Yeah, I don't know it. I don't know. My life was in danger. Tony Khan fired CM Punk because he felt his life was in danger. My life was in danger. I've been going to wrestling shows for over thirty years. Wow. Never. In all that time, have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show? I mean, I, I that is crazy to me. I did you really think you really thought your life was in danger because CM Punk threw a nutty in the backstage? Like, I, I like it's that. I I did not hear that opening. I heard ha- halfway through the opening on di- on a collision tonight. Um, I did not hear that part. Um, that is bizarre. <laughs> like, that's a bizarre thing, bro. You felt your life was in danger. What was the match of the night tonight? WWE payback. How do you feel about LA Knight and the push and everything that's going on with LA Knight? That is the top donation from Jay and Joe's World. I'm going to be joined tonight by everybody, guys. I'll have the Discord open in a few. We'll have everybody who wants to be on tonight. Um, I know that we'll be talking a lot of wrestling, WWE Payback, and then we'll be talking about AEW as well a little bit, and Tony Khan and firing CM Punk. We're going to talk about WWE mostly right now, and then later we'll talk a little bit about Jimmy Buffett, and we'll talk. We'll have some fun. We'll, we'll have some drink. I hope everybody's drinking tonight. I hope you guys get hammered break into your family's houses, steal their credit cards, and you donate a $1,000, and I'll take that money, and I'll go down the street, and I'll buy 700 bottles of margaritas, and we'll drink them all until liver failure, all right, because that's how committed I am at this point. By the way, speaking of money, there is a brand new $17 donation, guys. I made a brand new, yeah, $17, yeah, donation. And the donation might be something like that. Yeah. So check it out. Give it a try tonight. The brand new $17 donation. You can only do it by using Streamlabs pinned to the top of the chat up above or Super Chat, whatever you want to do. John Cream, what up? John, you cream on me all you want, brother. Uh, Tony likes to take Coke and CM Punk straight edge. It was never going to work, says six. Ixui? I don't know how to say your name, bro, but you got a great you got a great comment. I'll just call you six. Cause I'm dude, I can barely read a book as it is, okay? All right, we can't be too crazy. Yo, Big Bad Ads is here. Everybody give it up for Big Bad Freaking Ads, the OG. J Rod's here. CM Punk is not a really uh, CM yeah, CM Punk is not really a big problem to me. Other people are are the damn problem, and Tony Khan had some balls that the company wouldn't be uh, such a mess if Tony Khan had balls. Okay. You know, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure about all that, but I, I am shocked that Tony Khan feared for his life. Like, that is crazy. All right, let's get this WWE Payback show on the road. Um, guys, in the chat, everybody right now in the chat, Becky Lynch, Tris Stratus, thumbs up or thumbs down? Right now, let me know in the chat. Right thumbs up or thumbs down. Becky Lynch versus Trish. The opening match, it was a cage match. And I thought it was pretty good. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. 90s car guy. That's because you got to donate the new $17 donation to get a real shout out 90s car guy. I got to fucking keep my show on the air, bro. I got to keep doing this. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got to plug the donations, brother. I got to plug them or I, I don't have any sponsors. Nobody will sponsor me. I'm too vulgar and stuff. Nobody will sponsor me. Nobody likes me, dude. The WWE said they wouldn't hire me because I was too vulgar. I mean, come on. Wow. Those thumbs up and down there. This is rough. I might have to put a poll up again because that's 
Damn, bro, that's rough. I don't know, man. That's that's rough. I mean, listen, if somebody fears for their life in real life, I'm not going to try to make fun of them too much. Like, I'm, you know what I'm saying? That's not nice to do. I, I get it. I, I But it, it just sounds wrong to me. Like, was seriously? CM Punk was that bad, dude? That you feared for your life like that? That must have been... I mean, bro, that's crazy. Felt like my life was in danger watching that match, says Peter Sandful. Yo, Peter, thanks, man. Uh, what's up, dude? Chase Weatherwalks is here. He's a member. Chase Weatherwalks. Thank you for being a member, Chase. Uh, Andre Lavandero's here. He's a member as well. Hi, Andre. Shout out to Mickey K9. He's a green member as well. Who else is here that's a member? Nightbot's a member. Louis Erdaneta. And uh, who else? Mr. Pico Boulevard, Jag De Panzer, and the ghost from the coast, Joe Bishop. We got a lot of members in the chat right now. We're gonna be going. We're gonna be taking a ton of calls in a minute too. By the way, we're gonna have everybody stopping by. Yeah, everybody getting high. Yeah, everybody getting by drunk. Yeah. Okay, there's a brand new seventeen dollar donation. Give it a try. The brand new seventeen dollar yeah donation. It's kind of like the yes movement, but it's it's not. Punk, uh, he feared for his life. Now Punk doesn't get paid. Yeah, I I I think you're right that there's a difference between being in danger and actually fearing for your life. Like, I mean, what what are we, Bruiser Brody? Now Bruiser Brody should have feared for his life. You know. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger Jesus. at a wrestling show. That is crazy. My life was in danger. <laughs> Dude, your life was in danger. Play the song. Play the song again. You won't have was in danger Play the at a song. wrestling show. You afraid for your life at the wrestling show You gonna fuck around and find out you ho Your Middle Eastern fuck daddy's got cash CM Punk gonna scare you so bad Gonna shit your pants you old hag My life was in danger Your life is in danger My life, my life was in danger Now your danger. life is in danger My life was now in your danger. life is in danger My life was, was in, in danger, danger. In danger. Yo, your life is in danger. My Tony life Khan. was in danger. My life was in danger. My life your was life in danger. Is in danger. Why you stranger? Why you ranger? Life is in your life is your. Your life is up. Your life is in danger. My life was in danger. Your life is in danger. My life was Yo, your in life danger. Is in danger. My, my life was in life danger. Is in danger. See, I'm punk gonna kill you like my a life was in. <laughs> Bro, that's. <laughs> Dude, I can't believe he said his life was in danger. I couldn't even take it real. I'm sorry, guys. I know we got to get into payback. I know we got to talk about payback. I know we got matches to go through. I know there's a bunch of people on Discord waiting. I understand. Like, I totally get it, man. But I'm, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry, but... <laughs> until last Sunday years never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security my safety my life was in danger at a wrestling <laughs> show I don't think anybody should feel that way at work I don't think the people I work with should feel that way and I had to make a very difficult choice today it came oh my God. at the recommendation of a discipline committee <laughs> I can't even believe he said that dude Oh my God, bless him! I, I'm so sorry, Tony Khan, if you're watching this. I'm sorry, dude. I have, I listen. I've been in situations where I thought I, w I feared that something was going to happen. Someone's going to stab me or kill me or whatever. It's not cool. People can get PS PTSD from it. It's a horrible experience if you've experienced it or anger, violence around you. Some, you know, I, I understand that. I'm so sorry to everybody who's been in that situation. I've been in it too. I get it. But I I can't take it seriously. I'm sorry. I have to laugh. I I, I'm, I apologize. But this is just, bro. This
I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. <laughs> I've been producing them on this network for nearly four years. Never. In Can all that you imagine if Vince McMahon... <laughs> Can you imagine if Vince McMahon came out and was like, I've never been involved in, in all my life of promoting WWF over 25, 35 years now. I've never, I actually felt that my life was in danger. Like, can you imagine? It sounded like Alex Jones, but you know what I mean, dude? Just, I'm just trying to picture Vince come out and say that his life was in danger. Like, Oh my god. <laughs> Dude. Oh my god. I don't know why, but it's getting funnier. Oh my god, let's play a donation. Oh my god, I'm gonna pass out. I'm gonna die on the air. Oh my god. Nine bucks for a fuck. Someone donated nine. I'm getting hard. I got nine inches inside of your wife. But Varian Savage with no way Yeah, you suck on it! I haven't bowed a WWE PPV since when Austin came back and faces Owens LA Knight and the Judgment Day had brought me back and Cena I'd not the fucking goat no one will be bigger than Austin fuck all marks. <laughs> Wow. That's pretty crazy. LA Knight and the Judgment Day had brought me back. Really? That's pretty crazy. Let me just um Latvarian Savage. Latvarian Latvarian, thank you so much for the donation. That's actually the top donation of the stream now. Latvarian, I'm putting you up top here with me everybody. Everybody say hi to Latvarian because he's the top donator. Latvarian drops the 9 bucks. Mucho dinero. Buenos noches. Estupido gringo. Um, I think I spelled that wrong, but whatever. I have GED. Um, thank you so much for the $9, man. After working all week, man, 50 hours or whatever, it's been all week, 60 hours almost, really. Even though this is kind of like work, this is fun. Like, this is funny tonight. WWE Payback, the cage match opened up. Becky and Trish did, I thought, a pretty solid job because they had a lot of people on their side loving it. So I thought they did a pretty good job of opening the show. I didn't love it. I'm not a big cage match guy, and we'll talk more about that afterwards, but you know, it, it was all right for them, in my opinion, and I think a lot of people did kind of enjoy it. But it does seem like um, you know, the tag team match really stole the show tonight. It was kind of the most exciting thing. The crowd was the most into it. It was chaotic. It almost had the vibes of a W, uh, an AEW like stampede thing or something like that, which is weird because they got that from you know the WWE doing all their backstage crazy stuff, brawling all over the place. But <clears throat> you know, it felt like WWE took it back a little bit tonight. You know what I mean? TK, give me a title shot, or I'll or I'll beat the shit out of you in the locker room. Um, I don't know, man. It might that's it could definitely be a true thing. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. I can't believe that was really said. I just can't believe it. I cannot believe that. Um, um, really quickly, I just want to chime into the uh, Discord <clears throat> Real quickly, um, oh, Rostov is not, oh, no, wait, um, well, no, uh, Rojas isn't in there. I thought maybe Rojas would be in there. Is hey, really quick, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to, I got to pump in real quick. I'm going to go, I'm going to, I'm going to leave in a second. I'll be right back, but I just wanted to bump in really quickly. Um, what did everybody, really quickly, rapid fire, what did you guys think of, uh, Becky Lynch and, uh, Becky, uh, of, uh, and Trish? <clears throat> Fucking dog shit. Really? Dog shit? Slightly, slightly below average. All right. I had it at a, I had it at like a good. five or a six out of ten myself. Good, yeah. good I, match, I it, wrong I, fucking place of the card. Yeah, it it would have been better if it was in the middle of the card, but it was I I'd say yeah about six and a half seven. Kind of a 10. slow start, sort of to start the yeah. show with that. It was a slow build in the beginning of the match. That's why I was sort of kind of like, ooh, this is not going to end well. I mean, the finish was good, but it's just you know. 
I felt some people liked it though. I, I thought I thought some people did like it. So it was like I feel like fifty percent of the audience kind of like like enjoyed it, and then the other fifty percent didn't like it at all. And that's why I think you're seeing about seventeen percent of the people voting above here in in this chat that they sort of that that it was close to like one of the better matches of the night. So I didn't really care for it that much. I thought maybe I was just being pessimistic, but it sounds like you guys kind of agree with that. I thought it was all right, but. You know, could, it was like the main event of a, of, a, of one of the Raws, or you know, that they would do with the yeah. women. It was like a main event for Sunday Night Heat. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's what it felt like. Damn. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of John Cena hosting the night? Awesome. Trash. No, I, here's the thing. I thought he did a pretty good job. Oh, nerdy, you're hard no, to hear. What's wrong with your mic? Way, it was the great way. Nerdy, to build. you were low as the motherfucker. Bro. You are low. It was nerdy. a great way to build up LA Knight, okay, to become more of a, a serious superstardom type of uh, wrestler, okay. I'm I'm down can, with that. Anything can they can I say do this to about LA Knight? Yes. If LA Knight does not win the fucking Royal Rumble and win the world title from Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, I am going to fucking give up life. It's not going to happen. <laughs> like, dude, they yeah. still want it. Bullshit. Special. It needs to happen. Yeah. They can later. Tease, they, can later. Tease, they can tease it against can... Cody Rhodes. Let me tell you okay. something. Just... He'll be one of the... Yeah. Well, hang hang to, out here. I'll it be, needs I'll, to be Cody. If it ain't LA Knight, it needs to be fucking Cody. I'll be back. You stay here, Bird. I got a question for you, you cocksucker Bird. I love you. Um, I'll be back in a second. All right, so there we go. We chimed in a little bit on the Discord. I wanted to hear what everybody had to say so we could kind of like get a feel for the opening match, and we'll go back to Discord in just a few minutes. Let's go back to the donations real quickly as Tony Khan continues to fear for his life after firing CM Punk from AEW. Could he be coming to WWE? We're never going to hear the end of it now, guys. Um, but Shinsuke Nakamura, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, it's not happening. D. Welsh says... D. Welsh says, nah, man, it's Cody and Roman, main event of WrestleMania 40. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. Damn, that is just stunning stuff. That's stunning stuff. Um, let's go back to the donations real quickly. I'm plugging them like crazy tonight, but we're talking about WWE Payback. Guys, out of 10, what would you give WWE Payback tonight? Vote on the poll up above, and then above the poll is Streamlabs if you want to donate. Also in the chat right now, give me your rating for WWE Payback. Love to see the ratings pop up. Let them fly in the chat. Let's see what's going on. And also hit that like button so we can get 200 likes. Latvarian number nine dollars top donation. Let's hey, play the donos. Hey, Bullfrog is a moron. Picharo. <laughs> Scissor me, Joe. Yo, Picharo, how you doing, man? Let's see what you think. Why couldn't Tony Khan fire CM Punk the next day? Why did it have to be the same day where they are having a show in Chicago? What did he expect? I think. And dude, shame on Chicago. Why are they supporting a cancer to the company that did that to himself? Listen, man. When you th you heard Tony Khan, he feared for his life. I mean, I believe, don't you believe him? I mean, why would you? You would only fire a guy when there's a big Chicago show if he really feared for his life. Tony Khan literally feared for his life. Lots of sevens in the chat, by the way. Lots of sevens in the chat. Tony Khan literally feared for his life. Otherwise, he would never have fired the guy the night before a big show in a huge pay-per-view. Like, dude, the guy legit feared for his life. Look at Look at the numbers we're getting in the chat. Wow, man, we are seeing some, I would say the average is about a seven. Yeah, it looks like we're seeing sevens, lots of sevens. Sixes, eights, sevens, fours, fives, but mostly sevens and, and sixes. So I can round up to a seven for you if you'd like. But, Charles, thank you for that donation. Question, I think we've we've entered the pussy era of the NFL, hence why they stopped this game. I miss the era of the CTE, the concussions, <laughs> the death. The deaths. Uh, reminder that tomorrow is our NFL L NFL show, our Sunday NFL show tomorrow. Uh, we're going to talk about things for a little bit, little predictions, hear from you guys about your teams and your favorite stuff. We're going to be live on the channel. I really don't know what time I'm going to do it, 100%, probably around 7 or 8 p.m. at night, my guess. I don't 100% know that, but so look for me tomorrow night around Eastern time, 7, 8 p.m., Eastern time um, for the little bit of an NFL preview. So Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus, I'd probably give it like a six out of 10. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was an all right opening, but I just thought 
you know, it could have been better. I'd probably give the tag team titles match an eight out of ten. Like it was, it was, it seemed even better. Be, and maybe it was an eight point five out of ten. I, I really think I might give it an eight point five just because I saw Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens, a guy who's in about as good a shape as me. I feel like. Um, I mean, I'm 210 pounds. I think Kevin Owens is like 220, 20, 230. He's like my size. Me and Kevin Owens are both, I think, 39 years old. So, dude, for me to get up, I mean, I could do it. I could get up and jump off of something, do a swanton. I could do a lot of things. But, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i out of shape compared to Owens probably. You know, let's be real, but even though uh, whatever. So the fact that that guy, a father like me at 39 years old, his sort of bullish size not a Shawn Michaels exactly you know climbing up to that guardrail a slippery steel railing at the top of a ramp using a fan to climb up on it and to do an 18 foot 12 foot whatever it was it felt like 18 feet it may have only been 10 or 12 or 13 feet it felt like 18 feet uh to do a swanton off of that and he kind of looked like he might have landed on his wrist a bit and hurt it I don't know if he did or not but it felt like he might have a little bit uh, that is impressive to me. That's um, I give huge points to that. Plus, he got busted open Terry Funk style. They wore Pittsburgh Penguins jerseys. A couple of probably Montreal Canadiens fans wore Pittsburgh Penguins jerseys to pop the crowd. Uh, so I give them respect for that as well, man. Even you know, I mean, as a Boston Bruins fan, quite honestly, being a hockey fan is weird. Being a hockey fan is like having a brother or sister that you fight with all the time. But when it's time to sort of unite, you know, you stick up for your brother and sister. Like, hey, I'm allowed to fight with them, but you guys aren't. You know what I mean? That's my brother and my sister. Don't mess around with them. That's what hockey fans are like. Even though Bruins fans and Montreal fans and stuff like that, we hate each other. And, and many, fa you know, we have these rivalries. We hate each other to death almost. But for some reason, we can all come together on hockey. Because we're like, yeah, you get it. I get it. Like, we don't like each other, but I respect your team. There's a weird respect, I feel like, among hockey fans in a way. So, like, I can see them being like, yo, let's put on these fucking Pittsburgh jerseys. Lemieux, like, it's legendary. Pittsburgh, let's go. I don't know why, but I have less of a problem with that. But, like, I could never put on a New York Yankees shirt. You know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't do that. I would be like, if they were like, we're in New York, put on the Yankees shirt. I'd be like, fuck you. Uh-uh. But if we were in New York and they were like, hey, put on a Rangers jersey, I'd be like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll put on a Rangers jersey. Like, it's weird. I don't, I, why is hockey like that? But to me, hockey's like that. It's more like, yeah, you hate the other teams and you got a rivalry, but there's something, you still wear any hockey jersey proudly. It's weird. I don't know why, but I feel that way as a hockey fan. Maybe you guys feel that way too. I don't know as hockey fans. So I, I got pumped when I saw the. The hockey jerseys come out, and they started whipping them with sticks and shit. Um, so that match was that was fun for me. I had a good time watching that match, to be honest. Would have been better if they were in Boston and they were Bruins jerseys, but uh, hey, black and gold, same thing, right? i just pretend. They stole our colors, by the way. Look it up. I'm going to leave this briefcase right here. Why does my head hurt so bad? Oh, my God. Right oh, and Jesus. Eddie Chaos. Yo, Eddie Chaos is in the chat. What up, Eddie? How you doing, brother? I miss you guys. You guys are the best. Without you, we'd be screwed. Oh, shit. Jay and Joe's World is dropping the infamous 1999 donation. Remember, there's a brand new $17 donation tonight, too. Run, you Hey, rest in peace to Jimmy Buffett, guys. I'm going to talk about Jimmy Buffett later. I, I Listen, I love Jimmy Buffett, dude. We're losing so many good people. Um, it, 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 it really is starting to hurt, like, seeing all the the loss we've had. It's It sucks, bro. Run, you fat bitch. Love you, Joe. Appreciate everything Thank you, you do, man. man. That is so nice of you, Jay and Joe's World. Thank you so much for... Uh, that is a, might be the biggest amount I think you've dropped uh, before. Jay and Joe's World. Uh, by the way, I like the channel, uh, Jay and Joe's World. I like what you guys are doing. Jay and Joe's World. We're dropping the 1999. That's the top donor of the stream. In a few minutes, I'm going to be going to Discord. We'll get everybody's opinion on the show. We're going to have everybody on. I'm sure Rostoff is going to be here. Uh, Rojas is going to be here. Hey and Joe's World? No, Jay and Joe's World. 
Top Dono of the stream. Um, we got some news coming out of Payback, WWE News, WWE Rumors, WWE News. That stuff's coming out. A little bit of the press conference. We're going to have some takes there as well. Plus an update with the uh, AEW situation. We're going to continue reviewing this show, though. Um, and, of course, Tony Khan fired CM Punk and says he literally feared for his life in the backstage fight that took place between CM Punk and everybody in the crew. And So this is all true that CM Punk flipped out and said, I fucking quit, and flipped over tables and stuff. Like, oh, my God, bro, it's all true, and Tony Khan feared for his life. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. That is... That is crazy to me. I just can't get enough of that, dude. I can't believe that's real. Bro, you feared for your life. Oh, my God. I can't wait. You know, Listen, I haven't listened to Cornette in a couple of weeks. I cannot wait to hear what Cornette says about this, guys. I would, I would, and I would react to it and play it on the show if, if it wasn't for him attacking my channel uh, because it will be funny. Shit bum. Tony was scared of the guy who lost to Michael Jackson. <clears throat> he he. I, you know, I don't know. El Tapo, I, I just, that is hilarious news. I don't know, man. Jay and Joe's world, thank you. I wish the video leaked. You know, the video still might leak. It's very early, guys. I mean, the, the venue has the video. So it's only a matter of time, I would think, for this fucking video to leak. You know what would be great is if all of this was a work and Punk jumped the guardrail on Sunday night at All Out and attacked somebody, attacked Tony Khan. Oh, my God. Oh, the new donation. make them say yeah. The new donation. You will make them say yeah. yeah. You will make them say yeah. Yeah. You will make them say yeah. yeah. You know I'll make them say yeah. yeah. You know I'll make them say yeah. yeah. You know I'll make them say yeah. yeah. Just took a massive shit. I feel like my life is in danger. At Payback, good show tonight. Now for my shout out. Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, he's a beast. And he's on YouTube. He's the 90s car guy. Guy, guy. Yeah! The 90s car guy. Fuck yeah, he dropped the brand new $17 donation. Yeah! Love it, bro. Thank you so much for supporting my stupid show. I really appreciate it, man. Uh, you guys, thank you for the donations. You're keeping the lights on. We're going to find out if uh, Joe Cronin has power by next week. Uh, but this is helping. Ark Nike, how you doing, man? MJF is the best in AEW, says Todd Golden. Well, it's the, the bidding war of 2024, is he coming to WWE? Is CM Punk coming to WWE? Let's look at the poll and find out what your favorite match of the night is. See if it's still what we thought it was. And ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, the tag team titles match is still leading the way. 430 votes. And almost 50% of you guys are giving it right to the tag match. So it looks like that's where we're taking things to the tag match, man. I don't blame you. I don't blame you one bit. Uh, that is a, a, a big dono, too. Thank you for the $17. Yeah, 90s car guy. 90s car guy is a beast. Who's the top dono though? Jay and Joe's world. We got to get you we'll get you on there Jay and Joe's world. Let me get my belt out. Let me get my belt out Jay and Joe's world. The 90s car guy. I thought John Cena, what did everybody think of John Cena's officiating? You know, honestly, dude, I thought The Miz cut another good promo tonight. I thought The Miz was good on the mic again. Listen, I've been giving Miz a lot of shit, guys. I have been crapping on The Miz all the time, and I'm, I got to be honest. I got to give him credit. These past three weeks, The Miz has been gold on the mic. You know what I'm saying? Jay and Joe's World with the top dono. They could take home the JCS 
Digital Championship tonight. There's the JCS title. And, of course, the JCS title was created before Grimm's Toy Show's logo was created. And then my creator of my logo went and designed Grimm, Grimm's Toy Show's logo, and he used the same fucking font, which, as you guys know, spawned all the cocksuckers from Grimm's community to say that I ripped off his logo when actually my logo existed first. So, Grimm, I swear to God, if you ever have the balls, Grimm, if you're... If you're not feeding that whale of a whore you're with now, and you got a few minutes, Grimm's Toy Show, I want to face you again. I've been to your house. I've been to your rings. I've had matches at your place in New Jersey. But the the next match we have should be for the logo. Whoever loses can't say JCS or G GTS or whatever anymore. That's what we'll do. But do you have the balls to do that? Can you take two minutes away from feeding that Hamburglar another sandwich and maybe face me in a promo in your video the other day? You called me a loser YouTuber. Am I really a loser YouTuber? Well, you lost your wife. So how about that, Grim? You, wa you lost your wife. You lost your life, Grim. So who's the loser now, Joe Cronin or Dave? Who's the loser now, Dave? Is it Dan or Dave? You tell me, both our names begin with D, but only one of us is a dickhead. How about that, Dave? All right, let's drop the names. Let's drop the bullshit. Let's drop the Joe. Let's drop the Grim, and let's just be Dan and Dave. How about that, Grim? Dave? Me and you, okay, and you keep that heifer at home, and me and you step into the squared circle, brother, and we find out who gets to keep this logo, JCS, GTS, all right, once and for all, somebody is going to be lone standing with the best logo in the world because you know it is, and mine was created first, you scumbag, and you reached out to my designer to get your own design when you saw mine, and it looks just like yours, you scumbag, scum piece. Oh, I want to choke you so bad. But you know what? I still have my wife, and I still have my my, my life is in, intact. Your life is in shambles, brother. Huh? That Hey, we bought a new house. We bought a big new house, but guess what? Oh, I can't live there anymore because <laughs> she found out, didn't she, Dave? So here's the thing. Joe Cronin versus Grimm's Toy Show, JCS, GTS. Make it happen. I will find a way to your house, motherfucker. I will find a way to your ring one way or another. If I'm invited, if I'm not invited, if I have to hide in the woods all night, I'll show up, bro, and we'll make the video of this century. I already eliminated you from that rumble of yours, that memorial battle for, for Grandpa who's gone from this world, but uh, you'll be gone from this world if we ever step in the ring again together. Anyway, let's move on back to WWE and WWE payback and the fact that Tony Khan is scared for his life. My life was in danger. Life was in danger. Let's go back to the donations real quick. Shit bomb. Mr. Pico Boulevard. If feared for life in London, how he feel in Chicago? <laughs> I don't know, man. There's a lot of stabbings in Chicago, uh, in uh, London. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you're London. Don't misunderstand, bro. Um, London is. Uh, there might be a lot of shootings in Chicago, but there's a lot of stabbings. And quite honestly, with the way the bullet goes in and the way a knife goes in, it's not much different. You know, it's not too. It's not too different. To be honest, hey, hey, Haskell, thank you so much for uh, tweeting out about my show being live and everything else. You know, really, really, uh, really appreciate it, bro. Um, yeah, I thought Cena did an okay job. I mean, he was a little goofy. You know, see, the the cheerleader Cena is kind of goofy. You know, I'm just, I'm not into it. I don't like it. I, I know it, it is what it is. He's being the good guy face, John Cena. I'm the referee. I'm the middle guy, whatever. I get it. I just not a big fan of Cena. Like, like, Hey, I'm the host guy. And you guys, I mean, he did, he did his thing. It's just not, it's not tip top Cena, but he did his job being there and whatever else. I thought the cage match was a six out of 10. <clears throat> I didn't think it should have opened the show. I think it was a long match, bro. It was like 30 minutes or something like that. 28 minutes. It was long. Then John Cena came out, cut an okay promo. The Miz and blah, blah, blah. LA Knight and The Miz had a match that was also not great. It was just entertaining because you like LA Knight. So I would say that The Miz and LA Knight was also a 6 out of 10. 
I'd probably give the edge to Becky and Trish because it was a cage, I guess. But I like, I don't know, John Cena was the ref and LA Knight's cool. And so, I, I don't know, man. It's, I thought that was about a 6 out of 10 too, to be honest. It was different, though. It was shorter, more to the point. Then the PWO came out. The Pussy World Order uh, came out. <clears throat> and uh, Austin Theory wrestled. Austin Theory really is... Austin Theory and Ricky Starks are, are kind of reminding me of each other in AEW and WWE. They're both kind of fancy, and they think they're so cool, and they're just the cool guys, and that's kind of their gimmick. I'm the cool heel guy. Yeah. Like, that's like that's all it is. You know, that's their gimmick and whatever. You know, that's been what's going on. We're going to go to the Discord in a few minutes and join everybody. We're going to have everybody on the show in a few minutes. So stick around for that. Um, <clears throat> you know, but then the tag team match came on, and that was the best match of the night to me. 8.5 out of 10. Um, really enjoyed that match. <clears throat> Cody Rhodes came out, did a segment. That's eh, whatever. Um, then Rhea Ripley had a match with Raquel Gonzalez. It was okay, but you know, forgettable. She wins, whatever. It was all right. Another, there was a lot of sixes. Then Shinsuke and Seth, man. I mean, it felt like a fast night. It really felt like the night, uh, progressed quickly. It was a, you know, it just felt like a three hour show that was quick and it was probably longer than that, but it just felt fast, man. It felt like we cruised through this show tonight. I don't know if everybody else felt that same way. But I did feel that way. I don't know, ma'am. Um, Lima says, is WWE having a press conference tonight? You know, I don't think they are. I'm going to look right now. I'll tell you right now. Um, WWE. <clears throat> I don't see them doing it, but it, if, it, if they were doing it, it's probably boring. But they're not doing it, from what I can tell. So, I mean, kudos to WWE for holding off, you know what I mean? Because it's like, what are you going to do, a press conference for payback? It was a quick show, you know, it was a little show. There, I, I don't think they needed to do a press thing for this, so I'm glad they didn't. You know, save it, keep it a little more special, you know, because you don't need to do it every time. <clears throat> In every situation, you know. Thank you to all the mods who have been modding tonight, too. Um... Haskell, what's up, man? How you guys doing? Why are they called the PWO? Why are they called the PWO? I don't even know what that would... Where did that come from? What is that? The Pussy World Order? I mean, what's going on? I don't know if I, like, missed something. I obviously missed something on the show to not know what the hell is going on with that. Um, right now, the JCS Digital Championship is on the line tonight. So far, Jay and Joe's World is the top donation. And also, as far as AEW goes, Tony Khan feared for his life in the fight with CM Punk. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. Kind of bizarre. Kind of bizarre. Fat Blackle. Whoa! Yo, why are you fucking calling me a black girl? Because I'm eating. Bro, I just I just get in here and you guys are calling each other black girls. Yo, they're all gonna. They're, I don't know what to do with these children. What? I don't know, Jesse. Jesse does not like this immature humor. He oh. wants us to start talking about cutting ourselves in the shower. <laughs> Yo. Well, let me, let me, let me, um, let me. Well, don't be scared like Tony Khan, guys. Don't be scared like Tony Khan and CM Punk. I've been going to wrestling for shows life. for over thirty years. Oh. Never in all that time have I ever felt I can't until breathe. last Sunday that was just perfect. That my security, my safety, perfect. my life was in danger. Awesome. My life wrestling show was in danger. <laughs> my life was in danger. He's a billionaire. Yeah. It's his show, and his life was in danger. My life was I in danger. Even hear, I, I couldn't even breathe. hear the clip. My life was in danger. His life was in danger. <laughs> My life was in danger. His life was in danger. What do you, okay, you know what that I thought his staff was in danger. Uh, Jesus. The, the fact that he said that proves to me that Maybe there's a lack of security back in the backstage. Yeah, I mean, yeah, dude, they really should. They should hire Ryback. Ryback yeah. would have set this guy. I wouldn't have let him. Said, I hey, wouldn't have never. Hey, do you want me to hurt you again? Do you want me to hurt you again? I they will. Never this time it won't Khan. be an accident. 
they never would have gotten to my boss if I'd been there. I would have fucked them up. I would have fucked them up. Yeah. Hire me, Con. This guy has fucked. ears. <laughs> I would have gave this guy a cauliflower ear for the fifth fucking time. I would have done it. That line kills me every time when I hear him go, uh, you know, they just look at the fucking guy's ears. I mean, who wouldn't want to hurt him? <laughs> yeah, bro. Who, like, who, he would, would, who wouldn't want to punch this guy? He really, like... He needs he needs security. I mean, it's I mean, he really was scared for his life. That's crazy to me. I can't believe that. Didn't they have like the ECW security for a little while? Like the guys that used to do the ECW arena back when they first started ECW uh, uh, AEW. I mean, yeah, they had done. security back then. I mean, why, WWE had security for so long. Why don't you have two security they still guards? Do. Joe, do you think CM Punk got in in Tony Khan's face and literally like he actually? No, now I believe that. No, no, no. Him? Now yeah. I I initially did not believe that. Now I believe that. Now I, I yeah, dude, I I, I, that, I believe yeah. he flipped over the monitors. They said he flipped over monitors in a table and knocked over stuff. So I think he knocked over staging stuff, flipped over the monitors, and got right in front of uh, Tony Khan's face, similar to Bret Hart. Who was acting right? Think about Bret Hart when he quit when he when he yelled at Vince for losing that match and he smashed the monitors. Not when he quit for WCW, but when he got mad that time where he got upset and he grabbed Vince and he was like, "You fucking blah blah blah." And it was an act. It was part of the show. But like that was that was that seemed real back in the day in WWF when he started smashing the monitors and and yelling at Vince and pulling the table. That's well, what there that's probably what was happened. A, a hint of realism there, you know, like a hint of well, real you're life right. and like yeah, maybe yeah, a little bit. But but, but it, dude, dude, that was about you know when they were doing the whole like you know mm-hmm, Stone mm-hmm. he the, what Stone Cold cheated or somebody won and, and Brett was mad and they were building the storyline. Well, yeah, doesn't that he, Brett was doesn't, mad. he doesn't he doesn't get on the mic and go well, this is fucking bullshit. yeah yeah. Pissed off doesn't begin to, to explain how pissed whatever the fuck that dude. That's what that's what Punk did, but for real in the back with Tony Khan, and and so and Tony feared for so his gay, life too. Like like literally, he was in the right there. That's the thing. He was in the yeah. right with that situation, and most people were agreeing with Punk and saying, "Hey, you know what? I, as much as I don't like the guy, he's we can't fault him for this, you know." But. This guy still got like crazy, like way over mad about this fucking thing, and is like a, an overreaction, really, because it's like you got some guy like Jack Perry that nobody was siding with and everybody was shitting on, but you're getting like so angry about it, getting in the face of your fucking boss. Like, I don't know, like that to me, that's like such a it's just so weird. Like, something's we're not being told something about this situation, like, either punk is really just a fucking whiny asshole, asshole or maybe Jack, maybe something else happened, you know, like maybe Jack Perry said something else, you know, uh, threatened to have sex with his 12 year old girlfriend of a wife, you know, it's almost like punk, I you just know, re- has I just realized anger this. management or something like fucking CM Punk. Was I just like realized, <laughs> I just realized this. The next time they go to Chicago, when after uh jungle boy, Jack Perry, after the suspension, dude, they are going to Boo this man. What are you talking about? They, they did it tonight. Will... They did it tonight. Yeah. Oh, they did, oh, they did, I, did it. I didn't see it. I, oh, wait, my God, bro. They, the they, fucking they, crap. No, not Jack, oh, my not, God. Not Tony Khan, no, Jack Perry. No, oh. but yeah, but they booed Tony Khan like crazy they, tonight. Did you hear that? They, they booed him out of the building. Tonight. Listen to that. Listen God. to this. Listen, we got to talk about WWE Payback, but let me play this for you. This is the beginning. Tony Khan came out before they went on the air. Listen to this. He goes, it's okay. That's what I thought would happen. <laughs> it's okay. I understand how you feel. I like, though, that Tony Khan knew this was going to happen, so he almost came out here. So, see, some people would say, like, you shouldn't have even acknowledged it and whatever, but no, the fans would have then done it during the show. I think he, right. he might have made the right call here by coming out and just taking it like, I'm gonna go out there and take the heat, you know. Like yeah, and, he, he was, and, and he sat down in a yeah. chair. Yo, this is the most- This is where he becomes Mr. Khan. <laughs> he really should turn heel after this.
<laughs> he's like, usually when I come out here, you love me. That's what he's basically saying here. I don't think he could do the heel, the Mr. Khan, Mr. McMahon thing, because he's just yeah. he doesn't have that ability like McMahon uh-huh. did, you know? So yeah, that's And honestly, I've seen so many people been shitting on Tony, like, oh, this fucking idiot, and, you know, like saying all sorts of things about him. I Like the wrestlers. Yeah, but I honestly like Tony Khan. Like, I think he seems yeah. like a good dude. I, I, I like him, too. Seems- I like him, too. See, see, and that's the problem. Tony Khan is a nice guy. He's not a fucking boss. He's, just, dude, you could make just, him a heel so quick. You have him go out for a mid-card match. In the middle of the match, the it, go, it spills over to the announcer's booth, and he accidentally gets touched, barely. But he goes and he fires that wrestler mid-match. Tony Khan stands up and he goes, <laughs> My life was in danger, and you're fired. And he fires the wrestler right there. Boom, instant heel. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, a good that's already what he kind of sounds like. My life was in danger! Right. <laughs> like, you know how Tony yeah. gets? He gets crazy. Like, what Play is that? Up. That looks like a... I Use don't know it. what that is. Dude, what yeah, a like, fucking idiot! No, fuck. but I understand what people are saying. Like, oh, he's not. he just doesn't have what it takes to be a boss. I just, I just don't like the whole thing with, like... That's fine, but, like, I don't like the whole thing with people being, like, calling him, like, a cokehead and all this, like, horrible shit and, you know, <laughs> insulting him. And then you know if this guy, you know if this guy dies, everybody will be like, oh, no, horrible loss for the wrestling community, the family of wrestling. You know, everybody will pretend to love him again. It's just, like, annoying. It, it, it's just so weird how people are willing to shit on one person, like, on someone's character over – some fucking dumb wrestling shit. You know what I mean? That's the thing that I get annoyed about. Yeah, overall, I like Tony Khan. I I really do like Tony Khan a lot. I'm just, but I I definitely will goof on him for this because... My life was in danger. (laughs) I'm sorry, but that is hilarious. My life is in danger. Especially the video. If if the video of it where he's, where he's like doing the speaking, like he looks... He looks like Beaker here. Like, like, look at this. <laughs> I've been producing him on this network for nearly four years. Never. T- T- Tony is getting better at this, though. In all that time, have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show? I don't think anybody should feel that way at work. I don't think the people I work with should feel that way. And I had to make a very difficult choice today. It came at the recommendation of a discipline committee here in AEW, as well as outside legal counsel who delivered a unanimous recommendation. And I have followed up on that recommendation. I'm sorry to any fans who are upset by this. I'm sorry to anyone who's upset by this. Despite that, we're going to have a great show. To- that This part is for over I can't get years. over it. I've been producing them on this network for nearly four years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. <laughs> I just, I don't know why. I like, oh, I believe every, I don't believe that. Like, I mean, like, I would have to see the I, video of Punk. Like, I mean, show me the video and I might think, and they'll never be able okay. to probably because it's so legal. They're, they're Joe, never gonna Joe. Yes, yes, yes. We got to go back to Joe. payback. But final thoughts on this. We'll go back to WWE. Yes. Yeah, one one thought here. Not final, but I mean, Vince you know, McMahon, yeah. Vince McMahon himself during the Montreal screw job went to Brett's dressing room. Right. He stood there after Brett took a shower. He says, If you are still here, I'm knocking you out. He Vince stood took there while right he was hand, the shower. Took, yeah, he took a right hand from Brett. Right. And took it all, and then obviously they try to break it up, blah blah blah. But Vince allowed Brett that free he took shot it. to say that to say That's amazing. to say that Tony Khan's life was in danger. It, again, I love Tony, but that dude, full of crap. Come on, your uh, life was in danger. I just, think I think, it, I think what he meant to amazing. say was, I think what he meant to say because obviously he's flustered when you got fucking how many thousands of people booing you. Um, well, no, that was that I was taped. He, no, that was he, taped. He, he, that was taped, Ross. Oh, that was taped. Yeah. Th- yep. So there, there's the there's two different there, there's two there's different things. The there's two different things. Movie. Hang on a second. There's two different things. There's Tony Khan coming out at the beginning of the show live in front of people, not on TV. Oh, okay. And then there's the pre-taped video that you, we all saw. Um, so there's two separate things you're you're hearing here. Yeah, I think what I think what he should have said was like. He, he had it all pretty much right until he said, my life's in danger. He should have said more of like, you know, my physical safety. 
you know, because it technically yeah. was if someone's lunging at you, yeah, your safety and the immediate moment is in danger, but not maybe necessarily your life. But also, like the whole thing with the Vince story. I mean, Vince McMahon and Tony Khan. Let's let's compare their physiques, and uh, you know, w- which one do you think would win a fight? You know, right. So that's where it's like a very different situation where it's like Vince might legitimately be a, like an insane person and it'll be like, yeah, just punch <laughs> me. I don't give a fuck. You know, True. but Tony Khan is like, he's like, if one of us just was like, happened to have a wrestling company, you know what I mean? So <laughs> if some guy like punk, like actually threatened you, you probably would feel like your life's in danger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, because he's not from that world, you know, he's not from, he's from yeah. the, yes, he loves wrestling and he's a, he's a nerdy wrestling guy and he's got tons of money. But how many times did Tony Khan have to square up with somebody somewhere? Like that never right. happened. Even all of us have done. You know what I'm saying? Like I've been in. I'm not. I'm not a tough person, and I try to avoid fights at all costs. I always do. I'm a talker. I'm somebody who does talk their way out of things. But I mean, I've had hockey. I've had hockey fights. I mean, like I've had situations <laughs> like this. I don't. And I've had other fights. But I mean, I don't think Tony. He's just not that type. And so obviously this. He's terrified. never been in a real fight. All due no. respect to Tony, he's never been in a real fight. Vince has in his early days when he had to like fight his stepfather. Yeah, for, I mean this know, guy. Like, yes, you know. no. Vince Not to mention he was working. He he was like working ninety fucking hour shifts just to be able to buy his company. Like Vince McMahon grew up tough and he worked like extremely fucking hard and still does. Or it feels like you know you got Tony Khan who yeah he's a good dude and all and he means well but yeah he's. A spoiled rich kid and stuff like that while stepping into something that he doesn't know of or is not completely aware of how like not dangerous but how the game works i guess you know it's two completely different worlds you know so yeah i, I give tony khan a break in the fact that he doesn't understand a lot of that sort of stuff and I understand what Vince is like, you know, but I, I have a lot of respect for Vince because I don't know. We could all say that we do the right thing or we do the manly thing or whatever you want to call it or the stupid thing and let Brett punch us or whatever. But I give a lot of credit to Vince for, for being like, you know what, I just did something fucked up and that was that was definitely like, you know, disrespectful to Brett, but I had to do it for the company. And but personally, I'm prepared to, you know, to take a punch from Brett. I mean, Brett's younger than Vince. Vince is like a father to Brett and and you know, Vince didn't say shut up, you know, you're 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 younger than me and I you do what I'm told, tough luck. He didn't do that. He expected like that something was going to happen and he allowed it to happen to make Brett feel better and to make it right with Brett. That was him doing that. I mean, that's a very I mean, alpha manly thing to do. The, the Vince, it's very accountability and it's it's mm-hmm. weird. It's it's primal almost. But like it's almost, dude. It actually reminds you know what it reminds me of is like in Star Trek. It's like Klingon shit. I don't know if you ever anybody yeah. like I always compare it, like like so if you really quickly like one of the Star Trek, uh, you know the Starfleet people goes onto the uh, the Klingon ship, and the the uh, the the second in command he's going there like an exchange student, an exchange guy from Starfleet to the Klingon ship, and the Klingons are all tough and shit like that, and the second officer disrespects him. Holy shit, Allison Tuckwab. And anyway, the point is he punches the, the fucking guy. And at the end, when the captain goes to take back his ship, the dude lets him knock him out so he can look like a badass in front of his crew. That was Vince, very Klingon move like Vince and, and fucking, it was crazy. And Tony Khan, bro, imagine if Tony Khan got punched, I think he would have sued Punk. If he actually got assaulted, he would have sued the fuck out of Punk, I bet. Which is crazy because I wouldn't sue Punk if he had, I don't know, that's, I, can't, I wasn't there. I hope the tape gets released. That's true. Punk does have weapons for hands, essentially, right? And, and Vince never sued nice Brett. And even if he could, he never would have. Job, then know the wrestlers that are there know they can run all over him if they want to. That's just a dead giveaway to them. Tony Khan says his life in, is in danger. He has no business doing his job. And, and know the wrestlers are there. Know they can run all over him if they want to. That's just a dead giveaway to them. Yeah, Allison, I, I see what you're saying. So, like... Allison, thank you for the for the nine ninety nine. Allison, you are the best. Allison, thank you. Yeah, by by being beta, by being a little bit beta, like Tony has been, it's allowed, like you said, wrestlers to be able to run wild all over him, especially a guy like CM Punk. And we've heard from year for years from Triple H, Vince McMahon, 
from um, older promoters. Back in the day, Bill Watts talked about this. Um, you seen it on Beyond the Mat, that big fat-ass guy who was the, the <laughs> ind- independent guy. He, he goes, the wrestlers will run all over you. I mean, you've heard, every promoter knows if you don't, you are kind of got to be a dickhead when you're a promoter, or these guys with their egos – Will they fucking, won't take advantage oh of you. Oh my God, you'll mm-hmm. be destroyed. You have to be one yeah, alpha they, step away from these guys. Yeah, no matter how big of a dick the promoter is, there's always one or two wrestlers in the back who are even bigger dicks, you know, like, and also have like way bigger egos. Like, every, yeah, the egos in wrestling is insane, especially since it's insane. not anywhere near as big as it used to be. Right. Yet people still walking around as if, like, like you said recently in a video that you made about, I think it was like a year ago about uh, Keith Lee, where it's like all these wrestlers seem to think that they're like the next Stone Cold or the next Rock, even when they're like early, early in their fucking career. So they all have these like weird, massively unchecked egos. And, you know, when you got a guy like Tony Khan, who's, you know, just some dweeb nice guy. It's not, you know, there's nobody really to put to pull in the reins there and stuff like that. So that's where I think. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. I was no, no, no. I was just gonna say. I'm just to add on to that. The top, like the uh, Top Gun movie, the original one. Like their egos weren't even as big as the wrestlers in this right. case. And these guys are like using for well in storyline, they're using fighter jets in order to take down a freaking enemy and try to show off. These guys are just trying to be like you know NBA football players. But the thing is, all the dirty laundry is even more consistent in AEW than what's happening in football or baseball, or basketball, or whatever. You now, some guy that. in the chat, some guy in the chat says it wasn't an overreaction from Punk, uh, and he was fed up. So you just don't understand. It's like, dude, no matter how fed up or how pissed off you are, you cannot lunge at your fucking boss. Like, I on a live where, pay-per-view. <laughs> yeah, this is where it stops being. Oh, but did you gotta think about how to make money out of this? And it becomes it's a regular fucking company. There's a set of rules, and if at your job, Joe, at your job, imagine you just went at your manager and like threatened to like punch him or something. Do you think you're gonna be working there the next day? Yeah, I mean, and I get uh, uh, and and wrestling. You said yeah. I, I think, <laughs> I, but I think one of the things that a lot of people. Think about all the stories we've heard about wrestling and all the fights and the backstage situations. So first of all, wrestling is never taken seriously like it's a real, real business that much, right? There's always this weird gray line with wrestling. There's always stuff that you get away with more in wrestling. And based on all the stories we've heard from the 80s, 90s, 2000s even, and and beyond, we're all kind of accustomed to... This stuff happens. I mean, listen, it happens in sports teams' uh, locker rooms and, and clubhouses and stuff like that. So it's one of those things where, like, you almost look the other way. It's not supposed to be, like, a corporate setting as much. Like, yeah, scuffles happen, things happen. Um, but especially in wrestling. Like, stuff happens that, that, they, that they look the other way on. But the thing that's different is, first of all, 2023, it is a little bit different now compared to ever. And on top of that... This is a new company, and on top of that, Tony Khan didn't grow up in this fucking dog-eat-dog business. So he's got a business perspective on it. He's got a bit of a um, softer approach on it of, like, we all love each other in the locker You know, like, he just has a different take. And um, so that's what you're seeing here, man, is this this difference. And they did they did allow for some of it, you know, before. And they didn't know what to do. They were a little bit shocked by it. But clearly he went out and did legal stuff for if this ever happens again, I've got a committee. We heard something was formed, a committee, and it was, and it was used, and so now we know. But let's, let's real quickly, we're going to come back to the punk stuff, CM yeah, let's Punk. Go. Let's go back to payback, yeah, WWE see. payback, yes. Did anybody even talk about any of the matches yet? I um, talked about everything for the most part, but why don't you tell me, Rojas, what your favorite match of the night was and why and, and whatever you want to bring up. Let's just go around to everybody. All right. Well, my favorite match of the night was the tag team match. Um, very hectic, very fun. Uh, you know, just a lot of cool spots and stuff like that. I was thinking that that was going to be the best match of the night anyway. Yeah. Um, personally, not that big of a fan of the way the match ended. Like, I understand that you got to get the Judgment Day involved. But, dude, it's a two-on-two match, and you got fucking, like, 
it's like five people versus two. Like, does that make the Judgment Day look very strong at all? Like, yeah, they have all the belts, but they look like I like them, but they kind of look like dorks, you know? <laughs> Especially when you got Rhea Ripley, who supposedly can like manhandle these men, like and you know, fuck up Kevin Owens, but then like struggles in matches against like Zelina Vega and Liv Morgan and like had a tough match against uh Raquel Gonzalez, like it's to well, me. She that's jumped the annoying. guys from behind, you know. She yeah, ju- but it's annoying because guys have to sell for her, and she's never going to sell for them. That's that is. Oh well, yeah, because again, the guys can't hit women, unfortunately, in the uh, in the business. Unfortunately, you hear that guys, spoken uh, like a true. Wow, fucker. Thank you for telling oh, me yeah. that. Oh, it's yeah. almost as like if China, I was like just China saying China wasn't that. getting like China was not taking bumps with other guys in '99. Wait, come on. What against Jericho? Yes, she, she was. She, she, yeah, yeah, I, like I, I meant that sarcastically. She oh. was obviously doing. Why are you oh. lying again? You know what, Rostov? This lying is just. I'm getting not out lying at all. I'm, I'm not Rostoff lying. I'm, I'm on team Rostov. I think Rostov, someone, someone, Rostov, are you autistic? <laughs> are you autistic? No, I'm asking you if you are. <laughs> no, I'm asking you. I know I'm not. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I, no, I, no, I wasn't being. No, being... that was a serious question. I wasn't kidding. I, I'm sorry. I was. Just... No, I, I am, I am not autistic. Okay. By any means. No. I just wanted to ask. I'm not. Well, no, I'm not well, autistic. To... I'm retarded, and I've got a GED. But to further my point on the uh, the whole Judgment Day being kind of like dorks. Uh huh. Um, at the end when they're all with the belts on the stage, like some of the worst fucking bits of dialogue I've ever heard. I, like. Finn being like, yeah, we've got all the bouts now. We are all the champs. And then Damien's <laughs> like, yeah, we do. We've got all the championships. And then Dom's like, yeah, don't mess with us. We mean business. Like they're saying like such cliche things. And, and it That's just sounds so club. Yeah, it just sounds just so fucking lame, dude. They're like, "Yeah, we've got all the bouts now." Yeah, yeah. Like, if they, so you would have you would have preferred it if they were like, "Yeah, yeah, we got the belts, and all you got is blood on your face, losers. Look at them bleeding all over the place. Like, look at Owens. Owens, like Owens, out of shape. You out of shape, fatty. Like, but like, right. you want them to say stuff like that. What do you want them to say? I don't know. Just maybe not say it so like cartoonishly stupid. Right. Like, it, it was. It don't, sounded like. Don't, don't say it like it's scripted, basically. Yeah. Don't say it like you're reading it off of a fucking page uh, from a script. You Literally, want them to be like, like any- "We own this company. Judgment Day runs this company. We got all the belts. We'll take more. If there's any other belts out there, we'll get those too. We're gonna have all the money, all the titles, and look at look at Kevin. Look at Kevin bleeding all over himself." Yeah, <laughs> you loser! Yeah, like, fin- like how about yeah, that? Like, like, stuff Finn, like that. Finn should have picked up the mic. He should have picked up the mic or something and started cutting a promo. But instead, they're all like, "Yeah, we've got all like the that? belts now. We are so decorated with belts." <laughs> you like you that? are right, yeah, Finn. We certainly do have the belts. We've got the belts, <laughs> and we've got the lucky charms too. <laughs> I don't know, I'm sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> but, but but to add on to that, Joe, uh, for, at least for my match of the night, I mean, yeah. it, it had to have been a tag match easily just because of the um, the high, yeah high spots, but they were worthy high spots of being high spots. And uh, crowd psychology was on the money, even though, like, it wasn't, again, my favorite, you know, match as far as, like, you know, oh, yeah, I'm going to go back and watch that. But that match in particular was probably match of the night for me. Can we uh can we just talk about that Kev- that Kevin Owens Swanton from the Oh from the it's all, it's so good. No, I thought no, he bro- so no, good. No, I thought he no, broke no, his he, neck. He didn't hit the table at all, bro. He kind of did. He kind Well, you know, he, he hit the body. Though. You're right. He hit the body, right? He didn't hit the table. He hit the bounce off the body. Honestly, that's probably what he, like he, in kayfabe, that's probably what you're actually supposed well, to do. Like Yes. I never understood that you're jumping but, onto somebody through a table. Like, doesn't honestly, that hurt you more? Honestly, dude, I got to be honest. It it did look like he – I thought he hurt his wrist for real because he kind of went so hard onto the ground that his hands came down, and it won't, and he grabbed his hand and was like, ah. And I was like, that's weird to sell your wrist. So I think he actually uh, – hopefully he just bruised the bone or bruised his wrist a little bit, but it did look he, like he hurt his wrist I because – broke his hand. I God, I hope that's not what it was. I looked he, at that. Yeah, he looked. That I, landed I, I, bad. I watched that back three times, and it looked really fucking nasty. He he probably well, fucked if he, his hand up really fucking bad. If he, he if he if he walked away with anything less than a fucking sprain, I'll be. Well, surprised. if he did injure himself, it's a good thing they took the belts off it, them, you know. So at least they got them themselves uh, cleared on that, you know. 
it's been a weird it was a weird tag team title reign like i liked kevin and sammy as champions but unfortunately and i've talked about this the booking for them was just so like strange like at some point Trash. yeah at some points they were booked to be top tier main eventers in the main event of wrestlemania in the main event with roman and solo at night of champions and then yeah. at other points they're they're getting clean like pinned clean like literally steph i'm sorry sammy got pinned the smackdown after he main evented a wrestlemania by one of the guys he beat in the main event does that make any fucking sense? <laughs> and then the next week, he lost no. to Solo, and so did Kevin. So it's like they just immediately, right from the get-go, these guys went from top-tier main eventers of WrestleMania back to, yeah, you guys are just sort of middle of the card, whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah it's kind of weird. Well, you know what's sad? You know what's sad? Is these two are still loved by everybody. You can... Yeah, these two. I wouldn't be surprised if these two go further down in the next couple of months, back to what the fuck they were before WrestleMania. Yeah, before, before the bloodline. That's just my opinion. Oh my god, what the oh, fuck yeah. is that? What well, is that? Before, Who before the, the fuck is eating their microphone? Well, honestly, before the bloodline, the only thing Sammy was doing was that stupid like conspiracy theorist gimmick. Like, I, I don't want to see that. Hey, don't call that stupid. All right, I love like that, that was that, that was that was trash. Well, that's not he's not going to just go back to that gimmick. Instead, what he's going to do is just be this baby face gimmick forever or, or for a while. And, you know, I like Sammy, but when he has nothing to do, you know, and he's given the same shit every week, you know, face the fucking judgment day for the millionth time, he starts to get tiresome. You know, and now and now Sammy and Kevin just feel like Cody's friends. Oh, yeah. okay. I, so, I I think that that's I'm the that's no. I get what you're saying. What do you think about the fact that Cody, like you said earlier, was just kind of like the liaison for USO tonight? That was sort of. Mm -hmm. all yeah, I think they're gonna. They, they must be setting up something with them in a tag team match or something, because yeah. those are both of the guys who recently faced Roman for the belt, and I guess you could say the closest, the two who came closest to beating Roman. So I don't know. Oh yeah, but I was right. I was right. Uh, this w earlier this week when I said that Cody was going to cut a promo, um, relating to something with the bloodline or Roman. Yeah. So, yeah. So they're already kind of going there. Like, I mean, is this going to be a big build to WrestleMania? Like, will he? Do you think he'll? Honestly, yeah, I hope so. I, I think this is probably going to set him up for maybe Jay versus Jimmy or something like that. Who knows? Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. Those two are going to have a match. Do you think they'll have their match at WrestleMania then? The the brothers. I think that would be a good um, thing. I, yes. I, I, I can see them, I can see them as, be a smart thing to do. I can see them that as the climax of the match. Like, they'll have a series of matches before that. Really? Like, no. I think that's, yeah. No, 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 no. You, do, you, you get them away from each other to WrestleMania. Yeah, they, I mean, we, Rostafa, you have to remember that. Remember when Dom turned on Ray in, like, September, and they didn't face each other all the way till WrestleMania? So that's probably what's going to happen again. Like, I don't think they're going to have a series of matches because that's such a big match, too. Like, I, w I remember thinking about that like five or six years ago. I'm like, wow, I wonder if they're ever going to have an Uso versus Uso match, you know? And since it's been so long, you know, since they since they even like got here in the WWE and they, they went like 13 years without a breakup angle, I think they're really going to milk this feud to be like all the way till WrestleMania. I mean, and if that's the case, then fine. Then, then you're going to have to leave Jay off TV for a while. I mean, you're like, no. keep him off TV. No, he's going to be on Raw. They had their chance. Oh, Jay's going to be. They No, I agree with. No, they had their chance to keep him off TV and they brought him fucking back tonight, which pissed me the fuck off. That To me, that was the dumbest fucking decision they ever fucking Absolutely. made. Absolutely. They should have at least kept him off. They should have at least kept him off till Survivor that's what, Series. That's what Cody announced. He's moved. Jay Uso is coming to Raw. Uh, he's gonna be the. Yeah, new I saw that. No, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. No, no. That's basically all I was gonna say. I mean, I I don't disagree. They should have kept him off until Survivor Series. So I don't understand the what the significance is of bringing him back now. What are they gonna What are they gonna do with him? So probably wanted to come back. He probably was like, "Damn, I'm not getting paid not to be here, motherfucker." Exactly. He was he was getting paid. They just wrote him off fucking TV. 
Look, the, the way to play it out is you got to have one of the brothers eliminate the other brother and uh, Royal Rumble. That's how it'll work out. Have Jay eliminate. Yeah, but that, but, but that's the but here's the other problem. You still have what? Now it's September, October, November, December, January. You have four months of filler. That's the only problem. Yeah, let them have little little. Few, I'd uh, keep. I'd, I'd keep. I'd keep. I would keep Jay Uso and Cody Rhodes together, not as a tag team, but keep them intertwined, like they had Kevin and Sammy do after WrestleMania and before WrestleMania. Well, because that's keep them cool. intertwined that's- with each other. That's literally only, uh, Cody's only, I guess, a uh, piece of the bloodline story that he has, you know, because right. since they separated them, they moved him to Raw because they wanted to keep space between him and Roman. But, you know, you can't do the whole buildup that they had for Roman and Cody's match this year, you know, where they didn't touch at all before the match and the pro- the promos, they had like maybe two or three promos with each other, but the buildup was very... um. It was very Luke subtle, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was it? You're talking about the Cody Roman promo? I mean, the build up. I loved that. No, I like the I like the, the build up for the match too, but it wasn't like it, it. It almost seemed like it was just out of nowhere. Not out of nowhere. Like the, he won the Rumble, but for like a while, they didn't really seem to um, focus on it for- until until like after the elimination chamber. Yeah. And it's like this is the you know, and it did still feel like a really really big main event. And I think that was their thinking is if we just keep them away from each other, the match is going to be bigger in itself. We don't and need Luke, to do anything. That made sense. That made sense, though, because you had you had lightning in a bottle. So maybe Dude, now this is their way of that time. this is their way of building it up more by you know now it's September. You can't you can't keep Cody just doing nothing until then. So this right, at least but, gives them something to do. Yeah, but uh, Luke, there's also another element that we're forgetting here. Remember that one promo that Cody said, like you know, to Roman, where he says, "Hey, the first person that's going to leave is uh, Jay." Then Jimmy, then a solo. So oh. if we if we were to get the match at WrestleMania, well, first and foremost, everybody in the bloodline would have to already leave Roman already, and maybe Solo, like right before Mania is is going to be in Roman's corner, but then at the last minute, is like, nope, you're on your own, kid, type of a thing. And that's, that's what going to be the that's going to be the fucking um. Factor if their solo is gonna have there's gonna be dissension leading up to WrestleMania. You're gonna have Solo questioning what his fucking allegiance to fucking Roman. Is and Cody's gonna be the one stirring the fucking pot. It's either be Cody or fucking Jay, one of the fucking two. I, 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 no, 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 it's gonna be all three of them. It, it'll be all three of them, both Usos and Cody, because Paul Hammond is gonna be the only person left in Roman's corner to the point where. When Roman leaves for a time or whatever, or whenever they do the rematch or whatever, you know, that comes in, Paul would be the last supporting member until Roman, if and when he ever decides if he wants to stick around and goes babyface, basically just pulls an Andre yeah. the Giant, Bobby Heaton scenario, and just beats up Paul. And then that's well, it. Well, I've seen a lot of really weird um, speculation about the main event. Um, some pretty stupid ideas that for some reason people still think are going to happen. The whole, well, what if Cody faces Roman on night night one, and then it's Rock versus Roman on night two? Like, Wait, are literally, we literally creating uh, WrestleMania right now? Are you fucking retarded? I'm just saying. People? I'm just saying. You Jesus. have to literally be a mongoloid if you think that's going to happen. If you think Roman is going to defend the titles on two different nights and one of those nights is going to be against the rock hold on a second you are going to be super disappointed that's not gonna probably not gonna happen but real quickly breaking news tony khan is afraid for his life again i've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years never in all that time have i ever felt until last sunday that my security my safety my life was in danger at a wrestling show. Listen, I really do want to say that I do really like Tony Khan, and uh, but I do think that clip is hilarious. And really quickly, just to bounce quickly, I know we're doing WWE Payback and we're going to stay on WWE for the most part, but I do want to just jump for a second. I happened to tune in. I was watching. I have three monitors, and I was watching on two different monitors all the wrestling. I happened to notice, and it could have been my broadcast, so somebody tell me if I'm wrong. But I did peek in on Collision several times while watching WWE Payback tonight. And on Collision, there were tons of audio glitches where they cut. It sounded like they were cutting the crowd. Did anybody else notice that? And if you didn't, go back and listen. 
there were several times where the crowd was cut and the crowd was screaming like CM Punk and we want CM Punk and all kinds of CM Punk chants and there was weird audio issues when those things would happen. Anybody yeah, else? not even WWE did that. But did, no, I mean, did anyone notice that though? I mean, did anyone watch Collision that noticed that? Because I noticed it. I Maybe. noticed it too, but I was like, "Ow!" Oh, I just figured it was me. their real audio problems, but it it's weird. They also what they're trying to do is they're trying to sweep it under the rug the best they can. Okay, because I don't like, think I don't think so. I, I was no, also I don't. Yeah, do I don't think I don't think Tony Khan would have even went out there and yeah, talked no. about it. They, he, listen, all, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was also hearing that they were taking, they were having people take down their CM Punk signs too. I guess that's what uh, I was. Hearing. That to me, I, I don't. I don't know if. Listen, someone proves that. I'll talk about that. I to to me, I'm gonna. Miros. I, I'm gonna believe that that's not true because they were literally in Chicago. Those people thought CM Punk was gonna be there. They're in Chicago. I think Tony Khan felt bad for the audience. I legitimately believe he felt bad for the audience. And he went out there, and I know we talked about Vince McMahon being a man earlier and taking a punch from Bret Hart. Well, I felt like tonight Tony Khan kind of tried to take a punch from the audience. Like, let me go out there, and I'll just take all the boos at the beginning. I'm going to be the villain. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm going to go out there, let them get try to get as much out of it out as possible on me. Yeah. And then I'll go back, and then the show will start. So to be honest, I got to give Tony Khan credit there. I, I think he knew what he was doing with that, and he felt bad for the crowd. So I don't think they took CM Punk signs, but I'll tell you, man, if you if someone shows me video of that, I'll suck my own words in and blow myself. And here's the donation. Oh, shit. The $17 donation is also the crayon. I didn't think about that. I didn't even know that. The new donation is the Cran Dono. I didn't even think about that. I thought the Cran used to be 70. All my black is oh my god, guys. I'm ridiculous. I gotta change it now. The new donation can't be 17. What am I, stupid? Yes, I am. Is there a $16 donation? Yeah. I think so. Oh man, I gotta change it. I'll just make it 17. Oh, it's too confusing then. Yeah, as if your fucking other donation amounts are confusing. Fuck. I'll make it 16. I can't believe I did that. If Tony doesn't go out there. We got to let the donation play first, cocksucker. I'm just kidding. No, he only said, let's try it out. The ghost from the coast dropping the new $17 donation, except it shouldn't be the new one because that's the crayon donation, and I'm a moron. How can I? How, where's Omar to tell me? What are you doing, Joe? Okay, guys. Joe, you got to fucking put it for 70 <laughs> I'm such an idiot, bro. All right, the new donation is the new one is now 16 The yeah donation has now moved to 16 everybody. 16 like the, the 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 age that what's his face got in trouble for, um, sixteen, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I, I'm so dude. sorry, bro. I'm so sorry. Okay, it's sixteen dollars now. Who got in trouble? I'm not trying to get you more money out of you, but Ghost from the Coast, if you want to try it again at sixteen, go ahead. I'll. Some I don't black. Know. Well, you need to update your donation list because I'm looking at it. The Cran one isn't even in there. Really? It doesn't. Yeah, the crayon one isn't there. It doesn't uh, say there's anything for sixteen, but knowing I, I, I know, think it's okay. I think knowing it, you, if you want to try out it, listen, guys, my show we need donations. I need to pay the electric bill this way, and my kids are going to be taken away from me, and God Himself is going to kill me if you don't donate tonight. So here's the donation. Like, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Here's don't the donation. Don't give them reason not to donate. Hey, these are all wrong. Like yeah, these are wrong. Guys, sixteen dollars. Joe has got it really tough. You know, he's got a house. Not uh, you know, two Joe. story house. Not He's for got long. three kids. He's got a hot, a hot wife. Joe's really tough me, life he, this guy's he, living because you know he owes you know the IRS money like everybody else in the whole fucking country does. She's on her period. It really is tough for him. She's on her period. Oh, oh okay, yeah. Referee nerdy. <laughs> it's sixty nine. Referee nerdy is here to help Joe out. I'll update all of his stuff. He just needs to give me all his passwords, his social security number, and his mom's maiden name. Oh, just name. like that time, just like when, when Tommy gave those guys his channel's password <laughs> and they put porn, <laughs> porn all over his YouTube channel. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, and word faggot. Remember, remember that oh. it was like ass clappers sixty nine. He was subscribed to. <laughs> yeah. We're like, what the hell is this, dude? That was that was so weird. F word, N words, but your wife. You're yeah, right. N-word he was part. sub to a ton of names like that. God damn, that was crazy. That was crazy. Dude. Oh my god. Oh my god. The sixty. Dude, and then like, and then you look at his actual channel, like when he deleted all those porn accounts. Yeah. And he was like subscribed mm. to literally over two thousand something. I think he subscribed to literally everybody who subscribed to him. It, so yes. it was like an insane amount Which is of people. Funny as hell. I, I gotta I gotta like, tell you, Lat Latvarian, I'm sorry. The the sixteen dollars only works if you use Streamlabs. It doesn't work on Super Chat. Yeah. Oh my god. Don't mind if that I sucks. do. Don't just play the fucking donation for that. It's a whole new game. Don't cachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. <laughs> <laughs> Ye are aiming side to you with Austin Hellier. Lad Varian Savage. Thank you for the sixteen dollars. Let's yeah, let's pull I'll just play it for you, Lad Varian. Because it doesn't work on Super Chat, it only works on Streamlabs, which is pinned to the top of your uh chat right there. Oh my god. I'm sorry, but yeah, I, I love it's been a while since I've heard the Dunkachino, I feel like, so. It's um, literally been 2 minutes. All right. Really has it? Did we hear it already? Dude, yeah, I, I heard it like 6 I don't times, even know where uh, I am anymore. I, I don't know where I Bro, am anymore. Drink your coffee. Drink your I, coffee. I have you know, I think I've had too much coffee to be honest. I think I'm starting to freak out. But uh let me All right, let me play the, I'll play a test donation so you can hear the new yeah donation cuz I feel bad. Um I worked yeah. on it for a few minutes. Yeah, it's not, it's it's not even that no. long. It's pretty short, you know. It's not... Joe really worked hard on this. You know, he spent a whole ten, five ten minutes, minutes on it. Ten minutes it took. It was ama- amazing. Joe's drinking too much coffee. His life is in danger. Imagine if I were. Imagine, imagine if Tony Khan hired me as a commentator and I was backstage, yeah. dude. His life would be in danger every night. He'd be like, "What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, I can't work with this guy at all." Like, well, Joe, Joe, you know who's real, whose life is really in danger. Who's that? Uh, Ber- Bernie. You know, his oh, last yes. day on hospice. <laughs> yeah. Anybody get my hospice? <laughs> you know whose life is really in danger? It, or, or Bob Barker. Well, he's gone New now. Subscriber. Oh, oh my video. God. Mark. Isaiah Rene. Thank you. Reen. Isaiah. Rene. Rene. <laughs> Thank you, Isaiah. It's a Mexican really Renee. appreciate Joe, it. Joe, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you, I, I came across that Bernie video at like two AM on Twitter the other <laughs> night and I just fu- I fucking died. I was like, what the fuck is this? It was like well, Joe, just- it was it was a build up to literally the video was a build up to just get to the part where the Tourette's comes out. You know, that was all it was supposed <laughs> Joe, to be. Yeah, Joe messaged me as Jesus. As I was getting out of work, he goes, are you still up? And he's like <laughs> super excited to send me this link of this video. And I watch it. You know why? Because I, I think I was. Most, yeah, it's probably the most <laughs> depressing fucking video I've ever seen. And I... the thing, like I even told Joe this, there's a part in the video where he goes, just for, just thank you all for making you know, this, this last few years way better than they needed to be <laughs> you made I, I me guess, feel bad I, you made problem, me feel bad about this fucking fake bernie character i know what the problem is so because i had a couple of people message me and 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 i think the problem was i was like trying really hard to make people that don't know who i am think that this might be real you know so that when they get to the tourette's part they go oh. what the fuck like what is this so the problem is that like instead of like laughing from the beginning and then knowing it's a joke and then laughing at the end even people that knew me kind of were concerned so like i i think like somebody was like the acting was actually too good instead of being funny i was really into being concerned about this i'm like what so like it was i thought it was a shoot for i thought it was a shoot for like the first five seconds and i saw your face I'm yeah like, oh, okay. i mean i would ex- i mean i've got a funny face dude like i would think that like it's like right away you're like yeah here it comes like joe is ridiculous and but i was laughing so hard at it myself like i was dying dude i i have i'm a sick person like i am so sick i was laughing in hysterics like when you hear stories about Vince McMahon laughing at pushing people in the pool and like his poopy humor and whatever was wrong with Vince, like I feel like I'm a bit like that with a lot of things. And that, dude, I had this sick 
like <laughs> hospice bed <laughs> like and i'm just like losing it and i'm dying you like, all oh my God. i couldn't wait for you to see it cuz i thought you were going to laugh so hard and you didn't really but oh, it was, and to I, fund my show, oh my god the ghost from the I coast to fund what i believe in bombs away my god thanks for following me on ass. twitter or what JCS is called JCS army now. yes donate to me Oh my god, the ghost from the coast with the largest donation of the stream. Acknowledge me. Well, at least we've made a hundred bucks tonight. Yeah, we, we made it. Halfway to the goal. We made a Benjamin. Benjamin for burning. Dollars. 16 years old, lol. 16 years old, oh my god. The ghost from the coast is the top donator dropping a forty nine ninety nine big one, baby. You think, Thank you, ghost. You think he's referencing Wander Franco's recent girlfriend? Have you heard no. about that, Joe, the, the baseball player? No, is, is she like a whore? Like what? Oh, oh, so this guy, Wander Franco, gets signed to the Rays, yep. who are really good, and this guy's the the hottest rookie all last year. Um, puts a picture of himself and a fourteen year old girl mm. from the Dominican Republic that he was sleeping with. What on Twitter? Yep, post it. And then it turns out there's two two other pictures just came up. So he's like suspended. He probably won't play anymore. But uh, his baseball career ruined after a six. How a six stupid year old. can you possibly fucking be? They don't care there, though, in, in the Dominican Yeah, it doesn't Republic. matter if they don't care there. We yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, Mahatma yeah. Gandhi might have married a seven year old. That'd be like if I went to like play baseball in India, but I was like, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to post a tweet about of me killing a cow. Like, that'd be a good idea. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, maybe. That reminds me. <laughs> Honestly, that reminds me of. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, Omar. You didn't. Did you? Oh, I thought I thought somebody was talking. Oh wait! Oh, Tony Khan was talking. My life was in danger. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tony. I, I swear, every time somebody... Fuck you, roast. Are you kind? Go ahead. Jesus Christ, has to stop. What I was gonna say was was that that whole situation reminds me of this uh, radio host that took like a picture of himself like in Thailand with an obviously underage girl who may have been also a guy. Uh, and was no. definitely a that prostitute. Was uh, no, it was um, I think it was John from John and Jeff that used that used to be completely destroyed all the time by uh, Opie and Anthony during Jocktober's, oh. and they would specifically bring up that Thailand photo all the time. So it's just funny because it, yeah, it's it doesn't nobody cares over there. But it's like, don't take a fucking picture of yourself and be like, because obviously people over here are going to be like, hey, why are you take, why are you hanging out with a 12-year-old girl? That's kind of strange, don't you think? Side note, side note, when Tony Khan does that, that message where he's like, I thought my life was in danger, I literally for a moment thought it was my wife. Yeah, a, a lot of people have been saying. A lot of people have been saying that my wife is it because it sounds like my wife. Maybe she was. But does he have Sorry. a does he have a wife? My wife maybe, is in danger. Maybe his wife he doesn't kids. support. He maybe does? his wife doesn't support getting you know babies getting their dicks chopped off. Joe, you need to make a video of you interviewing Tony Khan, but just splice in that as every response that he gives you. Oh my god! No, you know what I should do is I should make an interview with Tony Khan and just do all kinds of edits of all kinds of things. Um, I'll work on that tomorrow. Maybe that's a great idea. Like, so at that point, he came into the bathroom with a dildo and a razor. And what what were you thinking? My life was in danger. Oh. Wow. I mean, yeah, that's. I mean, I would too. You know. Um, that will be the whole. That's that crazy. will be the whole video. Is just him repeating that line over. No, I can grab again. like I, I can, and then I'd be like, well, well, Tony, and then and so at this point, there's a lot of controversy around this. But the the three girls were passed out on the on the blankets, and like some of the guys were like, this is going to be like our Bill Cosby moment. Moment. What were you thinking? And then cut to Tony kind of going, let's fucking go. Like, you know, like, oh, like, oh, like, oh, like, 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 like
or like hugging a wrestler like Cesaro yeah. or yeah. like the, and, and then and then make the video call the video Tony Khan the 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 creep the sexual predator <laughs> like 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 you know how they edit the Joe Rogan videos where it's like Hulk Hogan wants to kill did you see the edit with with Hulk Hogan and Joe the Rogan from the other predator. day dude it's Not wicked funny is. yes what yes. oh my god um where is the clip it's so funny I don't know where it is but I'm gonna try to find it. Oh God, it's really funny. Do you know what it's called? Because I can't. I'm trying to find it right now off the top of my head, and I can't find it. It's like Hogan. He's like gonna kill Rogan or something. Did you get a chance to listen to the full two-hour oh, thing? I found it. Hold on a minute. Watch this. I've never been to Puerto. Wait, no, this isn't it. Fuck. God damn it. How about you look up Joe Rogan interviews Joe Rogan? No, what's it's that one? The same. No, it is the no, same thing. But Rogan. oh, I found it. Here it is. The people that I dude, watch Hogan's face in this. This is fucking hilarious. The guy who edits this fucking kicks ass ping trip or whatever it is. Beat up. I knew this was the place to be, man. So what you gonna do when Rogan and Hogan run wild on you, brother? (laughs) 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 It's so fake. This can't be real. It's it's bad. It's terrible. Brother, what is your (laughs) view? You suck. You suck. (laughs) It's stupid. All of it is fake. Yeah, that's God. embarrassing. I don't like oh, it. What a, a dumbass. Just talking <laughs> nonsense. He's a weird guy. It sucks. Like, what, what kind of message is that? What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? What's going on with you, man? Shut your mouth. Dickhead. Keep <laughs> shit. You're ugly. You're a weirdo. Talk about dicks. Hey, you guys, dude. It's weird, right? Rambling about nonsense. <laughs> if you don't loosen up on the old man here, I'm going to make you look really, really bad because you're going to be in here by yourself. Saucy. No. <laughs> you no break. Tip shit. That's it. I'm oh done. God. Shut up. Yeah, I mean, you, know a, you fucking idiot. I'm done. Fuck off. Get out of here. If I hit you as hard as I can, it's not going to be cool. You're not going to get back up. Ooh, now we're talking. Who cares? <laughs> Take a walk, bitch. You know what? I should kill you. <laughs> you gotta send that to me. Sorry. You gotta That's send that gun. to me. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, <laughs> Maybe we should edit Let's that. Clean the pal a little over. bit. Here we go. Dude, that was that was murdering me the other day. Like I was you like, you gotta send me that. <laughs> bro. Uh, Wait, Joe, we do you know um over the joke? God damn it! Yeah, he's like, hey, you gotta send me that. He's just fucking talk over the whole thing. <laughs> With Joe, do you know the um? Do you, you know Takashi Six Nine? You are you are that autistic. fucking no. Yes, the rapper. Yeah. They somebody made a funny video that was like that, where he was being interviewed by the Breakfast Club. Yeah, <laughs> like. It was like every yeah. It was like just like that video. It was so awkward. You know what? Do you know what? A bunch of stupid ass shit. Do you, do you know what actual interview is like those videos? Because that guy basically kind of makes a similar video every time, but it's always entertaining. But it's kind of the same joke every time, but in a different uh, way. But you know what? You know what? Actual it? podcast or radio show with a guest that's not edited. That's actually like that. Guess it. Kodak Black. 100%. It's the Kodak Black interview with uh, whatever fucking bald head Peter Rosen turd, Hot 97 or whatever. That, dude, that interview is like one of those interviews, but in real life. Cause that was one of my favorite. Jo- they're like, you you think the moon landing was fake? You guys ever fucking had. Fucking bitches, fucking bitch, fucking. Like, dude, it's just, oh my God, dude. It is literally well, thing, real. That was one of my hey, all time favorite uh, bits that ever happened on this show was um was the throwdown where you guys reacted to that it was like yeah. an hour and a half of you just railing on that fucking segment yeah and then like my favorite part is when you start like being like this is like if i just started talking a bunch of random nonsense and then people actually listen to me like yeah i eat diapers motherfucker i eat garbage because i'm the fucking vulture and sometimes this world don't favor vultures but that's <laughs> the way the world gotta be like it was so fucking it's it's so true like that guy I think he might actually be retarded. <laughs> oh, Kodak Black is so yeah. whacked out. They, I mean, they they did disrespect him in a way, but they were trying to keep it real. And like, it's like one of them was speaking to Kodak Black, like I'm your dad, and I'm trying to set you straight. 
and the other ones were kind of goofing on him and stuff. So none of it was working for Kodak. Kodak wanted to be treated like, hey, I'm a celebrity rapper god. Give me that interview. Don't give me some interview critiquing my life and how to act. And so he just went sideways, like almost right away. It was a great. Well, yeah, that was that was so uncool funny. of them. Sorry, sorry, we're well, stopping. I, I mean, but in a way, dude, fine, the guys are fucking the guys fucking endangering kids and acting like an idiot, and they called him out on the radio show. So you could say, I mean, I don't he know. Got, well, no, the reason why he got arrested that recent time was because he got caught with weed. No, well, they, were, they the were they were in on him about some other stuff though, the way he was treating women or something or some other shit. Like they were, one of them was getting <laughs> on him, but I, it was just to have a guest on and do that was a huge, yeah. I think, a huge mistake for them. They kind of looked retarded, but at the same time, like, well, like he looked bad. Then he got defensive about like I don't know, like the moon landing thing or something. I don't know. It was so <laughs> that was weird. The funniest part. That's what I was gonna bring up. It's <laughs> like after that serious stare down between him and um. Charlemagne, they were like they thought. I thought someone like they were gonna start fighting or something. Oh, it was a rape and charge. And then all of a sudden, yeah, yeah dude. It I mean, was who? It was a rape charge. So they were, dude. They were looking at him like basically like you did this, and like yeah, they, yeah. So I mean, seriously, like you're 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 interviewing a rapper and a famous guy, but at the same time, like there's some pretty solid rape charges on the guy. So they were sort but, of yeah, the funniest part of the interview was like. It got that serious stare down between him and Charlemagne, and then randomly Pierre Rosenberg is just like, "Oh well, moving on." Um, yes, yeah, oh, but that, that's this. why. That's why it's like well, the, <laughs> it's like those videos you, where they're staring at each you other. Believe that? What the hell? What oh, the yeah. hell? Oh, oh my shit. god! Bombs away! Bombs away! Oh, jam it in, Joe. Where's it going, Joe? Where's it going? They plan the spot all day long. Where's it going, Joe? Whoa, whoa, it's in your bunghole. <laughs> yes! Audio junk. Where are all those bomb droppers? Welsh, Turtle Fuck Todd, SJW Weirdo Mongoloid. Oh, man. Thank- <laughs> wow. All right. Thank God for Ghost from the Coast, man. He's the only one dropping bombs. I love you, brother. Thank you. Yo, Joe, I, I was just trying to say this earlier. If you like the uh, the Joe Rogan thing, remember that um, that uh, Gorilla Monsoon podcast that I sent you where the guy uh, impersonates Gorilla Monsoon? Yeah. He did that with the whole Hogan, uh, Joe Rogan interview. It is awesome. It oh. is so good. I'll send that to you when I, when I find it. It's so funny. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, send it to me in uh, DM or whatever. Um, let me gotcha. get, Let me get Ghost up here. Uh, well, actually, Ghost is already up here. He's just adding to his... Adding to his fucking masterful donations, one hundred dollars. I doubt anybody's going to beat that tonight. Like you said, Ghost, it's a little quiet this past week with the bombs. Hey Joe, I'm sending, I'm sending you a, a clip of that um, uh huh, interview where he asks him about the moon landing. Oh yes, I love that. I just that we had a fun time breaking that down that night. My life was in danger. <laughs> I've been going to wrestling shows for over thirty years. Fuck you up with a broomstick. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. All right. Should we do final notes on payback? What do you guys yeah, think? Yeah, let's drop drop those final thoughts. Anything we didn't say about payback, let's um, let's say those right now. The only thing I would di- th- thought was cool was I did think that Cena coming out and helping... Uh, give credence to the Miz match um also helped out um LA Knight and the we had it on where I was with family and casual watchers were like oh who's LA Knight they were like we know Cena so it definitely elevated it for the casual viewer so I did like that um yeah yeah I could actually even though they already did the whole thing with Cena you know giving the the rub to Cody Rhodes earlier this year, and now they're just doing it with LA Knight again. It definitely is a sign that they really do like LA Knight and they want to invest him in invest in him more. 
Although I personally wouldn't have put John Cena into that match because that match was all, probably the most anticipated match of the night as it was. You didn't need to add Cena into that. You know, if you if if he was like if he was to make a you know a spot at the end, that would have been fine. But like him as a guest referee. I don't know, it was a little bit distracting. Although I did like that LA Knight was like, hey, I don't give a damn who the hell you are. I'll knock you out if you try to cost me this match. Like, you know, doing basically what the Judgment Day couldn't do, and that's, um, you know, sound like a threat and sound convincing and not sound like a fucking dweeb. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't you disagree. You know what that means, right? That means that this coming Friday, they might have a little promo war going on. So that'd be interesting to see you know, how that goes. Yeah, I hope um, John, I can't wait to see John Cena smile through LA Knight's entire promo trying to bury him because that's basically what John does in every promo. Somebody will well, shit on him. Lose his, uh, at least Cena doesn't lose his smile like Shawn Michaels. He always keeps it. Yeah, it's, it's annoying though. Like I, I get annoyed when he does that. Like somebody will legitimately be roasting the shit out of him and then he just smiles the whole time. It's like, dude. You're making the other guy look like a fucking asshole. Like it's it's so selfish of Cena, and like people will be like, "No, he's smiling because he's proud of the other guy." It's like, no, you do it because you don't want to look like an idiot. So it's like, oh, I'm gonna just you know make my goofy dumb face during someone's <laughs> promo. It makes the other guy look like a fucking jackass. Can you stop doing it, please? Like I I hate when he does that. And you know what else I hate? I hate when Seth Rollins. He, he hits the fucking curb stomp, and then he takes 37 seconds to pin somebody and still gets the three count. It's fucking stupid. Stop doing Working it. Working that back injury. Working that back no, injury. Like he's, done it to, he, he's done it to Shinsuke. He's done it to Finn. He's done it to AJ. He's done it to The Miz. He's done it to so many fucking people where he'll hit a curb stomp, and then he'll fucking, like, you know, because of the injury that he's that he's been working on the entire match— He'll he'll take like ten or fifteen seconds to cover the guy, and the guy still gets pinned clean. It's stupid. Don't do that spot unless there's unless there's gonna be a kickout spot. It, was, it looks like, it it looks oh, like yeah, the champ yeah. needs to, to say something here. Let's give the the champ. He's got his belt. What what does the champ need to say? Yeah. Here? What do you want to say, champ? I don't want to say anything. I was listening to you guys. I was just every once in a while I take my prize down, and I and I hold it like a man. I thought you said you took your pride down. My, my my bad. You said prize. Yeah, I said prize, <laughs> autistic man. Hey, Joe, I'm, no, I'm, I'm not actually, autistic I'm, at all. I'm in the comments of that interview, that Kodak Black interview, mm. and everybody in the comments are defending Kodak Black and saying how talented he is. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Kodak. Oh, the faggot car. It make us go from this, epi- this episode is brought to you by you know, Kodak Black. You know, I'm so talented. I got gun charged seven times. We charged five times in jail. Uh-huh. Okay, Kodak. Yo, if Bart Simpson was a lesbian, he'd have your fucking hair, Kodak. Just letting you know, bro. What are you going to do? Good shoot job. me? Come shoot me. I, oh, I'm scared for my life. My life was in danger. Yeah. My wife was in danger. Oh, yeah, Tony yeah. gone? Yeah, t- yeah, Tony? My life was in danger. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you have an announcement to make that you're going to defend it or are you still too scared? Oh, I'll let I'm going to let the fans in the chat. I think we're going to let the people decide when we're going to defend this belt again. Guys, when should I defend this belt again? Should I defend tonight. this belt in September? September. Uh, September? T- tonight. No, tonight. Get the fuck out of here. Good. People don't even have money to donate to 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 give you got nobody will win this title from me right now. You wouldn't even want me to defend it right now. Look at how hey, beautiful donate, this belt is. Donate that was negative created. money to me. I I know you want to. Created by Sith Negan. So many people have won this and, and titles have been shipped throughout the world. But look at the brand new monetize this championship. Like, does it get any sexier than this? Does it get it any sexier? Look at this fucking thing. Do you, I'm challenging you and you episode four thirty. That's five weeks from now. You put that belt up on the line because I don't think you can defend it then. That's longer than what Joe was saying. He said, I'll defend it in September. And now you're asking him to defend it in five weeks. Look, 430 is a It's a busy September for me. I got got my son's birthday, my wife's birthday, my anniversary. It's uncrazy what's going on in September. The kids are back to school. 
like a busy ass month. I've got to grind it out at work like 70 fucking hours. Dude, I got to grind so much at work to hit my bonuses in order to have a Christmas this year. It's going to be insane. So maybe September. I'm curious, maybe, actually. Maybe October would be better. I'm, I'm curious how much of Joe's no, DNA is actually no. on that belt because he's had it for so long. Was that? Did I just hear Tommy's impression of fucking Elmo? Because that, <laughs> that's what that sounded that like. Yeah. Tom. Hey Joe, I that sent you the mean. clip. I sent you the clip and the timestamp for it. Oh, uh, hey, Kodak. Can I ask you a question. Let's see what what did you send me, Luke? How long is this? Just go to fifteen twenty four. Okay, fifteen twenty four. This is what what's that when they ask him about the. Moon landing? This is the uh, serious stare down and then the question. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes, I remember this. Sexual assault here is serious. And we can't, you know, uh, get into details, but we hope, you know, to have you back so we can have a, a deeper conversation about that because, you know, this is a serious topic. And we're hearing these stories a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what um, the fuck? The one thing we were talking about in the show today. Nick. Kodak Black makes it look like a little kid would make when, like, your father is like, nah, son, you ain't getting no more fucking candy. You had enough. Shut the fuck up. And your son's like, <laughs> like, he's so fucking mad, dude. He's like, what the? That guy basically was being a dad right there. Like, yeah, man, hope this shit about you raping somebody ain't true because there's been a lot of that shit. We, we need fucking real men again. You know, we'll have a conversation about that later. What the fuck? Like, look at Kodak. Can't, you know, and go back to the look that he, the details, that the other guy gave to him. Back so we can have a, a deeper conversation about that because. Well, he's doing this on purpose. So, yeah, he, he must give him a look like, yeah, I said that shit. You're a fucking rapist. I want to say that, but I can't, but I want to. You know, this is a serious topic, and we're hearing these stories a lot. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> Um, <laughs> and then and then and then Peter Rosenberg, you gotta let it play out. Um, okay, let's just move on. Hey, look like I have sucked milk. For some reason, I just have a hunch that you would care about me. The idea that landing on the moon was a conspiracy. Kodak, do you believe <laughs> that our moon landing in 1969 actually took place? What the fuck, y'all come? <laughs> 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 Like how awkward! Like the worst, <laughs> and then, the worst topic to to transition to. <laughs> was it, so, dude, he didn't like that either. So it's like first they got him on this super serious shit about the rape thing, and that really pissed him off. But then he goes, "Oh, you think the moon landing's fake?" And that now that pisses him off again. He goes, "What the fuck, y'all talking about?" No. And then this guy's like, "You know what? You seem upset about it. Like he's trying to fuck with him here." Yeah. And that uh, Rosenberg looks at him there like, oh, my God, bro, you're really going back to this? I was trying to segue. I feel like <clears throat> sometimes when niggas, like, we going through shit, like, I'm entertained by bullshit. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Or, like, change the subject. I'm finna walk out. <laughs> change the subject. I'm finna walk out. <laughs> 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 He did. He tried to there. change the fucking topic into the goddamn NASA shit. We'll change which subject? Just whatever. Like, well, no, for... they tried to change the subject. They was talking about the moon landing. That's bullshit too. Stop uh, talking yeah, about yeah, you <laughs> <don't>... <laughs> That's bullshit too. Yes. He's right though. In a way, you know, he is and right. You no, know, I know. Kodak. Kodak is a fucking idiot. But to go from like getting questioned about some crime or whatever that you may or may have not committed. And then to transition into a topic that's like designed to make you look <laughs> stupid. Like, yeah, like obviously they were trying to fuck with him, but Kodak deserves it if he raped a girl. <laughs> right. But, but, but it, let's pretend he's in, let's say he's innocent because innocent till proven guilty. And I don't know what happened with that. I'm assuming he's innocent because he never went to jail for that sort of thing. So let's say yeah, people uh, defend him. Innocent. People defend like yeah. in the comments of this video, people are defending him a lot. So, so maybe I always he was said, innocent. well, dude. And so you were just cornered with like, Oh, you think it's a fake fucking landing. So that's so like an, a bad way to transition what they could have, what, what Peter Rosenberg should have done is said, you know, I've heard that you think the moon landing was fake, you know, and we've had conversations here about, about that and how many conspiracies there are in the world. 
And, you know, did we really land on the moon? And, I, you know, some of us think it was real. Some of us don't know. What is your standings on that? You know, maybe that could have been a better way. He sort of came at him accusatory about a goofy topic after he just got accused kind of of the rape thing. And so Kodak, dude, Kodak's head spun because, dude, uh, uh, like he actually some guys would have gotten up and started a fight like then or walked out immediately. Kodak is fighting himself with like. Because I don't think Kodak is very tough without a gun. Maybe like he's probably not a fighter, fist fighter. He's like a he might shoot you, but he has no physical whatever. So like he couldn't. He was so passive aggressive. Like he was like, mm, mm, but he should have just done a Mike Tyson. Be like this motherfucker, fuck yourself. Like I fucking tell you, fucking hot air you go. You call me a rapist, you're a fucking rapist, motherfucker. Fuck you. You look like a fucking asshole, motherfucker. Like, it would have been funny if he just flipped out and said, you know, fuck you, fight me now. Like, but he he just like was trying to hold it in, trying to be like a good guy, but he couldn't deal with it, so he passively aggressive was like. I mean, but Joe, in his fairness, can he sound like a badass with his voice? No, I mean, he's, <laughs> dude, he sounds like a fucking baby in a fuck. He sounds like he's still in the crib at fucking Bebe's house. Like, he fucking really, like, I don't know, bro. Kodak Black is a weird sounding person. Well, well Jar O2, cool, man. Rest Jar-O-2 in peace, Jimmy Buffett. Says he, he says he pled guilty to assault instead of rape. Ooh. That's not good. Well, did he have well to you know what, though? That could be. To be fair, though, that could have been just there. been like, yeah, they, they probably could have been like um, just offering him a lesser charge because that happens. People just take, you know, responsibility for charges that they weren't even accused of so they don't have to get in trouble for something even bigger. Yeah. Like recently that happened to um, Nickelodeon actor uh, from Drake and Josh, Drake Bell. Drake Bell. Mm. Yeah. He, this is for my generation, whoever's watching, from Drake and Josh, a fucking awesome show. Anyway, he gets accused that he was talking to this underage girl and that he did all this shit and she accused him of all this horrible shit. And then it turned out that she was lying about pretty much all of it. But classic. He, he still had to plead guilty to child endangerment, despite the fact that he was pretty much innocent. Just Jesus. because... Just because why, you know, just so the fucking uh, case didn't go on forever and end up costing him so much fucking money. So this guy literally did nothing and got charged with child endangerment. And now everybody is calling him a pedophile. Well, that's a, so, like, that's, a rest- that's a slander case then. In my well, the, email, I just got Frank a innocent. that a pedophile moved into my neighborhood and it had his picture and it said what he did and everything. It was kind of gay. Literally, he he's going after little boys. So oh, was, wait, so he's gay? Yeah, he, it was. Going, he went after little boys, but he was twenty years old. Mm, so it makes weird. me wonder. Maybe was it was it? I don't know. Maybe it's he like looked, what you did when you were twenty. Whoa, take it easy, man. <laughs> whoa, 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 hey, whoa, hey whoa, man, whoa, no, what I do? I don't believe it. Hey, About hey. to come down the aisle, Jimmy Buffett. Uh, Jimmy Buffett, going Turpa, to heaven, baby. Turpa twenty one. I did get that joke in the chat, and I think it's hilarious. I love oh, you, Jimmy Buffett. Cremation in paradise. Cremation in paradise. Now I got I'm salty. Paradise. By the way, I found out about Jimmy Buffett because of Garguts this morning. I woke up, rolled out of bed, looked at his stream, and was like, "Why is he playing Jimmy Buffett? It's like seven in the morning, <laughs> dude." I was like, "Dude, why? Why is Garguts playing Jimmy Buffett?" And I'm like, "Whatever." <laughs> and then like two minutes later, I was like, "Oh my god, no, like no." So we're gonna. <laughs> We're going to give love to Jimmy Buffett all night long. We're going to play that, that donation, that test donation, so people know what the dono is. A lot of people asked. I forgot about it because all the big donations started coming in. Um, Ghost from the Coast dropped $100, called out D. Welsh and everybody else. I think everybody's poor and bankrupt at this point, though, brother. But thank you, Ghost from the Coast. He still has money in the bank. Here's a test. Here's the new sixteen. Say yeah. The new $16 donation. You make them say yeah. Say, yeah. You will make him say, yeah. You know, I'll make him say, yeah. yeah. You know, I'll make him say, yeah. You know, I'll make him say, yeah. 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 You know, I'll make him say, yeah. 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 You know, I'll make him say, yeah. 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 yeah.
This is a test there donation you go. for sixteen dollars. The brand new sixteen dollar, sixteen dollar. Hey, that's the key number tonight. Sixteen dollar donation. If you want to drop it, I love how you and Garga both spell Jimmy Buffett, Jimmy Buffet in your. Did we? Did we oh, did I spell it wrong? Oh, oh my man, god! Dude. How could I do that to my fucking idiots? How could I do that to my king? Oh my God, Jimmy Buffett! To your king, ill, ill. Well, bro, so we're gonna well, have a, we're gonna have a buffet checkmate. with his. Uh, we're gonna have a buffet with his bones. Uh, yeah, the buzzards are eating him like a buffet right now. You can it eat. makes. Yeah, I mean, I understand Gar got spelling it wrong because he's half the fuck. He's half asleep half the time on his show, but like Joe, come on. I know. Bro. I'm you a big fan. Check. I'm a real Buffett fan, dude. I got. I have. So, I have his all his CDs, bro. I've even got like boats, beaches, and all that. That collection fucking disc and a bunch of his lives. Like, listen, man. I've been listening to Jimmy Buffett since I was nine years old. It's the. I don't like country music, but the fusion of Jimmy Buffett's country with the island vibe that he's got. He appropriated mm-hmm. island music. Obviously, it's awesome. Um, it's yeah. I just love Jimmy Buffett, and we're gonna pay tribute to Buffett. Appropriated it. Yeah, well, that's what they say now. That's what the kids say now, don't they? Um, Let's not yeah, say that because it really it makes my skin crawl. Really, does it? Uh, it? One T. it? Hearing someone say appropriated something is so fucking like what they they fucking took inspiration. Yes. So fucking gay. You ever I heard? It? I just I hate say, hearing. I say it, only, oh. I say it when I'm. I only say it when I'm going to put it in the girl's mouth. I'm going to appropriate. Whoa. It Oh. It's like how people say that Elvis, um, how he culturally appropriated uh, black people music, and you know he took away rock from. Well, that's black why people. it's funny. It's like no, he didn't. It's, he was constantly sh- He was constantly touting black artists. I mean, just just because he carried over the fucking genre and you know popularized it for other white people doesn't mean like oh he stole it from the blacks. Well, that's yeah, why it that, cracked me up. He, the black people actually raised him and fucking showed him how to play it. So, did you ever? Know. Yeah, you, you ever hey, hear? Elvis, we're gonna teach you how to shuck and job, boy. Get uh, your fucking Jimmy guitar, Buffett man. would Jimmy Buffett's live concerts are the funniest because he would always like do that thing where he talks over stuff. He'd like sing the song and then he would like talk. And I I put up a video about it a while ago. Listen to a second of this. Look at this. This is what Buffett would do live at the show. Yeah, this is what Buffett would do live. And he would talk to the crowd. Oil, it covered. <laughs> I'm strumming my six string. Unbelievable Jimmy Buffett. On my front porch swing. Mm. Smell of the shrimp there beginning to boil. Like little babies. Oh. Wasted oh my away again. Unbelievable. Shake, shake, shake. See, he would talk to the crowd. It's amazing how he would talk to the crowd during those songs. Inspiration. Oh, you got big old titties. I like I was, it. I was convinced what? you didn't like Jimmy Buffett because of your stepdad. No, no. I told this. So I, you're probably confusing it because what I said was when I, I told a story about this once. And basically looking at um, looking at Jimmy Buffett, what happened was. When my father died when I was eight, my mother met that other guy well, my father died. when I was about eight, nine, <laughs> nine and a half years old. I think it was nine and a half when my mother met her, this boyfriend guy of hers. And this guy was, first of all, he kind of looked like Jimmy Buffett a little bit, but he was a little bit, whatever, but he was like an evil drunk, if that makes any sense. And one of the things that was most annoying about him was like, my father was quiet and my mom was such a homemaker mommy type. And this guy was loud and drunk and obnoxious, and he made me uncomfortable, bro. I was always scared around him. I never knew it was going to happen, and he was so loud. You feared for your life. And I feared for my life like Tony Khan fears for his life uh, backstage. My life was in danger. And he would, and one of the things he would do is he would blare Jimmy Buffett. And so even when he was drunk and, and like, so if you got in the car with him, he'd be like, what do you want to listen? What do you want to listen to, Danny? Is like what he would say, and I'd be like, all I could think of was like I can't believe this guy's living at my house and like my dad's dead like and this crazy Jesus person is Christ. living at my house and then I'd be like I don't know like I he's like well what type he's like what type of music you want to listen to boy and I'd be like I don't know and then he'd be like 
we're going to listen to Buffett, son. Now, he didn't have a southern accent. He was from Massachusetts. But he would do this accent. Like, oh, you don't know Buffett, son. And it would be like, what the fuck? Right as he turns the car on drunk, and we would, he would drive me somewhere, and I'd be terrified. And the whole time we're driving somewhere, and he's swerving and accelerating and going like, hey. he's like, you know this song? Do you know what about? And he would like just yell at me about stuff. And don't you know this? What are you, a pussy? And I'd be like, I don't know, man. I just, I'm really terrified right now. And, and he'd be blaring Jimmy Buffett. So, like, for a little while, I hated Jimmy Buffett for a little bit. And even as a kid, but but eventually I, I got some of his tapes when I was 10 and 11, and I would listen to them, and I found I did like the songs, and I started really liking Jimmy Buffett a little bit. You know, I, I didn't I, I like more stuff like Aerosmith and Nine Inch Nails and things like that, but I, I, I did find myself putting on Jimmy Buffett songs and kind of liking the music. And we would go to Jimmy. We went to four Jimmy Buffett concerts when I was a kid. And at the Jimmy Buffett concerts, the same thing would happen every time. He would start trying to drink before we drive to the show. He would begin drinking when we got to the show. And by the middle of the show, he would start a fight with my mother. Or my mother would get in a fight with him. And then he would wander off during the concert, leaving us in like a rage. And my mother would end up either dragging me to go try to find out where he went or my mother would say, stay here, and then she'd go looking for him, and I'd be terrified that I was never going to see them again at Great Woods in Massachusetts, and and then they, and they would fight at the concert. So all these people would be having fun, and like Jimmy Buffett's playing, and we're watching him, but my parents or my mother and her boyfriend – are fighting and, and running away from each other and then finding each other. And then he comes over and is like, all right, have, can you shut? Are you going to shut the fuck up yet? You know? And then my mom would be like, well, you've had enough to drink mother. And like, but, and then he'd be like, you're just a fucking cunt. Like, and then I, and I just sit there like, I hate, life like i hate my life well, what, i want to die well was your was your mom there, was like, your mom a Jimmy buffett after this my <laughs> mom listen sure. my mother my mother is naggy and stuff like that but she, but he was fucked bro he was drunk i gotta out of side his with mind. him on this son on this one right but no i'm telling you dude no, he so, was he so was when did you fucked. start liking jimmy buffett then like you just said nothing but bad shit. I, right I, I know. So I'm, what I'm trying to say is like... I'll you probably not... think I hate Jimmy Buffett because I'm telling you a 25-minute story where I hate him. But I literally, right. literally what, what happened was I, I did like Jimmy Buffett, though. Um, but there was... So it went from I, I, I didn't like it at all because he liked it to like, okay, I kind of like this now. To like, okay, there's some good memories with it, but there's also bad memories. But then once... I once he moved out and everything went away after about six years, um, I then found myself going back as a teenager once in a while to be like, I really do like Jimmy Buffett still. And I'd put on Jimmy Buffett stuff. And that's where I started really appreciating it more um, because it had nothing to do with him anymore. It was just me and that music. So anyway, that's a story. So and so forever, I've always liked Jimmy Buffett. But there is a piece of it that reminds me of of my mother's ex-boyfriend and even though he was a bad dude there's still a part of me that like you know y you like someone even though they're abusive do you know what i mean like the guy was a nutcase but it's like now it's funny do you know what i mean it's like really funny dude all the stuff i went through living with that this guy's guy dead? no he's not dead yet but i mean so i don't what know do you know have well, you seen him i guess he could have yeah i don't think he's dead but he i mean he got arrested a few years back but i don't remember him dead. maybe he he's died Maybe he's in hell with your real father. No, oh, let's ask my him. God. Let's ask some I think you should get the, the opportunity to put him down, actually. Let's ask No, some imagine it, it'd be funny. Yeah. Your dad goes to hell, but your stepdad, your stepdad goes to heaven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for some reason, I don't, I don't realize that even though my father was wicked nice and dorky and into sci-fi, and he got along with me and my mom so much, he was a sweetheart of a guy at home, but I didn't realize on the side he was <laughs> raping babies. And me, and, and, and me, and meanwhile, and your stepdad, your stepdad <laughs> is just—he was just a, your stepdad was just a drunk asshole yeah. because he had to like, he had to save a bunch of people in a burning building. He saw like a whole family die, and he's just been scarred for life. And he made like a big redemption after he fucking moved out of your house. Like, like your whole perception on life would just be completely changed. Oh my god, like, dude, that would be. Previous family was murdered by a kid that looks exactly like Joe. Yeah. And so he's like, he oh has my to drink God. to like, a, but he still doesn't tell you that because he loves me. No, 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 no. Joe reminds him. Joe reminds him of one of the one of the little kids that died, 
in the fire, and he's like, he just he has so much rage because he couldn't save them. Jeez. Oh my like god! Fucking Joe's M and M version. Is there my, a positive story you have with your stepdad? What was something fun that um, you guys did? Okay, so I mean, like, molestation. No, I mean no. it's. There was like a couple of times, man, where he tried to do this. You know, where he tried to be like, like, like when we went to Mardi Gras and he grabbed those two girls that were hot. I, I, I was probably I was a I was eleven or twelve. I think I was twelve or eleven, probably eleven. And those girls were probably fifteen, and they were hot. And like he was like, Dan, come over here. No, no, go over to those girls right there. And he wanted to take a picture, like so he can take a picture. And he's like, "Hey, girls, like my, like my, my kid wants to take a photo with you, or whatever." He's like, "Put your," he's like, "Get in the picture with him." And I, like, think how weird that is, right? These two random fifteen-year-old chicks, all dressed, all sexy, like, <laughs> and I'm eleven. Fucking like, dude, these <laughs> these girls were in a like crazy dressed for like Mardi Gras. They might have been sixteen, I don't know, but I was eleven, and. Uh, you know, I have the picture. I showed it on the show once, and the oh, and yeah. and the, he's like, put your arms around him, get in there real good. You know, he's like, squeeze him, Danny. You know, and so that that's put your you know, face in there. You know, once in a while, you know, he would do stuff like that that was kind of cool. And you know, he that's did give lovely. me one set of he gave me one great piece of advice. He goes, let me tell you. He's like, if you don't start stop fucking around, you're gonna end up in pregnant. He's like, you're gonna end up knocking up some house neck whore. You know, because in 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 Quincy, I was I was living in Howe's Neck, which is the end right near the ocean, and we call it the Neck, right? And so he's like, you'll you'll knock up some whore from the Neck or whatever, and he was right because I started dating this girl down the street years and years later. Wait, wait, wait! After I thought you were gonna say that's what you did to Leah. And no, no, she was, he was right. Leah, no, Leah was. I did knock up some whore. Leah was from Quincy, no, no, but she's from the other side. <clears throat> what? Nothing. Okay, God. talked over everything, but then you can't tell you what you said. What the fuck? <laughs> what a nah, waste. I forgot what I said. Is that Creeper hostage? Yeah, it was Creeper. You, yeah. Creeper, God damn it, dude. What are you doing? Listen, she's <laughs> she's from Quincy, but she's not from, like, How's Neck. Like, How's Neck is a different no, what breed. I said, what I said was that she was <laughs> lace curtain. Meat curtains? No, lace curtain. <laughs> Fucking lace curtain. What's that? Like lace a great. fucking Irish, like lace curtain Irish fucking whatever the fuck came up from that fucking movie, The Departed. Oh my god! I don't god, even. I don't remember. Hostage. I don't remember that. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know why, but I I don't. I don't remember that. Oh, he's talking about Leah. I I know, but I don't know what he's saying at all. He's just saying it's like like oh you know about Leah like the marble tomatoes like what I don't know what he just <laughs> you might as well have said that I don't hey. know what he's saying. Joe, play the play, play the explosion clip. I, if I had it, I'd play it. I don't have the blow up clip, but I, I really wish I did have it because you should be blown up. You don't have that clip. It takes literally three I, seconds no, to download. And you know what? Look up explosion. Well, you know what? Nerdy's my other sound guy, so nerdy, figure this fucking shit out, man. Come on, All right, sound I'm on it. guy. But no, my father was a sweetheart, dude. I'm telling you, dude. You can tell by looking at my dad. Listen, my dad was a nerdy like. My dad, well, my dad worked at Raytheon for the government, which is scary, actually. <laughs> he worked for Raytheon designing engineering stuff, and he was a computer guy. And I'm telling you, bro, my dad was like, like just very sweet how he talked and stuff like that. So the the babies thing could have been going on. Maybe that's why he, you know, I don't know. He, yeah, he could have been experimenting on babies. My dad was sweet though. This this man right here with me was a sweetheart of a guy, and I've got it on video. I've got it on tape. I've got. Dude, I have two hours one time. I have the two hour tape of him just playing piano with me, and he's like, "Danny, you're doing great." And he spends all this time talking to me, like it's he was really sweet, bro. It's 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 uh, too bad. But the guy Jesus. that my mother started dating, bro was literally a drunken sailor type of crazy guy. And so you couldn't be any more different of two different people that I grew up around male-wise, which I think explains why I think I have two different personalities. I think my very emotional, empathetic side comes from my father and my mother a little bit, but my crazy, like, angry side comes, I think, from growing up with that other guy. I really... Think that might be true. What, what if, and everything what else if in between comes was, from the mental illness. Everything Ill else in between mother. comes from your biological file a father. My what, that's what, I'm saying, yeah. what, if, what if your stepdad was your biological father? Oh it would, dude, he could have been because that would explain <laughs> everything, wouldn't it? 
You know? Yeah, yeah I, fu- I fucked this fucking crazy broad. She was like in some sort of fucking asylum or something. He was I in don't know. <laughs> Yellowstone character to be Joe's dad. My mother thinks she can fit that baseball glove on her hand. What an idiot. <laughs> what a dumb little woman. My mother was, I mean, my mother must have been, my mother was like 38 years old here. She thinks she can put her fucking baseball glove on her hand. Look at that. Come on, mom. Come on. Come on. Oh, Come on, mom. Let's start anyway. the hunt to find Joe's real biological father. We could do that. This we should find the, my biological father. Are you out there, sir? You knocked <laughs> up a, a schizophrenic bitch, and uh, we never what? heard from you again. It's uh, Texan. So there's a lot of layers to this, right? Like somewhere is a biological father I've never met that I was raised until eight by that nice man. And then after that, my mother had a step, you know, boyfriend, or I had a boyfriend for seven years that I lived with. And then I was, and then at, at 15, he was kicked out. So I was on my own. By the time the Patriots won a Super Bowl. your mom and your dad really were your biological parents and they're just telling you you were adopted? Dude, I can't tell you. you. No, you have no idea how many people say that because, dude, back in school, when people would come over to my house, they'd be like, dude, you look like your mom. Are you sure you're adopted? This late, you guys look, and your dad. Like, people say it all the time. They'd be like, you look like your mom and your dad. How the, you fucking, there's no way you're adopted. I think they're lying. But what would they be lying about? Why would you lie about that? They no, know, really, they're just, just like talking about your adoption, like uh, where you were held. Well, think- it, he wasn't aborted. Yeah, it wasn't aborted. That reminds me of that episode of uh, adoption. That reminds me of that season of Curb Your Enthusiasm, where his dad tells him that he's uh, adopted. And, like the entire <laughs> season, he's trying to find out, like. Like, what do you mean I was adopted? And he thinks it's this Christian family that was his biological family. <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> seriously. Then he becomes like a good Christian person. Like, he he actually like improves his life and becomes like a great dude. And then he finds out that he's not actually adopted, <laughs> and he immediately goes back to being a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> I I think when you look at my parents, they do look a lot like me, so it really is believable. Like nobody would ever know it if I never. And I don't usually even tell everybody because I really. I do feel like my my mother raised me since I was a baby. She's my mom to me. You dude, my my yeah. I would never ever believe my <laughs> I I would never treat my biological mo- like it's just not real. My mother is such a mother to me that it's like look at my kids. Even my, I think Gavin kind of looks like my my father a little bit. You know what I mean? It's like it's weird, yeah. dude. It's like they all That was your like, mom? That was your mom with the baseball glove? Yeah. She's sexy, bro. I, I oh mean, my uh, god. Girl, what the girl, fuck? Is- Wow, I mean, hey, Ross gonna hey, bang my mom. Honest, yeah. Carlton Fisk. Look, I would fuck, you would fuck your mom. That? She oh. wouldn't fuck me, but I would fuck your well, mom. Well, now she's seventy-two. You like? I mean, you know, Luke don't she give a fuck. fuck. Luke, just in my yeah, range. So she's single right now, Luke. She's been single since she booted that guy out. You want a piece of her? I had sex I with a deer. All right, you think I'm not gonna have sex with with you that? Know, That's true. true. It would be full circle if Joe lose or if uh, Luke. Loses his virginity to Joe's mom because then he like oh, yeah. actually if you yes, if you look at Leah here in this picture, I think Leah is close. No, Leah, yeah, Leah is close to the age of my mother in that picture. In this picture, isn't that weird? So weird. honestly, your mom looks so much like you in that photo. I'm convinced she's lying to you. Oh, I, she I don't... cheated on my dad and like <laughs> he had the baby in some other place, like in a <laughs> in the yeah, or something. Like it has to be that because like, dude. She looks that that looks like you. That she's got the fucking the jawline, the eyes. Like, dude, come on, bro. This is fucking bullshit. They're lying to you, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> dude, that's what I, I people always have said. That they're like, they they they're like no fucking she, way. She can't be lying because he found his real mother. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I called. The, I found the charity place and I found my mom and yeah. 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 You should freak her out and do like say you're doing a 23 in me, but then be like, dude, they came back the same. You're my mom. You want my mom now, Luke? This, now she's now she's 72, Luke. You want to you want you want to come over? Oh, you're my mom. I'm trying to see the photo. Send me a photo. It's on. I'm showing it in the Discord. Right in the Discord, baby. Yeah, you're fucking. The Discord sucks for me because oh. it it's keeps saying. They keep saying your video is disconnected, oh, so I don't really give a shit. My my beautiful seventy two year old mother, I love her. She called me tonight and oh, said, "I see her now." Yeah, yeah, see? she's a fox, dude. Seventy two. Wow. Yeah. You can get it. You can get it. Just go, you know what? Take the picture of when she was younger with you and and just look at it while you're you know, and just go <laughs> for it. 
You know, yeah, like, there's like, something about like elderly women's voices that are just like so unsexy. They're just like, oh god, just man, make, make sure you don't make a match later because you know I have the kids coming over and like you're just trying to fuck her and she's just talking about her day. Yeah, well, I went to the I went to Marcus's this uh, this afternoon. It was so crowded today. I just can't believe it. Fucking, Wait a minute, my mother was just. You, did you not hear the podcast with me and my mom? Because then you can hear what she sounds like in the podcast. You didn't you hear that? His mom sounds hot, dude. I don't know how to do. I'm sorry, I don't know how to do a perfect voice of your mom, a perfect impersonation. What do you think? My you think my you know what I should do on Patreon is. Watch like some of the most like one of the most horrific AEW matches with my mom and get a reaction. Dude, that's a yeah, John idea. Moxley with fucking yeah. yeah, John Moxley with sticks in his head. Oh my god, dude, it could be dude, really funny. Yo, that's a new video. Uh, like what seventy-two year old woman watches Hell in the Cell '98 for the first time. Yes. Oh, here's a little sample of my mom what? right here. Ready? Didn't really know that. They in fact they wanted to be heard. It was weird. Yeah. So do you understand why I was crazy? Yeah, but the good thing was like I protected myself when we were when I was wrestling them and I and I sort of didn't allow them to do We're talking about backyard wrestling here. Things that they wanted to do and I didn't really do to them what they wanted to do. The worst thing and I did that was I The worst thing I did was I threw the kid's head into thumbtacks. He wanted to have his head put it put into thumbtacks. And so oh. I put his head into the thumb. We're talking about my mom coming home and like freaking out and watching us in the backyard and we're wrestling all the time. And she'd be like, oh my God, what are they doing? Tax. Because I know the thumbtacks, they're not going to hurt you. They're going to go in your head. They're going to stick there. You're going to bleed. You know, but aside from, you know, some kind of infection or something, you know, which that we wouldn't, we didn't think we, we didn't think that would happen though because we boiled, you know, the thumbtacks were boiled previously, doused in, al- in uh, rubbing alcohol. <laughs> so, you know, when they were laying on the board and I stuffed his head into them, he was bleeding everywhere, but they were... Oh, st- that's disgusting. They were oh sterilized. I think I got her voice yeah. down but pretty, you didn't, re- yeah, pretty yeah, well. Yeah, but if so, yeah, but definitely she did have that like sexier voice when she was younger because I've heard the I have video of her when she's younger and so yeah that does you know yeah you do... don't say this about your own mother and we're like yeah oh, I have video of her oh, I'm where a... she was so fucking hot but what are you talking oh. about I was adopted I could literally impregnate my own mother oh and it shit was... what? Uh, it, it... oh my god that's true <laughs> holy fuck I could be my own to you, father unless she's lying to you I could be it's my own incest. father <laughs> I could I could be my own father. Oh, you are. Or my own you Maybe are. you are maybe you are actually. Maybe yeah, that's what just, she's trying to hide from wow, you. Wow, I just I mean I'm blown away. I just just boom, this reality. I wait a minute, I could fuck my cousins. Maybe wait, wait maybe Joe, this somewhere. is what happened. This is what happened. You somehow pulled a Kyle Reese thing or whatever where you, you went, went back, back in time. In time <laughs> you went back in time and you fucked your own mom. Oh, no. And then your mom All had right. to lie about your biological what? mother. He put her oh biological my father. Oh, oh, my God, went- dude. And I'm, I'm my own dad. That is right. crazy, dude. That is the best idea. Holy that's shit. And that's Actually, why we, we can't find it. him. That's why she's schizophrenic. And I can't find my father, and they're all afraid to tell me about what it is because I went back in time and I was like, no one say a fucking thing, <laughs> and I fucking and I have to impregnate my to exist. Oh my god! What do we call Let's it? put the together. Part. Somebody get a fucking somebody get one of those like boards in a movie where they like connect the red tape against oh each other god. with like different time pictures. Did, did. Like, <clears throat> I, I am blowing. Fuck your family! I am blown away. My life was in danger. I am. I can't <laughs> shit. <laughs> I was just told there is an Ebola outbreak at the Burning Man Festival. Bunch of Cena marks are spreading the germ. Latvarian Savage. Wait, is he serious? Is this some kind of joke I'm misunderstanding? No, something did happen at the Burning Man. I did hear about this. Yeah, uh, but I didn't, people got oh, an Ebola outbreak. Oh, that's not fun. Bo- you got to boil that water, too. Oh, also, thousands were trapped in flooding because of the hurricane. Oh, so yeah, who gives a fuck? That happens every year. Oh, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna um, do? Hey, hey, how about oh, you? How about you move the fuck out of Florida? Guys, we got all right. That's true. How about you get out of Florida? But uh, it's like people who live in fucking like Detroit. Oh my god, I can't believe. Just move out of there. Somebody got oh, shot. Was, not everybody has the money to move. Yeah, you do. It's called it's called moving. You move your fucking body and you move out of a fucking shitty situation. I don't give a fuck how much money you have. Anybody can do that. Homeless people can do that. 
Burning Man's in Nevada. It is, it is hard, but um, I will. It was in Nevada. <laughs> no, yep. it's not. No, it's well, not hard to move. Called oh, drifters. Well, well, I mean, it, here the reason why I could move is because I could sell my house and have all that money, and then I'd have to move into a small, small, small place. But I could do it, right? If I had to do it, I could do it. Leah would not be happy, but I would have to do it. Um, let, what happened, all the Hollywood people. What you have should to do, do. because uh, they can't pay for their mansions now, so they're right. all trying to do cameos. I know, like, dude. Like everyone's having pro. I mean, dude, I don't know what to. I I get it. I no, you, it's greed. Listen, it's I'm called gonna greed. Uh, Brent Porter wants me to uh, review the acclaimed rap. We did not get to review the acclaimed rap tonight, so let's do that. The acclaimed they rap. Edited some of it. Oh, they did they? Let's hear it. Listen. That was it. I mean, the ball sack was kind of funny, but that was not a good one tonight. I don't think the rap gimmick has ever been good. I I honestly hate any rap gimmick in wrestling has always well, been shit. I didn't. I, I didn't like Doctor Thugonomics. I don't like no, that. I like that. But I, I, I find I like theirs a lot better because they come out and he basically raps like four lines. You know what I mean? And, and you have four, three or four lines to just make a funny joke here or there, and it's like a shoot. And I like that. The Thugonomics is different because it's like, oh no, this is gonna go on and on. Man, your face look like crap. How about that? Your whole shit is whack. Your mom can lick my ball sack. I look at your face and I hate your life. How about I go home and make your girlfriend my wife? And he was like, Yeah, but how's that any better? Like, yo, but, you got knocked out like a famous boxer who was knocked out. Well, but recently. that's what I'm saying like, to that's you. That's basically is, it. But I like that it's just the entrance. He walks down the ramp. He's got like two, three, or four zingers to throw out there. And that's it. It's part of the entrance. The it's just I don't know. To me, it's different. I like it better now. That was one of the worst ones in a while. I'd probably give that a five out of ten. But you know, I don't know. I, I just I I can deal with that a lot better than the Cena freestyle with no music. It, just, how did about- Cena? It is crazy to think that John Cena became like the number one guy off of a fucking like gimmick that honestly is pretty trash. Like, I've never liked that gimmick. First. That was trash. Cena. And then he went into the Thugonomic gimmick. Actually, dude, I think it's I think it's a combination. I think Cena got over because of the way he looked, the promo ability, um, his charisma, and I think the rap part was a small part of it. I really don't think the rap thing was the, the biggest reason. You know, I think it was a lot right. of that stuff rolled into one because if you – because it was a little corny, and but if somebody else had done it, it would have been really corny. And I feel like – do you know what I mean? Like he sort of made it work. He had well, these, that's like he ICP doing it, it because ICP now, he, now he's just back. And well, now he's back and he can smile in people's promos and bury them, uh, but then give I think them your the mic win. Is too low. Even though, nerdy, maybe that's why you get talked over every time. Your mic is too low or something. Say something. It, your your mic is, is a bit low, nerd. Is it still low? Or yeah, is it you're. Not, I mean, it's low. it's all so, right. You need another rock band mic. Go ahead. Go say what you're gonna say. Go ahead. Um, Take a shit on the floor. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I don't. I don't fucking remember. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I'll help you remember. Like you said, take a flight to Gargut's house, eat a taco, and then fucking have diarrhea. You E. coli infested. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Poor, poor nerdy this week. Like has had it really rough. Like you can tell he's about to cry. You can just hear in his voice he's just had enough of it. You know. He yeah. didn't get his title match. He's wearing a fucking referee shirt. He's got a nice fridge though. Flight to go. He's got just, a nice fridge. Yeah, he's very oh, nice fridge. Good Tony, good Tony Khan's afraid for his life. You could be him. Did you hear this earlier? Listen to this new song coming out oh, for yeah. Tony Khan. Tony Khan's afraid. We're watching the end of payback here. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never <laughs> all that time have I ever felt until last we'll Sunday like that my security, my safety, my Five life was in danger no, at a wrestling show. 
you afraid for your life at the wrestling show? You gonna fuck around and find out, you hoe? Your Middle Eastern fuck daddy's got cash. CM Punk gonna scare you so bad. Gonna shit your pants, you old hag. My life was in danger. My life was in danger. Now your life is in danger. My life was in danger. Your life is in danger. My life was in danger. in danger. Yo, your life is in danger. My life was in danger. My life was in danger. Your life is in danger. By a stranger. By your ranger. Yo, your life is up. Your life is up. My life was in danger. 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 Yo, your life is in danger. Your life is in danger. My life was in danger. Your life is in danger. Fucking echo. Life is in danger. My life was in danger. Crazy right now. Getting crazy right now. Yo, your life is. Dude, that that's gonna be a hit song. My life is in danger by Tony Khan. It's an amazing song. See, um, like I like your rap. And your rap, like even though it's obviously you know you just thinking off of whatever that comes up to your mind. Yeah, that was like the worst delivered sentence ever. I'm sorry. Um, but like yeah, like I wouldn't mind if that was somebody's gimmick. Is if they actually fucking freestyled instead of being being like, yo, your sweater back. looks like you got it from yo, Barnes and Noble. <laughs> Be like <laughs> Jamie Noble. <laughs> there was this one time where they actually came out and they had to redo it, so they had to go back because he fucked up. Ever see that? They did footage? the did, yeah. Did they do the wicked, 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 rewind? Oh my god, dude, that would be that would have been so cringe. I like I like <laughs> that I like that they kind of embraced like like Cena was doing kind of like an old school ish rap thing. Like it's like he was nowhere near. Like, he had no business, uh, I guess, like, being that cheesy but making it work. Like, it's weird yeah. how it works. Especially because he could actually rap, too. Like, yeah, he could and, rap. And, dude, when you go, the thing a lot of people probably won't realize, especially younger people, when they go back and look at it, they'll be like, wow, it was so cheesy back then. But, no, dude, it, it, it was a little bit. But also, he was dated then. Like, when he was out there that rapping the way he was rapping, you were like, this is, like, 10 years ago rap. And he's doing it now like this. So even yeah. it felt dated then, but it true, worked true. for what true. for him. Like, like men on a mission. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, kind of like men on a mission. He was like a step above that, but it was like, I don't know, dude. But like if Eminem had come out, it, you know, because think about it. Eminem was out at the time, you know, Dr. Dre, Eminem and a whole bunch of other people and other rap. They were fucking doing crazy like stuff compared to what Cena was doing where he was rhyming. Yeah. And and he would do freestyle stuff, but he would have this pre-planned. He had all these pre pre-planned lines so it sounded like he was freestyling amazingly, which you know, sometimes he was a little bit sometimes and it was really good or it was decent. It was like Dr. It was, Seuss. It was good. It was like Dr. But he, yeah, he rhymes it like Dr. Seuss and that's what always weird man. Man, and he would do it slow too so he could have time to like, man, look at your boots. Got all shook. I'ma steal from your wallet like I'm the number one crook. Your mom made me soup, and that stuff oh, made me shit. ill. So I gave her a little sleepy red and blue pill. I pulled down her pants, and I had my way with her. I impregnated her ass, and you came out. I looked at your face, and I screamed and shout because you were so ugly as hell that you made me gasp. Yo, you were so ugly. I had to cover my face in a mask. Like it was uh, like or he would just do this slow rhyming thing oh, and you'd be like, "Okay." Like and it was like like you said it was like Dr. Seuss rapping or something and it was weird. Yeah. But like mm. it worked for him cuz he was so big and a wrestler and, and, and if intimidating. You said that, that was already that was already outdated and then if you got like, you know, new freestyle now, you hear that same style. It it, it hasn't right. gone anywhere. Yeah, it's, it's it will always be kind of in there in some way, and it depends on who. Like the more you're like that, the more like dirty and nasty and scary you got to be. Because if you come out there like me doing that, like I'm gonna get eaten up. But if you come you out there wanna, like yeah. a fucking criminal oh, with tattoos all over your face and like I just fuck your ass face, I'm Matthew Bay on face, I'll rape your asshole. <laughs> it'd be like, oh my god, this guy looks crazy. You might kill somebody. Mike Tyson? 
Yeah, I don't know, I don't dude. F- that was like Kodak Black if he was more angry. I don't know, but uh, you know what I'm trying to say to you? I don't fucking know. You um, guys want to see something dirty, nasty, and crazy? What the fuck is that? What is I got that? A for you guys. Your porn is. I'm up. not gonna see naked people, am I? No, no porn, but just something oh. dirty. Oh, dirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! What are those flies? Are those flies on her pussy? Are those flies yes. on her pussy? Yes, they are. Oh yes, my god, were, dude. dude! What yes. the fuck did we just see? That's what. Did you eat that? Said. That is the. Let me see that again. Pull Francisco. that up again. John Cena can rap on that. Let me see that. Eat the flies out your pussy. I can't believe this bitch laying in the street like this. Man, her pussy, it must smell like piss. Homeless people all over the place. I see shit in this motherfucking slut bitch's face. Yeah. Somebody clean that shit up. The filthy fucking slut with the shit on her butt. Yeah, there's one guy having sex on another guy. They dry humping in the fucking green blue sky. Look at the ass crack, it's hanging out. I'm about to throw up on somebody's fucking mouth. Yeah, homeless in America, this is where we at. Motherfucking fat bitch is so fat. Look at that cat, it's pissing on that black bitch laying on the floor. The fucking coked up whore. This bitch Whoa. look like dead, like Tupac Shakur. I got more flow for you. Here we go. Here's some more. Hit me with that fucking pipe all night. Bitch's pussy looking like a fright. Oh my God. Flies laying eggs on the fucking lips. Look at this bitch. Man, she just dipped out of life in existence. Look at the fucking legs. I'm about to throw up, man. Blah. I just puked on my shoes and this bitch wearing shoes while she sleeps with lube inside of her ass oh. so the black man around the corner can come in inside of her anus real fast. I put my fucking pantyhose on this fucking hoe so she knows that my dick rose. I put it in the fucking bitch's corn roll. I shot a cum load in her throat. Here I go. This bitch is so fucking broke. We went to the soup kitchen. I came first. Look at her fucking pussy, man. It's the worst. Flies all up in this bitch's cooch. I'm about to... What are we looking at? What? Go back. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go back. Wait a minute. Go Can't back, dude. Go go back. Go back to the two people on top of each other. Pa- <laughs> now, <laughs> dude, what, is that? what are we looking at? <laughs> dude, what is this? San Francisco? This is this has. Yeah, this is all time media. <laughs> Uh, six million views on YouTube <laughs> uploaded a month ago. Dude, dude, this is if you put this in black and white, it's like a Nine Inch Nails video from 1994. Dude, <laughs> like, like, wild. dude, dude, wait, wild. like, wait, wait a minute, bit. put that back up, put the, <laughs> that, freeze it right there. Oh my god, dude, wait a minute. Oh my god, dude, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. <laughs> Leave it on this for just a second, dude. Look at this. <laughs> it's like. No, we can, it's like a Titanic. Oh my God! Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait, with Lindsay. I'm gonna fucking die, bro. Passed out. Hold on. Let's get this. It's, it's a fucking Nine Inch Nails video. Oh no! <laughs> Look at that. Yes. Now play the video. Play the whole video. Play the whole video. Look at this. <laughs> it's a Nine Inch Nails video from 1990. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Trying to lick the clouds, that was up way up in the sky, and I was feeling some feelings you wouldn't believe. Sometimes I don't believe in myself, and I decided I was never coming down. Just when a tiny little dot caught my eye, it was just about to pussy. I went to pussy flies. I was laying their eggs. Oh. Down in it. I was up Look, <laughs> dude. I mean, look. Like, what the fuck are we looking at, bro? Oh, when I was young, God. I thought he was saying, "I'm a, I was up a, uh, uh, God damn it, I was a butt puppet." He's <laughs> 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 fucking. need an anti-drug, people. I'm that a is butt it. Puppet. I don't know. <laughs> I was trying not to laugh the whole time because that I don't know why, but. Wait, wait a minute, put it back up, nerdy. Put it back on again. Wait a minute, put it back on again. I'm gonna fucking dude, the die. The flies, dude. man, are so gross. We haven't even really talked about that. <laughs> Look at the flies, flies on her pussy, dude. In my pussy. Look at her pussy, dude. They're. Oh my. Oh. 
Oh god. Oh my god, I fucked up! If I still feel <laughs> like I don't know, dude. I'm just trying to see what's the funniest with this. Oh we, we I don't know how to help these people. That's the thing. Generic just a generic uh, Trent Reznor song. That's all you gotta do. Oh my it's all god. The same. Dude, it's too funny. Oh my god, dude! Leave it. Oh yeah, leave it on. Let's do one. Let's try one more. Let's try one more. One more time. Oh, not enough, dude, Joe. I don't know. One more. These people are gonna be buried in a couple weeks. Oh, no. <laughs> look at it. Look oh, at him. Oh my god! Look at the water. We, <laughs> dude. People are gonna be coming in the stream, going like, "What the fuck is going on here?" Look at this. What is oh, my going god. on? Here goes. She spreads herself wide open. To let the insects in. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Shine. She leads a trail of honey to show me where she's been. Oh my god, this is the perfect song for this. This is the weirdest thing I've ever heard. She has the blood of. What the fuck? Is this Ray Wyatt's theme song? <laughs> Seeds from a thousand others to rip down from within. <laughs> Sister Abigail on crap. I believe she's the fly. What's, what's Rhea Ripley's song? I eat, sleep, bleed. <laughs> I mean, dude, that's really that is that is rep, the most reptile is the best song, bro. That's the best song. Joe. She spreads herself wide <laughs> open to let the insects in. It doesn't. Joe, that's the like, biggest vagina monster music I've ever heard. Joe, just like Luke said, Joe, just like Luke said you should do the Bray White one. Oh, oh with no. the music. Oh yeah, the Watch recent, the the newest, the newest Bray one. Wyatt theme. Like, no catch oh. a fly in her puss. <laughs> oh, you I, honestly, I honestly think his his last theme probably was his best theme, or maybe I don't know, maybe his second best. But yeah, yeah, so no, good. I, I think they were well, both good in different ways. Fit, yeah, something. I wish it got fit. to play. I wish it got played Shit more. Bomb. Yes. I am Joe's real dad. Two bats. Binger isn't here. That would be so good if you were my dad. I would love to find my biological. Um, new donate. New donation. Sixteen dollars. Drop it if you got the dough, and if you're crazy. Uh, Bonesaw McGraw is here. Bonesaw McGraw, thank you, sir. Who's hey, my... Joe. Yo. Did you um? Did you catch what I said about Seth earlier? Or like, did you notice at the end of the match? And he's done this a few times. Uh, actually, I think he's done this a lot. Um, he hits the curb stomp, and then he sells his injury for like twenty seconds. Thirty seven seconds. You said that, yeah. Yeah, something like that. And then he goes for the pin, and then Shinsuke doesn't kick out, but has his eyes open the entire time while the pin's taking place. Well, he's not stupid. And it, like, what? He was not stupid, you know? That's all. He was well, not, I'm just, you know... well, that's not, but also it's like, dude, the, the way they set up the spot would make you think that there's a kick out coming, and then when it doesn't happen, you're like, oh, the match is over? Yeah. And then, like that whole thing, like that probably was the worst decision of the of the night was to put that match on last because it fucked with the with the pacing. There wasn't anything that happened at the end to make it to make it um, justified to be the main event. Like the tag team match definitely should have gone on last because not only did it have, um, not only was it the best match and it was the longest. But it also had the bigger ending, too, with all of them with the gold and stuff. Why have right. that be the third match, of the, the third to last match? Mm -hmm. And then why have the Super next match be Rhea defending her title? Like, the, to me, that the didn't make any sense. Nine Inch Nails, best album. 
Jake, uh, Jake, thank you so much for the dollar ninety nine. The Fragile is Nine Inch Nails' best album. I remember when people were upset at it when it came out, but I I do love it. That's my. I would say that I love man. I love all the albums from the Fragile and before, but yeah, Fragile is probably my favorite Nine Inch Nails album. Yeah, probably true. <clears throat> Absolutely. Oh yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Hell well, yeah. I, uh, Hell yeah, man. Right on, right on. Right on. Right on. Right on, man. Right on, man. Right on, man. Right on. Right on that man. wasn't even my produced segment. Uh, I did make something that, we, again, we could play. Um, it's a Would You Rather, and Ugh. it's Twitter Race Edition. Now, this we are going to discuss ourselves no. what, what we would do, but ultimately, this is a poll. So the first question was, would you rather date a chick who had 30 bodies that were all white dudes or four bodies that were all black dudes. Okay. Yeah, this had 30,000. Yeah. This had, yeah. No. That's, that's alpha. That's alpha, man. No, no. This had 30,000 votes. So we're going to guess what Twitter guess. Do you guys Nerd. think Twitter Nerd. A? Damn it. Twitter Yo, shit is backwards. Twitter what? Oh, it's backwards. My bad. Yeah, his shit's I, always backwards. I thought you meant it was stupid. I was like, shit, damn, you went straight for the jugular on that one. Damn, no, he did. He stupid. did. No, man. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go, boys. No worry. All right. My bad. Thank you, Jay Minutes. My bad. Would you ask if um if you would like four guys in you or something? Ooh, I, I was just joking around. I was gonna make a joke on Nerdy, but um, you know, <laughs> I couldn't do it. Okay, Nerdy's gonna think. How about you sing a Buffett song? Sing a Buffett song. Cheeseburgers in Paradise, but about nerdy. <laughs> it's fucking the, the day the whole world went away. No, my guitar's out of tune, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, 30 bodies, all white guys. Uh, play, let me see that again. Nerdy's got it figured out. He fixed it, everybody. Let me go back to it. Um, okay, there it is. Oh, it's all fucked up. Is this a real question on Twitter, dude? Are you serious? Yeah, 30,000 people answered this question. Why is it backwards now? Is that what you're saying? It's backwards now? No, no, now? it's good. No, no, you're fine now. No, okay. It's good. I was going to delay, but you're good. you get figured it out. There it is. Good job. So, 30,000 people voted on this. <clears throat> what do you guys think the people voted? A or B? Uh, I need a girl with all white 30 people. bodies, all white guys. People voted white people. <laughs> four, yeah, people do bodies? hate white people, especially on Twitter. Wait a minute. What? I don't get... Th- what? Bodies? Like, what do you? What is this? What oh, is, this is how many people she slept with. You saying how so, many dicks she took? Who? Yeah. Who took? The That's chick. The Who's the chick? This is a great question, nerdy. Yeah, because you guys can't. Re- oh, I Amazing. forgot. You guys can't read. Uh, it says there. Would you rather date a girl with 30, 30 partners that were all white dudes, or four partners that were all black? Why dudes? does it say would bodies? You- because so it, like, it's, it's trying to be like hip, and then like yeah, that's, that's how the kids that's say it. What a chick with a drunk eight like, girl. Wait, is bodies in their basement? Like wait. y'all, what's your body count, dog? Yeah, dude, it sounds like she's a murderer. Murder. Wait, body count Fuck is me. like murder shit. Yeah, this I sounds believe. like she murdered these people. Like, no, yeah, it's that's not the murder. point. You guys wait. are literally like the old. That's like the most old man response I've ever. I'm 39. Like, I'm fucking 40. Counts like murder. What are you talking about? You are you guys saying that she murdered people? What do you mean blockbuster bro, closed down? Bro, I'm fo- what are you talking? <laughs> what are you talking with your guff? She bodied them <laughs> like she bodied them like bang them. Yes. 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 Yeah, like they had so, sex. They, they call I, murder shit banging now. Yeah, dude. Okay. okay, I get it. Okay. All right. Yeah, like like I banged her fucking head like, into the like fucking the slang, sink. The slang where I, I'm from, I raped her. where I'm from, bodied means like she beat the shit out of somebody, but now beat the shit out of somebody means you fucked them. Okay, I'm a little confused, <laughs> but we're I'm fucking forty almost. Come no, on, no, no, like the like body, like how many people did she lay with? A body. I get it. That's no, that's I, I the get whole it. body. Count. I get. It. I've never heard of it before, but I get it. I get it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where you're from? Where's that? A fucking the whitest neighborhood in fucking Foxborough. Bro, I feel like this is the newest fucking thing to say. Like I've never heard this. I'm it really sorry. is, and it's been a while. it's been around for like a well, I, while. I, maybe if I lived in the ghetto, that, still I, just... I could figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> maybe if you fucking lived in reality instead of your fucking your fucking sailor hitch or whatever the fuck you live in by the fucking I'm white house or fucking, some shit. I'm not near an ocean. There's no sailing going on. Um, but anyway, let me see. Would you rather date a girl with four all black guys or 30 white guys? Dude, I would... Okay, I'll tell you what. I would rather A, 
because obviously 30 white dudes didn't please her enough. I still got a chance. This bitch is right. with four black guys. I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah, dude, that was yeah. my thought. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going. I'm going A. I bet you A wins. Go ahead. Dude, I'm just gonna say, who it's cares? Like, Fuck it. I'm Mexican. I'm both. Right. Yeah. Hey, but you, Joe, you, you're, you're part black. So yeah, that matter? doesn't mean that you can't Nerdy, take. That doesn't mean Asian guys. Just because you're Mexican doesn't mean you, you're not looking at the metrics, though. That doesn't matter. All, as the long metric, as they're blind, the, as long as the <laughs> That's that's the thing. That's the thing. The girl that slept with the white dudes, her pussy could be still tight. But the girl oh. who slept with the four black dudes, her pussy is probably like the grand. I, I don't think that's how it works. Oh, unless, having, unless they had four dicks of Listen. black dudes all at once, then it's a problem. Yeah, I mean, yeah. let's give some white guys some credit here. There are white guys that have yes. um, black black guy dicks you no, know the, what the fuck but does that mean there, there, are, there are white guys who have big dude and some of the ugliest white guys have the biggest dicks if you've ever noticed that the the biggest yeah. dicks. white dude no, dude you ever nerdy. been watching a porn and you see this big giant thing going in there and she's like yeah and you're like damn that guy's got a I huge cock he's a white guy that. and but then they pan over to the guy and he's like <laughs> yeah and you're like oh <laughs> yeah that's why i don't watch that's why i don't watch porn with guys in it i can never understand how anybody could watch a porno and try to jerk off to a girl while there's literally a guy's dick right in your face like that's so fucking weird to me uh, mm. oh weird yeah and, then, and what's annoying is then you're also hearing the guy going Ugh. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's like so unsexy. If you're if you're trying to jerk off uh, to the girl, the cry uh, baby. Are you guys? Uh, are you guys uh, sure as a white girl or as a black girl? Because if she's a black chick and she's already dated four black dudes, I get it. I'm gonna be like, okay, that that makes sense. I'll I'll date you. But if it's a white chick and she's dated all black dudes, is she on like the track and field team or why yeah. did she? Why is she suddenly interested in white guys now? You know what I mean? Can tell you that, I can tell you that answer. She's an albino black girl. Let me let me throw something up what? in too that nobody is. Yeah. Talking. She yeah. could be albino and black. Let J Menace speak. Yeah, let me throw some up in here nobody has said yet. Oh, no, I'm very no. interested in. Man, Garga, shut your bitch ass up. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> yeah. 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 Drink so another drink for me. Add, though, it, that nobody has said is the chick with the 30 bodies. Bro, if she gets you in that room, she gonna rock your fucking world. The chick Ooh. with the four bodies, she might not know exactly all the tricks of the trade. Well, you're gonna rock her world. Hey, yo, shit up. She yeah, Gargit, let the, the man over. finish. Well, he, you're gonna rock her world. I'm just saying. Gargit, well, stop yeah. glitching while you're while you're responding. <laughs> glitching. All right, boys. I think it's time for the results. All right, let's see it. I think it's time for the results. Uh, we'll do hey. a little bit of this yeah. here real fast. Hold on, chill. I mean, Dog she's God. a whore if she does 30, so I do see the chill. B. Did you just anyway. hear what Nerdy said? No. He went, what hold on, that? chill, Gaga. Oh, my <laughs> God, not. bro. He's yeah, you did. Not. You just <laughs> replayed the clip. He literally just said it like that, too. You should, all right, here's the result. Uh, all right. It's, it is A. Yeah. I was right. Yeah. 30,000 30, votes. Wow, 60, I nailed it. Hey. Would rather date. A chick who had sex with 30 guys. Yeah, that that's how white. scared white men are of black men. See this? It's like Jeez. a compliment, though, because it's like, because your dick's so big, it's, I feel threatened. You know what I mean? Bro, I'm telling y'all, yeah. like, dudes is going to want to go with the more experienced girl, bro. I'm telling you. True. That's a good point, Double up. And that's coming from a black yeah. man himself. Double rapid. Well, yeah, I'm not I'm not intimidated. I fuck, <laughs> girls that, I fuck girls that dated black guys, and they... I can't hear you. You were, you, you were excited. You got these results right. This is what you had predicted. Yeah, I'm sure. I thought. I thought. That I said to you. I told you. I thought this was going to be what it was. It was because my logic right. again was thirty guys. You know, I you still got a chance probably in there of impressing her. You feel like for some <laughs> weird reason, but that's how scared dudes are. You know, and and they also think, well, I'll be the first white guy, so that's. You know, I don't know, but yeah, I guess you know. There's a really good argument for B that, like, hey man, maybe she needs, maybe she's more into white guys and she doesn't know it. And also, she's only dated four guys, so that means that she's, you know, she's trying to look for the right one, maybe. And those guys just didn't work out. And maybe you'll be okay because you, you know, you unlike the B ones, are I'm gonna say something racist. <laughs> <laughs> well, moving on to the next. One. Move to the next one. All right.
All right. Would you rather date a chick who has five bodies that were all white dudes or zero bodies but only like black dudes? Okay, we, what, can, we, what? What? can we not do this anymore? All right. I want to like kill question. myself. This is like Silly, the same seriously. question. Oh, thank you, Nerdy. Nerdy. Another yeah, great right. segment Nerdy, of go Alpha or Beta. What about what about guys with their body counts? Like, do I, you count? You'd bang a do guy. I know you'd bang I a guess, guy. I know. You'd I guess you guys guy. hate polls and scientific research. This isn't anything I made. Because it's all, the same question. Nobody each said time. You Nobody's blaming you for it. We're just saying, like, yeah, you know, like the next question would have been well, good. Like I'm that was you. what you just did was Diablo three with Diablo four season one, and then you showed us Diablo four season two, and I went, oh, look, it's just like all right, Diablo. Here's a way better one. Here's a way Diablo better one. mobile version. All right, we'll skip that one. Here's a way better one. Yeah, uh, I have a good one. I have a good one. Are all white, dude. Well, would, would, hold you, on, Luke. would you rather get raped by the Miz or raped by L.A. Knight? Or three bodies that are all Indian. What do you think Twitter voted? Fifteen dudes that are all white guys. This white chick is dated. It's or... the same question, dudes. It's the same question. Yeah, exactly. Here, it- here's a fucking question. Would you rather fucking have your ears chopped off by the fucking Mexican drug cartel, or would you rather have to listen to another one of these fucking questions from Nerdy? I imagine, choose option A. Luke getting to upset because... <laughs> The attention isn't on him, and this is a good segment. And no, it's quite not. Quickly, Everybody is literally the giving you the same answer. Bro. Nerdy, nerdy, if nerdy, the nerdy, questions nerdy, were the nerdy, same, nerdy. then why would the results be completely different on every single nerdy, question? Nerdy, nerdy, nerdy. nerdy, nerdy. Just, literally different on every single nerdy, question. Whole, now, nerdy, nerdy. The mold, the mold you said was like it's either she fucks a lot of white dudes or fuck a little bit of immigrants. That's the whole mold. It's the same Are question. Black people immigrants the same <laughs> I didn't, know James, I didn't know James was an immigrant. I didn't know Rostafa was an immigrant. You knew what I was. Should be. It was a good attempt. It was a good attempt at a segment, nerdy. No, you guys um, keep attacking it. I, no, I thought the first one was shit. great. Because everybody I, wants to move on, and you I don't. like the first one we, a lot. I thought keep, the first one was keep really going good. On with it. I loved the first one. I thought that was fun, and I was like, "What's the next one going to be? This is going to be cool." But then it was kind of like, "Oh, it's kind of like the same question." So I liked the first <laughs> one. The I thought the first one was good. Four times. I mean, come on, dude. Yes. I, I, okay. Yeah, Luke. All right. Let's see what you produce. And, and okay. you're wrong uh, again. What would you? What would you rather do? Would you have sex with a lamp or would you have sex with an air fryer? Why would the results be different, dumbass? If they're the same. <laughs> would you have? Would you have sex with a bong or would you have sex with a bowl? Put your, put your answer in the chat. I actually, that would be a good one. I would like to see that one. Yeah, and I choose the bong probably every time. <laughs> Maybe. Wow. But. No, dude. Look, the results are different on all of these. Why would why? I, that's why I don't get what you mean by the questions are the same. I see the results are different. The question, okay, they're, they're right? technically different if you're reading it on a poll. But when you're on a fucking show and you're asking people like, "Hey, this and that," it all just comes off as sounding the same. Like I, literally, it sounded different. like you just asked the same question four times. Okay. Yeah, I guess if you can't read, you're right. It does look like the same. No, question. I'm not. Well, because I'm not reading. You're you reading read, to me, and you're. And you're right. fu- no, I'm not totally reading right. it though. That's the thing, you fucking moron. I'm not reading it. You're reading it to me, and the way you read it with your fucking sped voice, it sounded exactly the same. So what do you want yeah. me to do when ninety percent of the fucking people on the call are agreeing with me and just called you out for it? But you can get yeah. mad at me because you're having your little fucking crybaby fit. Look, I'm not having a crybaby. Look. <laughs> This is the, the you keep <laughs> saying that the, they're the same because you're misinterpreting them or I'm not saying them right. My bad. I don't know what to tell you, but they're not the same. And you, you skip over the bit. You don't even let me explain the second question twice before you shit on it. If you really want to play back like a fucking retard, you want to talk all over it, pretend live in your fairy tale land and, and think that you gave this bit a second shot. I think you're just mad because all the attention hasn't been on you all episode. I mean, the bit's been going on for like 20 minutes, and we're we're here now because of this bit, which has brought the show to a weird place. But we'll Thanks. we'll drop That's it. We'll drop it. it. We'll drop it. So let's continue with it. Uh, it's would you guys dead. rather have sex with it's Indians or, or or white people? No, so I don't even know what the question is. You said I have a question, or you said I have a question, 
and because we were in the middle of the bit and we didn't want to distract from what I was already had pre-produced. No, you didn't. You, you the you one that cut it. me off. Go no, no, no. You it. were the one that did that, you fag. And I, I just fucking you buried you. Produced. You don't. Yeah, have and guess who? Produced. And guess everybody else fucking joined in on me when they buried you too, you fucking douche. But we'll move on from that. We'll move on and we'll continue this line of questioning. You know, what was the question again? Which girl would you it rather have sex with? Doesn't matter what the question was because. The bitch then don't dead. ask you it, murdered. please. Please don't ask it. How about you go back to fucking alpha or beta so we can all kill ourselves and wow. not answer the question? Jesus. Fuck face. Jesus and, and, Christ. Uh, answer ask the, the question. same question six times in a row and you'll wonder why people are getting bored. I, uh, listen, it really wasn't. The problem is it really was pretty good. It's just the second and third questions were like, uh, I like the first yeah, one a yeah. lot, though. I was really, yeah, you know, I bury a bit before it gets going. Yeah, it'll be shitty. Yeah. I, well, I think we that... bury a, I buried a bit that was going on for too long and sucked. Wow. You're, wow. This cool thing. <laughs> well, why don't you go make another fucking short film that sucks too? That doesn't make any <laughs> sense. <laughs> Dude, you're shitting on stuff that I produce when oh all you can God. produce. It's a paycheck from a gas station, okay? Because I don't need to produce. I, to produce. I just show up. I don't need to produce. I just show up and I'm gold. I am show up and I go. Dude, at work today, I showed up for 20 minutes and I was gold. What do you do? You got to sit at home fucking looking at tweets and looking at fucking Twitter polls that all suck? Yeah. How about you look up a different variety of questions instead of the same type fucking same type of question? What if the next question was, what would you guys rather have, Coke or Pepsi or something fucking different instead of the same sounding question that's going to confuse everybody? Mm. That's what I'm saying, nerdy. That's that's a fair. That's a fair. That's a good question. And you know what? You're right. I didn't make the polls and I couldn't garner an audience of 20,000 people to answer polls that I. So I pulled from what I had. And they were all race related. And that's why the title of it was Would You Rather Twitter Race Edition. So oh, they were yeah. all gonna so, be so about what, Twitter race. So what you should so Did I get what I get, I, no, I know what you should have done. So you should have grabbed yeah. one of the race ones and uh, then a couple of the other ones is like probably what would have worked maybe worked better, I guess. What uh, what do you mean by other ones though? They were all about race. Well, but I'm assuming there's also a would you rather like food edition or something like that and like whatever. I guess okay. I, I, and listen. If I was you, I wouldn't have known that they all would have been so similar either. Like, and because they really okay. were. But I loved what I loved the idea, and the first one was really good. But yeah, the second you know, and third one were kind of similar. But like, yeah, they were. I don't think you know. It's episode one. I'll take the notes. Thank you, Luke. I'm sorry that I tri- I <coughs> exploded. But no, back that was on a, you. listen. Episodes. You did just provide 20 minutes to the show, regardless I of did. what anybody thinks. It was Thank good. You. I think that it was good. I just don't. Yeah, you I think did. if we had done two more of them, I would have killed myself. But like, if they were different, <laughs> like if, like you said, if they had been different, you would have true, been, true. Like, Dude, you would have crushed it. I got something right here. Uh, did you know about Paige Van Zant? No, she yeah, the Twitter. Twitter? She, she, she quit up. UFC and started a, an OnlyFans. She said she's making more money than anything. Oh, of course. Dude, any girl that yeah. does that is making more money than anywhere there. Yeah, of course. See Lacey Evans. Hello, Tony Storm, yeah, twenty. Like, Five thousand dollars a month or whatever. I mean, whatever. Wait, Wait Lacey Evans is on OnlyFans now. Only something. something like Wait, what? I didn't know that. Her real name. Yeah. I mean, I don't. Eh, I kind of liked Lacey Evans. I liked when she um. Remember when they showed her ass to the camera because she put <laughs> Seth Rollins' oh, yeah. name on it. My yeah, life. That was nice. My life was in danger. My life son. was in danger. <laughs> I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. Better security. I still can't ever. believe you said that. I got to grab a water. Don't I mean, you could have been right. You never know. Punk is a fucking crazy liberal, you know? I mean, so he might have brought up some Jaguar player to be a security. I'm pretty sure he's just going to go back to just playing in heels in that show. Why don't they already have security, like an armed security? Like, isn't that security? Isn't that standard protocol? Like for in AEW, they have security. I've seen it like everywhere. No, I'm not talking about the fucking people with black shirts that come out to break up the brawls. 
no, in the ring. A pool you, party. No, a pool party. You think that no. we like probably think there actually is like a team of like referees in the back ready to stop a play. <laughs> no, 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 no. They do have security. If like somebody jumps over the rails and shit, they have those securities. Uh, yeah, they should have that in the back. Team. Just have one of those. In the, uh, those are usually um, um, contracted by the arena they're at. It's either in the back or they're in the front. The wankers. Yeah. Page Someone just needs to own a gun in that backstage, all right? And then everything will be... Cornet. Oh. I'm going to shoot your ass. That sounds exactly like what he would do. You know, Bravo. All, all of this wouldn't have been happening backstage at AEW if other wrestlers knew how to fight, too. And they could just, like, if they had a problem with each other, like, yo, let's just step outside. But instead well, of punk- that... We gotta, we gotta actually protect our assets because we got people on television that we've been pushing for two years that can't actually fight in real life. I, I, when I heard that Punk had uh, got fired, I go, that motherfucker can't keep a job, and he been getting fired for the past I don't know, two forever. Let's be honest though, Punk, Punk isn't the fucking like he barely won his fight with the Young Bucks. Like he fucking walked out injured. Like he, I'm surprised he didn't get injured in this in his little fucking scuffle with Jack Perry. He had to be out for six more months or some shit like that. Imagine that's actually the reason why they fired him. He like tore his leg or something. <laughs> Tony Khan just like, come on, seriously, dude. I, I wouldn't put it past him to AEW to do something like that. Old man bones got no more fight left in him, bro. And I don't really think it's like wrestlers. I don't think need to know how to fight. I mean, they all do. They all probably could kick my ass, could kick dude, anybody, day, anybody's dude. ass on his call. But back like the day they had to. I mean, Sean didn't know how to fight very well. Apparently, he got his ass kicked all the time, and he was he was the best. Did so, you see, do you think Do you think that CM Punk at one point said like he had like a a flashback, and he's just like, "This is exactly what happened in WWE," and he lunged at Vince, and Vince can actually kick his ass too. But he lunges at Tony Khan, and Tony Khan's like this coked up addict dude. He's just like, oh, my life. No, is no, he was probably he's probably used to <laughs> lunging at Vince and Vince like getting all excited about it, yeah, you know. Like, like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, Tony Watch, Khan, like, <sighs> Tony Khan and Andy Kaufman would have been a great fight. Tony, <laughs> Tony <laughs> Khan and Andy Kaufman. Wow. That, that... Hey, hey guys, where's Joan? Oh, oh my okay. god. <laughs> oh wait a second! I actually thought that was Pacharo for right. a second. He was he was here. Here. Fuck he you for a second. I was like, "What the fuck was that?" Was that Mr. Pico who just did that voice? No, Dude, no, that was Jay. I don't do voices. Jay, yeah. Do that. I Joe's pulled up that. Old. Van Zandt. Yeah. She's hot as hell. Do children. Dude, Paige though, Van Zandt. Dude, I know. Dude, was, she's yeah. twenty nine. I thought she was like thirty something. Look at that cutie. Oh my god. She's this if uh for those listening, she's this blonde chick. She kind of looks like a little mousy. Um, I'm gonna pull up her OnlyFans for sure. At least see if there's just like $39 for like three yeah. days. She didn't Ooh, build up an age. <laughs> Jesus. She ain't built like that no more. She didn't win bought some titties and some ass. She ain't built like that no more. Oh damn. Dude, yeah, sucks. We'll never get that Alexa. Yeah. We'll never get an Alexa Bliss fucking OnlyFans. Oh uh, yo. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be her rubbing, rubbing herself with I mean, pigs, She's dude. pregnant. Mm. Dude, she's preggers, dude? What the what a piggy. Pregnant only you know, Let's be real. Like, would you pull out? Of Alexa? No. No, 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 no way. No way. Staying in. Oh, no, that's I how wouldn't, you keep her. No, I wouldn't pull out, like, literally ever. Like, I would just stay there for the rest of my life, like, inside. I'd pull in, like, a drive-in <laughs> theater. I'd be there for hours. Live there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm gonna make a little apartment there. I'd build, yeah, I build a little popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> that reminds He's me of that episode of fucking um of South Park when Oprah's pussy and fucking oh, asshole. Fucking dude, dude with the asshole and the pussy, and they take hostage of Oprah. Yeah, and <laughs> with the gun, with the gun sticking out of her each, vagina. They shoot each other, She's and they're like talking. And they're talking like, man, see? <laughs> I don't want to live. If, you don't want, if you're not going to live, I don't want to live either. They shoot each other. A damn South Park can think about it. Uh, there was another one that was going to say, uh, we're talking about older guy or uh, older women with younger guys, with like with Luke. Dude, I didn't know that Madonna was seeing this fucking 29-year-old boxer. Madonna's like 65. Just Jimmy Page's girlfriend is like 29. 
Holy shit. So all these fucking like legendary statuses can just be doing that. Yeah. Dude, Al Pacino. Al Pacino was dating like a, a 31 or 29 year old and he had a baby with her. Al Pacino is yeah. 82. It's gross. If that thing's still shooting, fuck it. Exactly. No, it's shooting blanks. It is pretty it's gross, blank. but only guys get called out on it. Girls can do it and they're like, they're called queens. You know, yeah, like no, look at this queen over here with an eighteen-year-old, and then the guy like that doesn't. fucking like, disgusting uh... fat slob bitch, fucking Lizzo. The only reason why she gets any dick is because she's got money. And if that was another, if that was a guy, that Ooh, guy would be called a scummy fucking playboy. She got money, dude. She fucking. I didn't even realize that that fucking song was her until I saw the music video, and I was like, "This fat bitch." God damn it. Who? Yo, Lizzo? Lizzo? Yeah. yeah. I didn't, I'd never heard her songs at all. The only thing uh, I, I saw, I saw her, her do some fucking garbage SNL skit that made me want to like claw my eyes out where she was dressed up like the fucking the Six Flags guy and her family. Her family oh, was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess her family turned out to be the Six Flags guys. It, this skit was so terrible. Like, I honestly, I was surprised that they let it on TV. Like, it was so fucking bad, bro. Uh, they must be. Well, is this recently? Live, don't put anything on. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, PGA strike. Like, there are some skits in Saturday Night Live that they just have to be like, "Can we not do this? This is bad." This skit was so fucking terrible. Like. Her the whole gimmick was like she's got a boyfriend that she's introducing to, to her family. She's like, oh, you know, my family they're a little weird, and it turns out like w- turns out that her family is just a bunch of Six Flags dancing guys, and then they do so, the Six Flags dance. <laughs> six Flags dancing guys. Are you telling it's me like so, if Lizzo came so up to cringe. you, but like she came up to you, Luke, and she's like, hey, yo, I'll swallow that banana and give you anything Ooh. you want. Would you do it? Yeah. No, I would turn that down. I, I Damn, have, I would like to see that on video. If I was to get fucked the first time, it would definitely have to be someone better than Lizzo. I'm not going to give up my virginity for that. that. Honestly, what I want... Said, what did she said? I can get you any pussy. You just got to fuck mine first. Oh. No. No. I'm not ruining my first time for fucking Lizzo, all right? I, honestly, I want my first time to be special and with someone special. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's smart. That's good. Um, okay, that, that's great. I Luke, mean, I, I did that. Luke, I've thought about it, and uh, if you want to go in the back, I'll let you punch me across the face. I was a dick to you. I think I need to hold myself accountable, and you can punch me across the face. Oh, don't can worry I about it, bud. Listen, I was just fucking with you. I was just <laughs> fucking with you about the whole thing where I was just shitting on it, because that's my whole gimmick is that I shit on things. But I did let – I did – I want you to know that I did let it play out. I tried to let it play out for a little bit before I shat on it completely. Um, you know, sometimes I can be a little, a little bit rough around the edges, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're all just friends here. We're all just, you know, trying to get along, do a show. It's funny you say that your gimmick is shitting on everything, and – Nerdy shits Nerdy on everything. Shits yeah. on everything. <laughs> hey, nerd, don't go somewhere with this fucking blue eyes, white privilege. I ain't got time for this shit. Uh, chronic <laughs> shitter. Go a little over Lizzo, anyways. <laughs> Dude, no, Miss, no, King, King of Hueco Mundo. I would. I'm serious. I do have some standards, and I would not fuck that girl. Like, I would not fuck Lizzo at all. She's so what about, unattractive. What about and, that um, pussy bitch? Dude, what I think you'd eat her like a Wawa pretzel. Unless she, unless she offered me money like she offers like the guys that she actually fucks. How much? How, what's your price tag? Do you know? Yeah, five thousand would be good. That's good. <laughs> That's a good amount. All right, all right. Five thousand and bad. Bugatti. How about that? What does that buy her? What? Jay Menace, Jay Menace, what's your price tag? I'm kind of curious since you got a chick, uh, you're in shape. Baby. Oh, no. I, I, I don't have to pay for me to fuck her and you'll be okay with it. <laughs> How much? She thinking? Hold up. She doing a little thinking, thing with a, with a little circle spinning? It's a good question. She's hung. Lizzo is sending you home with a sandwich. She said she need like two M's. Oh, that's that's two, a good amount. What? Two mil? Damn. Two M's. Sorry, my my dick is expensive. 
Damn, I was gonna say like two Bugattis, but all right. But like, I mean, but like, we'll tell her this: it's Lizzo, me. it's Lizzo. So you would like had literally there would be no chance of you getting jealous and being like, I want to stay with Lizzo. Like, no. But That's also, true. also might not come back the same. Like, she might. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you, you, you might be, you might be traumatized. Place. Like you're, lo- you're like looking down on the ground like an abused dog. <laughs> she got that WAP, you know? dude. Yeah, she like, got... you know what I'm saying. I'm, I might need some money to sue for damages. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. <laughs> you went in. You got that white ass pussy. Yeah. Lizzo looks like the fucking. Wait. Lizzo looks like the the lady who ate mattresses. Oh, Lizzo, oh Lizzo against Viscera would have been a good fight. Some, yo, Gargas, Gargas, yeah, the Djibouti dubs of the oh, lady who ate mattresses. Mattress. Mm. Oh, I tried to, I tried to show that to Joe, but like for whatever reason, the link was expiring and wouldn't let me show. But it was so fucking funny, like um. When he when he, when she goes like, I like oh, that's my will, pulling up. I'm gonna eat this mattress real quick. Hold on, I will be a mattress. Ain't no one gonna stop me. <laughs> I'm not a quitter. <laughs> and she's she's like, wait a second. You see that shit? You see them layers? That's three layers, player. That's important. That shit's important from overseas. What what you know about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's delicious. That's delicious. <laughs> Mm, that's, oh, a, oh, that's a big <laughs> Lizzo against Viscera would have been a good uh, Viscera. Okay, so you're talking about uh, Men on the Mission Viscera. Yeah, King King Mabel. Yeah, King Mabel King against Mabel? Uh, against Lizzo. No, I'm talking about Men in the Mission. Uh, the guy who, who was Viscera yeah. when he was a man. Yeah. Uh, so he, he could rap against Lizzo and then probably fuck her. Or Lizzo against Awesome Kong. There you go. There you go. Bro, can you imagine the skin flapping? That shit probably sound nasty. Like, oh, yeah, the ring would collapse. That shit smell like sure. coconut butter. <laughs> <laughs> like all you hear is just fucking why, meat. Why? Flapping. Why does it? Why does it smell yeah, like I olive think... green? God damn it! I think it's smell gargut. like gargut. I ain't gonna hold you. Yo, gargut, gargut. Since, since we're since we were just talking about the Djibouti thing, I was also watching um a Steve Harvey dub from them as well where he <laughs> he does the um he does like a fucking Thanksgiving bucket thing on his show like somebody brings she's like yeah I got all the meals that you can get from Thanksgiving in a bucket <laughs> I think I've seen that one yeah he's like, he's like bitch I'm gonna slap your titty how the fuck am I supposed to eat this shit Man, put your big fat hands together. I'm the most illustrious guest of all time. I can't believe it. <laughs> Look at that big motherfucker. Speaking of dick size, you know, like there's a stereotype with almost every race of people when it comes to dick size, except for the Hispanic people. Mm-hmm. Garga, can you can you weigh in on this? Or because like obviously, you know, you got black dudes with big dicks, white dudes with like medium to small, Asians, Asians small, tiny. and then uh, Indians are like kind of small. What about his or like yeah, Indians there? Or what about Mexicans or Hispanics? They definitely work. It depends on your what. Your... So I come from Indian as well. Okay. Oh. So I it makes sense. Native okay. Americans got big big penis. We do call, big dick. We do call. It, uh, we do but call it, it just depends. Your white boy out here. Just depends on who where you come from. I'd say like if you're like more like on the on the German side, you have like this angry penis. Or just like <laughs> just like I come knocking on your door, you better open up. <laughs> Stuff like that. Like open up now. Open your legs. Then you got a fucking you got a Mexican dick that's like, hey man, I'm kind of like long and lazy, dude. But you know, I, I'll do the job when it when you long pay me. Long and lazy. Then you got like the guys like me. You got like the super unemployed beer, penis. A little bit of a little of sandwich. That'd be good. Long then you got like this the fucking like average guys like me. You know, like we're just happy to be here and shit. You know, <laughs> like what the fuck? We just like, use our like, what are you going to do, bro? <laughs> I don't fucking want to get into anything, bro. <laughs> the ones, they're just like, um, they're like, uh, give me 25 gift cards. <laughs> You're like, like uh, okay. There is fucking hardest 25 gift cards. But yo, were you I'd say that for me, if you want to know about me, is girthy. 
and oh, that's, out there. Oh, that's nice. That's oh, nice. Yeah. And out there. I like to side. I like to side jerk my dick sometimes to make it feel bigger. You know, like like invert your hand, put it upside down, and then like start jerking it from like. Oh yeah, I do that too all the if, time. If people oh, know the angle that I'm doing, yeah. Blow up with this. But yeah, creeper hostage knows because me and him are uh are fucking jack off experts. You know. Yeah, I thought y'all was gonna say y'all jack off buddies. Oh yeah, we're about no, to, yeah you know what? To we should each we. Other. Yo, Creeper Hostage, next time you jerk off, just join the Discord. We'll fucking oh, jack no. off together. <laughs> this is doing right now. We are gay. Joe Cronin is gay. We love gay people. Dude, I gotta, I gotta really, like, check some of the shit that I'm jerking off to. Because I, like, honestly, like, after I... That post-nut clarity you get while you're, like... You finally oh, relax and you feel so much better, and then you just like you look down at your phone, and you realize yeah. what you just jacked it to. And you're like, "What is what?" Yeah, I swear. Amputee section, like, what is wrong with this? I never. I, I don't know what you're doing, but I never think that. I think I don't. Like, this think lady that at was all. literally screaming for mercy. <laughs> like, I would yeah, never do that. Up. You know, I would never shut think, the fuck like, up, Joe. That's so lot no, lies. You know, something, I don't. Um, don't you like your, the genre changes whenever your mood is like for no. example, a midget porn. Like when you're pissed off, I you look. Watch BDSM, I, it, it's like okay. I just watch the same thing all the time, where it's like the girl's got to be really making a lot of noises and talking, but she can't be really fake about it either. So and she's got to like, you know, it's got to change up a little bit here or there. But you know, dude, homemade or die, dude. I don't want. You should make your own joke. <laughs> I camera. should make my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah I probably. Well, should. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that's the thing. When you have a girlfriend too, and she okay's it. Oh, dude, the stuff that? I had Aaliyah like a long time ago. We, oh my god, bro, I don't even know that. Drew McIntyre. My wife makes me faint, dude. I'll, I'll never forget. I feel a like you probably ago. have done some regrettable things to your wife that even you're like, like my beautiful wife. Why did I have to to do that to her yeah. to just defile her like that? Yeah, well, she <laughs> told me most of the time it's her fault. You know, she said do it. Yo, that is that is true. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you do feel bad, but it's like, no, nah, that's what she wanted, man. No, yeah, yeah it's no, like it's whatever it's like I'm how doing. You feel work. bad. It's like how people in the mafia feel bad when they're yeah. like, "Please don't kill me." My job don't is my me. my job is to take care of her and do it the right way. And you know what I mean? You know, like yeah, 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 like I don't, I don't, I don't have any emotions with this. Sorry, right, I can't, I can't, I can't feel. All right. Dude. I don't we'll make my job too hard. I couldn't believe how in charge she was a couple, like, was it a month, a couple months ago now? Maybe a month and a half ago? Two months ago. I forget. That was Listen, crazy, Yeah, bro. you told I, this story a lot. Oh, I just Joe. couldn't believe it. Like, you know, you remember you see the, the music video where the girl hops into the guy's lap and is, like, grinding and, like, like just Jesus. eating his head while she's just, like, that was, I couldn't believe, it was crazy. It was like she was on something. Just release the video already. You know you want to. Listen, no, Joe, you, not, not for you. Free. Little, little did we know, you know, 38% of people didn't know about your Ryback story. How many people don't know about how you defiled that toothbrush and what you did to that toothbrush? Did, that toothbrush will never be the same, dude. I don't know what episode I told that story on, but... I think you told that on the same episode that Tommy said that he stuck quarters up his asshole. <laughs> no, I did not. I told it. I might have reiterated it, but I originally told it on a different episode, I believe. I, I stuck a quarters up my asshole. He said. He said no. He, he said he put quarters, quarters up his asses. He said I put quarters up my asses. <laughs> He's like one time when I was you. a kid, I used to put quarters up my asses. How many asses <laughs> does he have? And we're, was I was like, one. wait. He probably has multiple, class. knowing what? him. The fucking... seven and then, dude, we we grilled him about um about putting the quarters in his ass, and I grilled him <laughs> to get the age he was when he did it. And we found out that he Whoa. did it when he was when he was 15. And I was like, dude, oh, that's... that's... I'm like, because he was like, I was a kid. And I'm like, dude, you were 15. I wouldn't have put How old quarter... were you when you put the fucking toothbrush up your ass? Oh. That's a great point. I think I was 18 or 19. No, you what? weren't. I bet you were younger. No, I, bet I was... You were younger. No, I was... I was right. No, I was... Because uh, I was... Actually, to be honest, I, I might have been twenty one or twenty. No, I think I was. I think I was twenty or nineteen. Yeah, keep fucking boosting up the age. Yeah, I it might have been somewhere. like twenty eight. No, that no, that it's worse. I think it, no, it, it, it'd be it'd be better if it was younger, because then it's like, all right, you're more retarded. No, I was like nineteen <laughs> no, or twenty. No, because if you're a kid and you're doing that, that means you've been fucked from 
from the beginning. The, the, the <laughs> oh, dude, I have been fucked from good. the beginning, though. Why did you well, yeah, we know. We know what happened with your stepdad. Look, look, if you haven't tried it, don't knock it, okay, guys? It could feel really good. Look, dude, I don't know, you got to use a fucking, uh, what you might call it. I don't uh, know where that throwdown is, but. Spatulous. Spatulous. Honestly, I've never even thought of, like, doing that. Like, not even, like, fingering myself. We're going to need you to like get a, a little more energy, uh, uh, fucking creeper. You got to have a little more energy than. Um, um, uh, <laughs> he gives some... up half of his, on halfway into his sentence. He's like, Very yeah, weird. you got to stop. Um, yeah. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Uh, never. Uh, oh. I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah, with your Cartoon it, Network ass fucking thumbnail. Said if it's, you know, a, if it's 100 bucks. Only fucking time Creeper Hostage will talk is if Leah is talking. Show the way him. he talks about people like it's funny, it's not. Go watch Netflix, you cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Moss Blaze said basically doesn't take Scott's call. Thank you for oh the $5 boy. and becoming a $5 shit bum. Appreciate that. Uh, I, I, I thought I, I thought that was the quarters thing. It's it's not. But look at but Tommy. Like, look what he's doing like, here with the scissors. Twenty percent or twenty five. <laughs> yeah, I leave. I tip a lot. That's fine. Like that's and awesome. Tommy. I'm like I'm saying to leave. Like if it's like I said, it's I'm playing with scissors that are big. <laughs> he spent twenty dollars. Yeah, that was, that was the point in time where he would do that stupid fucking like finger shit. You know what I mean? Where he yeah. would like start doing the thing where he twists his fingers because that means he's yeah. angry nobody was he's talking a to him. mad scientist no no this was the time where if nobody was talking to him he would start pulling out gadgets to try to get attention in a weird way because no one was he wasn't in the conversation <laughs> yeah. yeah and then, like the if thing is he would do it for like an hour <laughs> no he'd do it nobody until would pay like, attention to him for an hour <laughs> just just sad bro Bucks, what is that like? Hey Joe, that'd be fifteen dollars. That's fifteen percent. There you go. Yeah, there you go. So I, I'd prob go. I'd say I what a creep. Up, like do something like that. Do something because like, all this <laughs> impediment. So yeah. Jesse, so we're talking about that last night. We're talking about uh suburban commando. Oh man, that fucking that. quarter donation was so hilarious, bro. I don't know where it is, man, but if someone ever finds it for me, let me know what episode it was where Tommy... Where, like, the quarters are spinning. <laughs> <laughs> I put the quarter... Well, how would the song go? I don't even remember how it went. I don't I don't remember how it goes the, either, most but I just people don't even the know the graphic what, that you used for it. Most people don't even know what we're talking about, so it's like, the people are just like, what are they talking about? You're the one who brought it up. I know, I know, yeah. but that's what I'm saying is, like, I'm realizing, like, 20% of the chat knows what we're talking about. The rest are like, what? So Sorry, it's, it's funny. I think if you've ever played anything probably. here, but please comment down below. We're looking. We want to know what has gone inside your anus. Oh, is I put the quarters in me or something like that. Oh, yeah. I put the quarters in me. That's $25, remember? Yeah, it was 25 bucks. Mm -hmm. 25 I think. For, for 25 oh, yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Didn't he ask you to shit? take it? Didn't he ask you to stop using that one? Yeah. Like, he kind of threatened. He sort of. Th he actually threatened me with it. And he was like, "Take that down, or I'll take you down, or something like that." Yeah, I wonder right. if he what said the same thing to Tosh Point oh. Take that down. I don't know, bro. He was really butthurt about it, so I was like, "All right, I'll take the fucking thing down." You yeah, pussy. but Tosh Point oh can shit on him his entire fucking. Yeah, how about thing. how about you wouldn't have a clown? Yeah, like, like, how, how about you so wouldn't have a clown mask to... if it wasn't for my community, dickhead? Yeah. How is he so fucking stupid? To not like he think he gets all pissy over here, like oh they all made fun of me. Literally, but that's Tosh what fucking Tosh that's what Tosh was doing. He talked to you like you're Please. a fucking idiot retard. Because it wasn't about that. It was about people telling him like this guy bullies you and stuff. No, like, it's about the clout that he wants. No, it was. It's about... because he got on TV with Tosh and he didn't get on TV with Maybe, you. Maybe, but at the same time, he got. He, I mean, someone gave him a mask. You know, or wouldn't you be happy you like know. oh I I made this money. Your it's mask like, was better. Yeah. Yeah, like imagine like you think that that uh prevents you from getting any type of criticism from like but And but you know you what? A, you got a clown mask. Yeah, you got a clown mask. <laughs> you got you got hundreds of things. You got tons of stuff all the time. You met tons of people. I mean someone literally sent me a picture of my dead father's rotting corpse. Imagine oh, if but you got a clown mask. Well, that was after though. He was gone from the show when that stuff happened. But like imagine oh, if God. um if he had been here, he released that stupid book or whatever the fuck he did. Or whatever. <laughs> we could have promoted it like crazy, but no. So you get nothing. How about that? What is it, he knows, how to, he knows how to write. 
He knows that's how to write no, and he, read. He, someone else did the work, I'm sure. But hey, Joe, I have a proposition for Mom. you. Mom. Yes. Oh shit. You ever thought of uh, networking? Oh, as he God. says, like, like um. Yo, I've heard this. <laughs> it's like a computer, or you're talking about like going no, no, to a no, like no, a expanding, dinner, expanding the Joe Cronin show. Yeah, I've done that. Every time I've done that, uh, whoever I networked with turned into a scumbag. So. Yeah, dude. Have you not been here more than a coffee break or what? But with Creeper Hostage, it's not the case. He's like, I could. No, I'm waiting for someone big to to come hang out with me. Like, I'm waiting for someone to network with me, some bigger person, so I can. uh, Yeah, Joe's. Yeah. Joe's looking forward to become a sidekick. Yes, I'm looking forward to start yes. moving. I want to be the guy that you know, promotes maybe, my maybe show. You might need some good old lukewarm Joe, if you know what mm-hmm. I mean. I don't know what you're talking about now, Creeper, but it's really creepy. I guess he wants, he's saying it means you should do more podcasts like together. Joe wants to be the Lord Alfred Hayes. Because you know what? Tell me, what are you mad late. about, dude? You're Why late. are you getting mad now all of a sudden? You should be happy we're watching this. I mean,. What are you jealous of? You're jealous of all the guys that are banging this girl in this porno. Why are you jealous of people in a video? Oh my God, that was the raw clip. So there's no Tommy responding because it was the raw oh clip God. of you me. <laughs> I have like no idea. Like I had no fucking clue what you're talking about. Take it away, Tony <laughs> Ron. My life was in danger. Everybody's kept. My life was in danger. <laughs> dude. Joe had a Mitch McConnell moment. Oh, dude. He had a Joe Biden. Sleepy Joe. My life was in danger. My life was in danger. Hey, where's Joe? My life. Yeah, hey, where's Joe? Where are you when I need you? I'm cleaning up my system there. <laughs> God. Oh, cleaning up my system there. Dude, he really <laughs> farts. He really farts like that on TikTok and then and then goes, "Oh, ooh, like cleaning up my system." What the fuck? He really did that. Like Oh, cleaning up my system there. <laughs> I still can't believe that. Oh, Why did my God. His dick? <laughs> the same video that he goes shout out to the girdles. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to the girdles. <laughs> oh, cleaning up my system there. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have the shout Does out to go? the girdles clip? I don't know. Maybe though. Let me oh. see. Because that's yeah. literally right after he takes that massive I'm from sexy transvestite. Trans <laughs> from sexy transvestite. Oh no. Damn that one. I'm <laughs> from sexy transvestite. Trans <laughs> from sexy transvestite. Sexy transvestite. Hey, look, nobody is left from this picture. Except for Jesse. Uh, Leo? Only Jesse. You? And maybe Le- maybe Leah a little bit, not really, but Jesse and me. Not even the title. Only me and Jesse are left from this group of misfits. That's funny. Um, That's let me see. No, we have a fucking group of retards. Um, Tommy has a P.O. box. He couldn't even put full energy into that one. Please call me back. This is urgent, and I need to speak to you, okay? It's in dire importance. If this is still your number, call me back. It was not, by the way, it was not dire importance. Okay. Just so everybody knows. I thought my someone dire, was like, God, oh, my God. I thought, I thought like, his, he sat on his, like, no. I don't know, Legos it was, or something. It was not no, dire. It really, uh, 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 Joe, stop playing that clip. Uh, uh, Crystal sounds amazing there. I would put her in my porn. <laughs> what, what is the context <laughs> time He just kept oh, spanking he, I, I basically ass. bust in on her. Wait, he did? Yeah, remember he kept or trying to kiss her and spank her ass when yeah. uh, they were. Um, it was. I remember him trying to kiss her, but I don't ever remember her like him spanking so her there, ass. There was this. There was this one part where she like jumps over the the chair. Mm. He's looking at it and tries to spank it, and I'm just like, oh. Oh, no, no, no. okay. Well, I mean, I, hey, listen, send me the clip because I've always had a crush on Crystal. I wanted to fucking jack it to her. <laughs> wanted to. <laughs> And then he said that Crystal, Crystal and him fucking kiss every now and then when she. I really, I want to find like, you and I want to. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, and when she and didn't she say like, no, that's not true. <laughs> no, she said. I think, that, I think he, 
She she said that she like he lets her do it or whatever. I really I want to find you and I want to take a porcupine and jam it up your ass. I, I bet Crystal probably has pity fucked him a few times. No, I wish he would have. No, it. no, like he's just sitting down talking about some, like he's talking some moronic shit, you know, some autistic shit, and she's just, she's just, she's just, she's just riding him like so uninterested, like yeah, uh. yeah, whatever. She's like stealing this fucking medicine. She's riding him. <laughs> what you do? You put that on the. <laughs> if not, you, if not a pity fuck, at least a pity ah! hand job. That's what it is. Steve Laheim said he groped her on New Year's. Oh my uh, God! No, that's words. him trying to figure out how to fuck her. Think about this. He's looking at it, trying to figure out how to fuck her, and he freaks out. <laughs> what you do? Yeah, that's literally him thinking about like. Talk. Him thinking about how much time he's invested trying to fuck her, and like each time has failed, like it still hasn't worked yet. And all she can think is, "My life is in danger." My life, Pretty yeah, sure. my in life danger. For that what the fuck? The point is, Vince. Fuck oh. you, holes. Fuck <laughs> you. Holes. Oh yeah, I went on that. The what the one. fuck? The point. One. Do you have the other one? It's a uh, way more fucking way more gay. Buy me Fuck a you. house, buy me a house. I'm gonna leave you if you don't buy me a house. <laughs> oh, I did buy her. Oh house. yeah, that's the that's the video he made on you and Leah, and then he was like, No, I, I didn't mean anything by that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I bought a house and <laughs> his, his mom bought him everything. Well make me keep growing stronger and harder, <laughs> even faster. <laughs> longer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god, let's just go through all the clips. Like, I mean, there's dude, no this way. is Omar's Jesus fucking Christ. fantasy world, bro. Just playing this. all the clips. Jokes is about Show masturbation. Oh my god, you don't have the way more one that dude uh, that used to donate. I'm still looking. I, I like know. the whole. I like the what the fuck is the point, Vince? Or what the fuck? Is... Motherfucker, I don't even know point? if you are fucking atheist. You fucking <laughs> Nazi piece of shit. Him and Hitler loving. Uh, I don't even know if you are those things, but fuck you, cocksucker. <laughs> the music asshole. in the background. The two. Hummel, himmel, fuck. <laughs> oh, God. Stronger and hard and even faster. Hummel, himmel, cock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Dude, there was this one time. There was this one time. Well, okay, slap so the fucking what? black off his face. He was eating something too. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck? What would do you have the cum soup one? I was gonna slap the fucking black off his face. Um also one with the ashes. It's like uh, I'm fucking doing something with the ashes. Dude, there was this one time when <laughs> uh when uh I'm Danny came out uh, Danny came out and hung out and uh this was last year. And he and Tommy calls him, and he goes, "Oh, I'm over here hanging out with Gargos." He goes, "I don't give a fuck. This is my time." And I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I remember that was there. Because oh, if I wanted to, if I really wanted to, with the amount of subscribers that I have, I would, I could cancel Joe easily. I could jump on my channel, and I could, I could play all these clips that are sent to me on my show. I'm like, hear what this guy says about me. Okay. What a fag. <laughs> oh. What an absolute... Did, when did he say that? Was that recently? That was, like, no, was that, that was three like years uh, three years ago or something. Wow, I never heard of that clip. What a fucking douche. I told you this. You know what? Have. Maybe. That's you know what? what? That, whole, that, that whole night where I got drunk and I got mad at you or something about Tommy, which was stupid anyway, I had double apologized because that was a fucking... What an exposing asshole clip that was. Yeah. I'd never heard of that. Yeah, it's wow, weird. that just kind of spells out the person that Tommy really is. I, uh, um, listen, we're we're the, all laughing at him, but he's he's not harmless. He's a fucking jackass. These are the things that I've, you know what I mean, I've known about. This you is the, the see, this is the problem you. that happens with me. I I'll, I'll I'll like I'll find out who people really kind of are or I'll see how what people do and other people won't see that. And then, like, I'll just be like, fuck that person, fuck this, that, and the other thing. And people will kind of be like, yeah, Joe, but, you know, dude, you're being, like, you know, you don't, I don't, you know, and it's like, 
like there's a reason. You know what I'm saying? Like I've heard a lot of crazy there's things. Why there's there's yeah. a reason why everything has changed so much, and you have us over here. Well, and it's just like I would never, I wouldn't say that for real about somebody. But anyway, whatever. The but the point is like that's why you can see like I've heard plenty of stuff. So it's like it's so gay though. Like I I could do that. I'm not gonna do that, but I could. could It's like when someone, it's like when a certain someone said he could dox me, but he's not gonna. It's a weird passive aggressive goofy thing. Yeah, I could go. It's a threat. That's what it is. It's a threat. It's exactly, but it, you know, it's like, yeah, okay, bro, I could do the same thing. I could grab all the clips of you saying all the worst things like I've ever gotten. It's like, why would you even do that? Are you gay? Like, I can grab a clip of you trying to rape your friend. Yes, I have. You can make a video of him, <laughs> like everything he did to what's her face. So yeah, but um, yeah, whatever. He says things and whatever, but we're it's he's funny. Do you think he really lets that bitch fucking beat him up to take his suit? Remember, uh, she took all his suits, and he's like, what? He probably, I don't know. He'd probably do anything to, you know, I don't know. I haven't talked to him in years. I don't, I mean, actually, no, I've, hey, well, I've, I've, t- I've talked to him, actually. In the let's move on. Years. Let's move on from him. And let's talk about how um, yes. apparently the Judgment Day are taking orders from Rhea Ripley, who they can all kill in real life. Like, let's, oh. that shit was annoying to me That's when she's like, Jesus, you guys better, little... you guys better shaping up your attitude or some major change is going to happen to the, the Judgment Day. Major, like, if major. you're... Like, if you're Damian Priest or Finn Balor, why don't you just go, like, uh, no. What are you going to do, you fucking bitch? Yeah. That's I, all. I, like, I, I don't know. Like, I, 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 it's, it's, it's always a confusing thing with Judgment Day where it's, like, passed around who's the leader right now. But, yeah, do we need one, I guess? I mean, are we all just, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's definitely sometimes an alpha in the group. But then there's other times where it feels like maybe Finn Balor is leading the way. But then... I just don't like when they like have Rhea as if she's really the enforcer of the group. Like, dude, seriously, the only time she ever gets physical of guys is usually when their back is turned. And also, they're not allowed to even hit her with a worked punch. So it's so fucking gay. And now she's threatening like seven foot Damian Priest and like rip to shreds Finn Balor. Like, if you guys don't get your act together. Some major change is gonna happen the judgment day. Like what like like again, it's just another thing that makes the guys like I like the group, but the guys in the group do sort of look no. like dorks. Yeah, they're kind of baited <laughs> at this point. She is the alpha for sure if she's doing that. And like know. why is she the and I literally like everybody's like, oh my god, Rhea Ripley's the best. And I like Rhea Ripley too. But let's not pretend that Rhea Ripley, the only reason why she's uh, over isn't just because of her whole sex appeal thing. Like, if it wasn't for that, she would just be the same as every other woman, just fucking bland and, like, you know, she can have good matches, but ultimately, like, eh. But it's because they allow her to, like, fucking dress up like a slut and do the whole, like, sexual, like, mommy thing. That's the only reason why she gets over. But then, like, people are going to pretend that it's, like, some, like, oh, it's so feminism and empowering. They're having the the guys take bumps for Rhea. It's like, okay, so now it's a revolutionary thing. But, like, the only reason why she got over in the first place is because she dresses like a slut and because she acts like a dominatrix. Like, it's, I don't know. It's that weird, like, hypocrisy to me that just makes me a little annoyed. But I guess I'm a faggot. Yeah. No, it's... It's it's just it's it's I get it. It's weird and people. I but she is alpha though. There's a part of me that accepts it in a way because she she is kind of the. She really does feel like the star of the group. That's why I'm not like, oh, of course the woman, you know, whatever, and that they're doing that thing. I really do think she is the this kind of the crazed of the group. Think about it. Balor is more because that's the only one they treat seriously. Every Maybe. other member of the group is treated like a fucking bum. But no, think about everybody like else. Idiot. No, but think about everybody else for for all time. They tr- and and I want you to think about this, Rojas, because I, I I've this is why I'm not upset about it as much. They actually kind of tried uh, Damian Priest as the leader first, and it didn't. It almost kind of worked, and then it just didn't seem like it did. And it was like, okay, he doesn't really work as this, so they're kind of lost without Edge. And then they tried with Finn Balor, and he was all right. But then Rhea just got so hot that she seems like that type. So honestly, dude, I think she rightfully so kind of won the ability to be kind of the main alpha of the group. Like, I really, I mean that. I mean, I guess she, 
I just don't think it would. I wouldn't personally like if, if you're trying to take it seriously or something like that. And maybe not seriously. I just don't find it realistic or whatever uh, that guys would be like taking uh, orders from this girl who like Damien Priest fucking dwarfs. Like Damien Priest is literally looking down at Rhea. Yeah, but and she's, she's like, big. You guys better change. Oh, well, but, some uh, some serious changes are happening in the Judgment but, Day. But, dude, but, that, like you, but I don't, why are you saying that? Because there's other groups where the leader's small. Like, Adam Cole wasn't the biggest leader in his group. Yeah, but Adam Cole is a guy. And I'm sorry, but if you're oh. a girl, even, like, ripped girls could get their ass kicked by guys like Adam Cole. That's but a, I don't, but, but just because back. I, that doesn't matter. Like, I don't, to me, the physicality or muscle stature of the person in the group doesn't mean that that's who the leader is, like, ever, even in all guy groups. That doesn't... And also, the whole Judgment Day was formed between Damian Priest and Edge. And now Rhea Ripley's threatened to kick her, kick yeah, him but, out of his own group. Dude. If I'm, But if I'm Damian Priest, and, like, Damian Priest and Finn Balor are literally getting told by Rhea Ripley that if they don't uh, shaping up their act, they gotta get out. It's like, so... What are you gonna do? You, you, and Dominic are gonna are gonna kick them out. Then who who else is left in the de uh, the Judgment Day? There's only four fucking members. I, I but it's like once Edge left, I feel like all bets are off. Like at this point, it's for whoever rises to the top in the group. And so far, they've all been fairly even. I mean, on honestly, obviously, Dominic and Rhea are the without those two, it doesn't work. Like Priest and and Balor are kind of boring. I honest, I honestly just like Dom. I mean, Rhea is hot, but I don't like her promos. I don't like the way her championship reign has been. Her matches aren't always that great. Like, the only reason why she's as over as she is is because she is sexy, and she's allowed to do the whole dominatrix thing. If it wasn't that... No, I don't agree. I mean, I think like she's, people, no. would, people would not be raving about Rhea as no, much. No, I think her physic... Dom, Dom makes that group, and he made Rhea's character. I think Dom is, yeah, the huge enhancement, but I think he works with Rhea, and uh, I like Dom the best, probably, but Rhea... I don't know, man. Rhea's pretty hot, dude. She's, she's physical in the ring, sells really well, g good on the mic. She's really kind of good at everything, and Dom has been the guy who who is is not always as solid on the mic as Rhea, but his heel stuff interaction with the crowd is above everything. So yeah. I don't know, dude. It works really well to me. I, I don't she's like it, it's I don't know, I just she's she's I mean Triple H and Shawn Michaels, you know, Triple H you know, Shawn Michaels kind of leader of DX originally and Triple H was bigger than Shawn, you know, it's like I don't know. I just don't get that part. Yeah, but Triple H never did this to Sean, where he's like, "You better get your act in line." Yeah, but he Buster, did do it. Things he... are gonna change because if that was the case, if that was the case, why the fuck would you even want to be in that group? It's like, okay, what? So I could get bitched at by this fucking cunt and her right. shitty like. I'm like, why am I gonna be here? Like, it's not the case with Roman, where he's literally like the whole thing is he's manipulating his family, and they're like, they're basically like. You know, um, what they've got Stockholm syndrome for him. This is like you're in a group, you're fucking Damian Priest, and you're like an adult forty year old man, and this fucking like girl is telling you, you better get your act in line, Buster. Like I would just be like, Hey, what the fuck you doing? Shut the fuck up, bitch. <laughs> oh my god. Then he, then he fucking stabs her in the Rojas face. Rojas hates women. Shows his, shows his Hispanic side, his true Hispanic side. Oh, Sports Skeeto was making a big deal about how he's Damian Priest is forty years old and he's going to hold three belts or whatever. They're going to hold all the belts. What? Why? What's he's the big? What, Shawn Michaels won the world title when he was like forty-eight. Yeah, yeah. Hulk Hogan held the WWF title when he no, was he like didn't. forty-two. Sean never won when he was forty-eight. How old was he like, when he won the world title in the chamber? Forty. Like in his like in his thirties. Really? Was he? No, no, he was he. Yeah. yeah. Probably yeah. like late 30s, yeah. yeah. What, when he came back to win the World Heavyweight title in 2002? Yeah, yeah he was in his 30s, dude. Really? Yes, what? He looked... Alexa, when somebody. was Shawn Michaels born? 65. 67? 65? 65. So he was 30... Seven. Something. 37. 38? 
So, so pretty much Joe. So you were off by 10 years only. Yeah, I said 40 oh, yeah. something, but whatever. I mean, so he was like 38 when he won. The, so he's like my age when he won the world title in the chamber. He looked good for his age. Honestly, I thought he was younger than that. That's when he had that weird haircut. The that. reason why I didn't think and so that was. The, sorry. That was that period of time where he had that weird haircut and like shitty fucking gear. Yeah, it, it was like when <laughs> like the it, Ultimate Warrior came back at WrestleMania 8 and his hair was short. It looked wrong. Same thing with Sean yeah. in there. Yeah, Sean just looked like he had a bad haircut. Like so, mm -hmm. like they didn't cut it right or something. It was uneven. Yeah. But man, he had some fucking great matches back then. And he was wearing the gear that he should be wearing. Oh, except for the fucked up one. But he was wearing the tights. I've always liked him better with the tights than with the that stupid fucking baggy pants that he started wearing in like 2005. Yeah, I was like, I, I always like hated when he wore that. Those drove yeah, me well, nuts, dude. When he's, going, oh, I couldn't stand him. They they made him look smaller and weirder, whereas his tights with the boots kind of made him look like big in stature and like more. Like when he flew around, he, it just looked cooler. I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, it, it, it enraged me, dude, when he changed his outfit. I don't know why. Not because cool. I always thought he was going to trip over those pants. The Godfather and the whole train. <laughs> Shout out to yeah. the Godfather and the whole train. The coolest gimmick, in my opinion. My you, favorite, dude. You want to see my gimmick? It's it's a dick in an ass of an unwilling participant. Oh. <laughs> Remember fuck? when he 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 was gonna fight draws and he goes hey or or was it D'Lo Brown he goes hey man how about we go in the back and fuck around with these hoes and light up a fatty and talk about Owen Hart stories oh shit and like yeah <laughs> so they didn't God even get damn. to wrestle that, now that. that's some crazy shit <laughs> yeah Shawn Michaels had the if you're, if you're, had the Joe yeah. Cronin haircut in two thousand two which because I I had that he, same he did. I had that same what? haircut bro. Yeah, even Lord Cosmo in the chat says that he never never liked uh, Sean's new baggy look pants. Hey, Lord Cosmo, did you like that little comment I made at the end uh, <laughs> at your uh, Bray Wyatt video? Because you were shitting on me in the chat, so I go, uh, I go and look at his channel and I see his Bray Wyatt video and uh -huh. I go and post. Yeah, nice fake crying for someone you never even fucking knew. Oh, put my tears, God. Put tears in the title for fucking views, you fag or something. Oh, my God. All right, that's yeah. five. Five tonight. Ah, who gives a I shit? It's monetized this. Get over it. Hey, Joe, Pats are wearing their dick. throwback reds on week two. Oh, that's – um. They used, uh, they used to be good when they wore those. Now we lose when they wear them. With the helmet against Miami. Damn, oh no, that. we're definitely gonna gear. lose. We're losing that game. I'm telling you right now. Circle the second week. Uh, pick against the Pats week two, everybody. Oh, is, oh. is it in Foxborough? Yeah, we, we always we seem to always lose. Yeah, against if the it's Dolphins in now. if it's in Foxborough, there's a chance the Pats <clears throat> yeah. could win. But if it's in Miami, it we're fucked. It's it in is. Foxborough. Okay, then it might be close. But yeah, they they gonna win that one. But when they go to Miami later in the year, they they gonna get their ass handed to them. Yeah, okay. I can't stand shit. the fact that we lose the Dolphins all the time now. Like we used to. We lo no, dude. You know what? Though ass. we lost to them when we won the Super Bowl, so it doesn't even matter. You know that doesn't bother no, me. No, but I, just... that's what I'm saying. We used to just constantly kick the fucking shit out of them. Like it was like annihilations every time we played them. And then randomly they got like lucky one time, like they pulled off that amazing comeback. And I feel like ever <laughs> since then we've just had a string of bad luck against them. Right. Yeah, no, I feel like it's they've got, they've they're getting better, and we're either getting worse or staying about the same. That's the problem. Probably, probably the worst part. We're getting oh, worse, fuck. dude. Yo, Joe, so when, when you were recording this shit, you had not gone through training at all, right? Right. So when you went through training, did they say why? Why does this guy want to get a chair shot to the face already? No, I mean, they, when I went through training, they went run the ropes, asshole. Yeah. You know, when I went to wrestling school, they were like, run the ropes, fuckhead. And I was like, I know how to sew. And um, the guy, I remember, so what's his face from the Viking Raiders? Uh, spent a week Yo, with bro. spent a week with me, uh, Hanson. Ray Rowe. Um, oh, Hanson. Oh, okay. And he uh, hey, so said. Hanson was up there and Ray Rowe is down here. Yeah, he was. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, Ray Rowe does a uh, hybrid down here. Why are you calling him Ray Rowe? Like Chinese. It's uh, because he's making fun of Asian people. He's a scumbag. Let's be honest. Oh, okay. That's, his real name fucking... it, that's not funny, dude. You know. But you know what? Making fun of why, another why I people. thought of this video is because my haircut here is is very short, like Sean's. 
but also because this most of this footage is from 2002, and that was the year that Sean won that title in the chamber. So kind of fun. You, you were saying that you were in school. Jesus and Christ, is that what you're selling? Oh, you're selling? You I was like overselling that. on purpose there. Yeah, I was kind of being a silly idiot on purpose. I was I'm like, going to count myself. Yeah. Uh, dude, so when you're right. you go to school, you said, and you're like, oh, I, I can sell. And you said the loss, the the dude was like working with you for a week or something. Yeah. So he's so he's like, um, but one of the things, yeah, one of the funny things he said, he was like, yeah, you got a lot to, you know, we got to work on a lot of things. But, you know, the one good thing is you can definitely sell. He's like, so that's good. You sell really well. We got to work on everything else. And I was like, oh, okay. hey, guys, um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but. The World Heavyweight Championship match at the end of the match, which they didn't show for some reason, Shinsuke brutally attacks Seth Rollins. Oh. So I don't know why they didn't show this, but it's like, I don't know. Like, isn't it weird how the pay per view ended? Did anybody yeah, think like I, like that? I thought I, I just felt like the pay per view was short. Is. I was like, this I is think a short show. Bell wrong with that last Ken to the. I think he was loopy. I, now I might be wrong. Maybe really? he just fucking beast they're selling but like, go look at the end of the pay-per-view like and you can see the ref talking to set he's like no i'm all right i'm all right and then he tried to get up and like stumble i if he was selling that damn guy, yeah then shit i mean all right cool but i think he really got his bell wrong they don't have pay-per-view time anymore or what like uh they don't have to fucking pay for it or it's just all on the I, network i don't think so because they do i don't know i think it was just like they didn't for one thing, Seth and Shinsuke should not have main evented. It wasn't it mm. wasn't built as a main event feud at all. They like it never closed the show. It never opened the show. So why the fuck was it at the end of the night? Like th that was the that was probably the biggest negative of tonight was like some of the pacing. It, it was just weird. Like the after that big tag team match that was like really really great and whatever, and they had the all the Judgment Day on the stage with the belts. Why would the next match be Rhea defending her belt? Like, wouldn't you do the Rhea defense before the tag team match so then you could get that epic shot of them all with the championship belts? Like, that's just my thinking where it's like, oh. why would you place that there? You know? Like, that doesn't make sense. And then, like, the main event is this match that has no real bearing on anything, like, else. You know? There's no real storyline to it. And it just ends. And it felt like a raw main event. I'm starting to think you want to hate fuck Rhea. I'm, I'm starting to think this is where. It is. <laughs> Did I, you know what? I kind of do. I mean, she was sexy tonight. Don't get me wrong. Her ass was amazing tonight. Jiggling back and forth. It was just fantastic. <laughs> it was nice. Oh, shit. There was but but you know what? That... Fucking Trish was sexy tonight, too. With that big welt on her face. Yeah, but Becky, that her outfit, talk about covering up. You know, like what? was that about yeah. i know becky dresses like a fucking weirdo now she her whole look became weird she used to have the lion puffy ass hair right and then it now it's super thin and she's gone almost crack horror looking almost oh my god I, I like my, that's that's seth i like my bitches skinny <laughs> i'd blast her asshole and rape her daddy he makes her he fucks her uh what's it called he fucks her with uh CrossFit moves, you know, like from the oh ceiling. Oh my god! <laughs> his women, him and his women, to be able to wear the same clothes. Oh. But you know what? Trish and Becky did have a really, really good match tonight. Like, I, I don't think we're talking about that enough. But they did. They went out there and probably had one of the best steel cage matches in a while. Yeah, yeah. People were surprised yeah. by it. I think I gave it a six, and I don't know. I thought, I thought it was like better. Two legends uh, coming to the cage, and I was like, I don't know if you can call Becky Lynch a legend yet. Like, I don't think they a... call they call everybody now a fucking uh, yeah. the greatest of all time. At least that, she's not remarkable. that pissed me off so much when they when they had John Cena come out and they actually announced him as the greatest of all time. Like I was just oh, like that's... fuming with rage. I was like, why? Why are you doing that? So annoying. That's weird. Hulk Hogan, is, Hulk Hogan, of all time, like nobody would want that title. Hulk Hogan has moved into Bunk. like Bru like Hulk Hogan has moved into Bruno San Martino territory from like when when like I would say from like 1990 to like 2005, 
like people would say like, oh, there was this old time, this old guy. You remember back in the day, Bruno San Martino. Hogan's moved into that category of like Bruno San Martino, where like Cena is already basically kind of out of wrestling and he's a legend and like Hulk Hogan. And then, then before Cena, there's still the rock and stone cold. So Hogan is like from the next step below. And so Shit bomb. it's kind of weird. Good night. Sleepy True. time for me. Yo, Joshua, David, thank you so much, man, for dropping a $2 tip, man. If anybody else uh, wants to donate, the Streamlabs link is up top. Super Chat works great. Become a member. Do something weird tonight, guys, if you want to support the show. Uh, but thank you, Joshua. And, uh, man, have a good night. I'm going to be dropping some Jimmy Buffett in a little bit as we uh, yeah. you know, wrap it up a little bit at some point. And then, uh, well, who could forget about um, the Rey Mysterio versus Austin Theory Cinnamon Toast Crunch match? It mm. was fantastic, dude. Like I, I really love cinnamon toast crunch. Very tasty cereal. Um, I'd give it a ten out of ten. It is. No, I'm down for that. I love cinnamon toast crunch, but what happens is if I eat it a, a lot, like I start getting like I get like sick of it, and then what I usually do is I switch to Captain Crunch, and uh, or Raisin Bran. So I bounce around because I get sick of cereals, but I crave it for like a month usually. But cinnamon toast well, crunch. I gets old after if i get multiple if i get multiple boxes of cereals but one of them is captain crunch i mean i'm always gonna have captain crunch oops all berries all day bro probably yeah captain crunch is going down that's for sure Man. Dude, like, I'll, I'll fucking eat captain crunch like a crack fiend bro just like i don't even realize that i finished a bowl i'm just where is i need more <laughs> yeah dude that shit is good what were you going to say, Nerdy? I'm sorry, bud. So good. You're good. No worries. Um, I love that cereal, too. It's bomb. Um, but I was going to say, Joe, do you think we could uh, set maybe a, a time frame for when that belt would be put on the line for people that uh, yeah. maybe curious? Yeah. I would um, I would say, let's say, the what's the first week in October? The first week in October. How about set the 7th? October 7th, the Monetize This Championship is on the line. About that, I'll be on, I'll be at a wedding. You'll be at but, a wedding. Uh, I don't want to hinder if that's where the booking is at. Well, I don't. We can't know. do it on the thirtieth because that's Leah's birthday. But also, it's my daughter has a big competition that day. Um, yeah. I would say that um, we could do the twenty third. How about that, September twenty third? I'm down for. I'm down for. Hey, that's in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's in a couple of weeks. weeks. I'll put the belt on the so line. So that's when you'll defend the title, September uh, 23rd. Yep, September 23rd. I'll put the belt on the line, baby. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen. You want a shot at this, baby? <laughs> you want a well, shot at this? Yeah. Days, in 20 days' time, we will have a new monetized this champion. Because <laughs> oh. let me tell you something, John, uh, Joe. You don't even know my John. name. You don't even know my name, you exactly, idiot. Exactly, exactly. I don't even know your name because you're you're so forgettable as champion. I mean, I, for, I mean, honestly, you don't do anything with the belt. Wait till I mean, you, you put the belt behind you, but you barely even touch Wait it. Till you How see about what you I go do. somewhere? How about you film a segment oh, I'm going to instead Home of Depot. the one segment? Wait till this week. I'm going to Home Depot with the belt, and I'm going to tell everybody that I'm the champ. Yeah, you should kill yourself at Home Depot as well. Oh, Jesus! With, with a power, that, like with a power tool, or <laughs> yeah, no. Ask him if they have any nooses. Oh, yeah. yeah. Put a noose around my neck and kill me. Any last words before uh, Daddy takes off? Listen, yeah, well, you're actually. Wait, are you hanging up? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. What's up? No, I'm serious. I didn't know if you're like leaving or no, no, no. I'm not. I was joking. No, I'm not. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, okay. Um, well, I guess uh, somebody dropped the sixty-nine dollar donation, and I'll jerk off on Nerdy's face. Hell yeah! So, what did got? What did everybody have down as the worst match of the night? Because honestly, I think it's either between the United States Championship match or the Rhea mm -hmm. Ripley versus yeah. uh, Raquel Gonzalez. I, I think I, I I got Rhea because I just didn't care about that match at all. <laughs> yeah, that match was really boring, and it was long too. Wasn't it like 15, 20 minutes? It just never picked up at all. Yeah, I didn't. I just couldn't get into it. And I think I was, it's just, I don't know, it didn't work for me. But also, Theory is boring. I think it was Theory. It might have been Theory. I don't know. Dude, Theory is like Ricky Starks in AEW. I, I don't care. Yeah. Like, I think, I think he's great at, at, in terms of like 
you know, athleticism and he can have really good matches and he has a really awesome move set. It's it's almost like a video game character move set. Yes. But yeah, his character is just so fucking bland. I just don't care about him. His United States title reign was like 250 years and it just <laughs> fucking <laughs> I don't remember anything that he did. Yeah. Like it, it honestly has felt like he's been United States champion since like 2020 like as long as roman <laughs> it, it also dude it also felt like he had like a 45 day to 60 day push and then they they just said okay now put him on the shelf with the uh, whatever yeah like it was weird like in the beginning of the year they did they were treating him as one of the more prominent stars he was he was champion he won the elimination chamber he beat john cena at mania and then they were like Okay, that's all the plans yeah. we got for you, buddy. Yeah. What do you mean? That that's all. But I'm still I'm still champion. Yeah. yeah but uh, you know you're gonna be champion for the next five six months and then you'll lose it to Ray. Yeah. It, it, like it honestly feels like they have had no plans on him. Like how? How do you not have <laughs> any plans for this guy? And I really do think it's probably because Triple H doesn't like him. <laughs> wow, you think that Triple H doesn't like him? It's because Vince likes him and Triple H doesn't, right? I mean, Vin Vince liked him and he was getting booked way more prominently. Triple H took over. He had him lose his money in the bank like a retard. He had him lose. Not only did he lose his money in the bank, but he cashed in for the U.S. title like a yeah. fucking stupid idiot dumbass. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Hey, <clears throat> hey, one belt makes you an extra five grand a month. The other belt makes you 25 grand a month. Like, which one am I going to, you know, I mean, those aren't the real numbers. I'm just kind of making shit up. But ideally, which, by the way, they should bring this up someday about money because I think it's important, but whatever. But ideally, you want to be the world champion because it's the world champion. It's the best. And also, you uh, allegedly, you know, essentially, you should, you get more money, right? So, like, one way or the other, whether it's for the honor or for the actual income, you want the world title, and those are the that's the best thing. And this guy chose less money and a weaker title. Doesn't make sense, like you just said. Unless he's a retard, or or unless hey, he thinks unless he thinks me, he can uh, win. Who voted against me in the poll? You <laughs> fucks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the poll is, but I knew it was close the last time I looked at it. Nah, nerdy won by just a little bit. Really, you Ooh. were you were winning the whole time. You uh, yeah, I think uh, I think. D Welsh probably uh made seven Honestly, no, D Welsh doesn't seem to hate me as much. Honestly, anymore. this He's is a very to... this is actually an encouraging poll because I don't like doing polls like this because honestly, like it like if like if one of you guys was at eighty or ninety to ten, like that would suck. Like I'd feel really bad. Mm -hmm. Because I like you guys both a lot, so I don't like polls like this. Because then, like, if somebody really were to lose a lot, it'd be like, "Wow, that that that's kind of a gut punch." Because I think these guys are great. So the fact that the poll is almost dead tied, and even if it was sixty forty, like that's still pretty good. Like you're mostly, you know, people had to choose, and they chose, and it's still pretty close to half the audience went with one of you. So like, that's good. Like this is a good. You know, poll. nerdy. I think nerdy. I think what nerdy did. Was that he did the whole like, oh, you know what? I'm sorry for even, you know, the fighting or whatever. He did that to save face so people can <laughs> sympathize with him. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, that's what you did. You looked at the fucking wow. poll, didn't you, before you gave me that apology, <laughs> you cunt. I'll be honest. I had no idea that that poll was coming up. And oh I'm glad I didn't go. I'd be so anxious and like such a bitch about it, too. I'm glad I had no idea. Oh. Yeah, he's going to go down now. I mean, you that. won. You're good for you, bud. You won by. Well, you still haven't won technically yet. I mean, anything can change here in the JCS universe. True, true. No, we're having a good time. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait just a goddamn second. Why am I not on this poll? Yeah, because Jay would beat us both. Okay? We don't, Jay, you would beat us both. We don't persecute blacks on this show. <laughs> yeah, Jay, they like you because you're black. That's literally, Jay, oh. that is why you would win. Though. I will put, no, I will put up all the black co-hosts on the poll and Jesus. we'll find out who the most liked black co-host is. About that, Dude, oh, well, I'm, def I'm definitely beating Rostafa. No yeah. doubt. Dude, yeah, Rostafa's in trouble with his. Yeah, Rostafa ain't even, oh, even a, a full fledged black man. Oh, you know? Joe, it's a oh. it's a glitch, bro. That I, I will tell you something though. As a person who loves podcasts and radio and all this stuff, obviously, I will tell you, man, that that 
that I think it's monetized this maybe from last week or something. Yeah, yeah. The the one where where he glitches again or whatever, and we go into all this shit is what is some of the funniest thirty minutes that I've heard in a while. Like it is. Yeah, I know, bro. Like, oh my god, dude! I I listened to it the other day and I was losing it in the kitchen. It was way funnier when I could just listen to it. I just think it's funny to think about this is all where this is all stemmed from. You know what I mean? Like it was just one random nothing line on an AEW review. And it is it has been going on for months now. And like I've I've said this before. It keeps me up at night sometimes thinking about like why why does he have to lie about why it? Why is he like There's this? no yeah. reason to. Why, like why are you like this, man? Why are you like this? Yeah, it's it's, it's dude, it's like you, a normal person just move on, like whatever. He, let him think whatever. But it's like you can't stop thinking about how no, this this is not right. That this guy's fucking. He either thinks I'm an idiot or he's retarded. I don't know which one it is. It's or making me yeah, insane. Yeah, something's going on. Like he he like is is he fucking around or does he actually think that? And if he is fucking around, why hasn't he just like admitted it? Being like, nah, dude. Well, I'm just dude, joking. when I grilled him and said like, so you've never stuttered in your life. That was the thing that gave it away when he said no. <laughs> yeah. Like you've never stuttered in your life. Like that's never happened to you. It's never been something you did. Do you know what Leah said to me when I showed her that clip? I I played some of that episode that I thought was so funny to Leah. And Leah goes, I think he's autistic. And I went, what? She's like, yeah, I oh, think because yeah. why would you? Or he had a stutter when he was a kid, and this is, like, very embarrassing to him. And I'm yeah. like, okay, maybe it's one of those two. But, like. No, you know why? You know I'm why like, not? Oh. I don't think that's the case? Because he will he does the laugh thing where he's like, what are you talking about? Like, he's yeah. obviously <laughs> fucking with you. Oh, my God. Is he in his call? Holy oh, shit. my God. He's like, what are you, <laughs> like, what are you getting you on about? about me? Hey, Luke, you want to know what the craziest shit to me is? What's that? He, he was upset with me for, like, three months for calling him a liar, and all he's done for three months is lie. Oh, no. Well, no, you know what? I don't even think he was upset with you, honestly. I don't even think, he, honestly, I don't think he knew your name either. <laughs> <laughs> he was just mad another black guy didn't like him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the whole time, every time you try to talk to him, this is what he does. He's like, ah, another brother on the call, my soul brother. <laughs> 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 Dude, we need to stop. We're stopping to get back here. Yeah, I feel bad now. Something. We gotta get him. Like this is just. Oh I'm my god! Actually, right here, my life hey guys, was in danger. What is going on? Like it reminds me of Tony Khan saying, "My life was in danger." Like, no, it wasn't. Tony. <laughs> my life was in danger. <laughs> I've been going to wrestling shows and he for says, over 30 dude, years. That's exactly Never. how Rostopo would, would say it. That's how Rostopo would say it. He'd be like, "Well, I don't know, Joe." And here's the thing: my life was in danger. I felt I was on the train. Shut the fuck up! Like I. I, there was a KKK rally around the corner. I've never felt like my life was in danger before. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. It's Rostafa right there. Yeah. Literally, that's exactly how Rostafa would say it too. Like the whole, my, my security, my safety, my life oh was my in danger. Like that's... Oh my God, bro! Tony Khan is Rostafa in disguise. That's so why do you think Rostafa? Yeah, why do you think Rostafa's never on the uh, the air for AEW reaction streams? Huh? He's too busy working backstage. Right? He fucking oh puts the is the zipper suit and everything. I've got it all ex all figured out and exposed, bro. Hell yeah! yeah. I love him, Just though, but it's it's there's something going. Watch on. my oh, program awesome. where we expose the lies. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm, on the I'm gonna go grab them. I still have the bugs. I'll be right back. When does it happen? When do we get into the? F oh, here it is. I think right. If we were to go and look at them now, we might say. Uh, I don't know where it is, but I'll find it later. I'm gonna upload the. I'm gonna upload the show that was that. It was really funny. That part I was talking about. It was like 30 minutes. Joe, you, what you should do, what you should do is just compile like. From the very beginning, like uh, from that AEW stream where he did the glitch, because I know which the one it was. Time, it was yeah. double, or, double or nothing. You should just compile all the times that he's glitched, quote unquote glitched, and mm -hmm. that we've called him out for it. Like what you might see, what might seem like just a normal everyday stutter, 
turns out to have a much more sinister story. The, 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 cra- <laughs> the crazy thing is, um, the crazy thing is, all the people now timestamp Rastafa. There was even somebody yesterday timestamped. <laughs> Somebody time stamped the show from four years ago where he did it. And someone was like, Man, look at this. I went back in time and he's still stuttering. And they wrote and, and this was on like monetize this from three years ago or something. And, and they time stamped it. And he's like he's like, uh, but uh but so 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 here's the thing. And like, and like I was like, Oh my god, dude, people are listening to old episodes and he's stuttering on them and they're time stamping them. There's like there's gonna be like a cult, like just a massive amount of Rastafa time stamping TSS two TSS two, if you are still oh out there god. and you don't wanna make the end of the year uh compilation video, I know you don't do it anymore, but you have to make a video on Rostafa's lying. Can like you, it's a documentary. Or like like, like one of those stuttering. true crime documentaries where they're slowly zooming in on like Rostafa's picture that's in black and white. <laughs> Imagine him stuttering for like 30, like Rostafa stutters for 30 minutes video or whatever. And he's like, oh, hey, uh, did you also like my, did you happen to like my Frank Sinatra subway song, uh, Rojas? I thought that was awesome. Oh, you yeah. did. <laughs> Very pretty. Should, should I do Very that? Neat. Should I do that? Well, you like don't really. Role? You tried to do the Frank Sinatra voice, and then you just gave up on it. Yeah, I like just, I could tell. Like the way the well the way you were singing, you were like tonight's the night. I <laughs> come in your eyes or whatever. And then, like randomly, you just were just like, you know what? I'm gonna just sing it like I sing every other song. My favorite part. <laughs> but you're was, disturbed. Was... Your disturbed cover from uh earlier this week was fucking fired. Wait, dude. wasn't that the same night? I don't know if it was. was I it? think I don't know, I... maybe it wasn't. Oh, I did stupefy, you... yeah. Dude, that's yeah. like probably that's in my top 3 favorite disturbed songs. Dude, when that song when, I don't maybe know, top 10. When that song came out, it was awesome, bro. When that kid gets when that kid goes like when it kicks in at the end, like, and the kid's going up in the cross, like, in the air, like, it's, like, wicked intense, dude, for some reason. It's, like, I just I just think of uh, Dragon Ball Z, because that's when they, they played it in one of those movies. Well, oh, my God, you're right. That's the tree of, when, uh, like, okay. when Goku, yeah, when Goku beat the shit out of fucking Lord Slug, it was awesome. Yeah, I remember when Goober, oh, you know, I remember You think when it's Goober gay Gop. until you watch the clip. Until you watch the clip, and it's fucking badass, bro. I remember when the Goober guy... Gop beat Slobby Knob, too. Yeah, I remember that. No, no, we're not talking about Star Trek The Next Generation here. Yeah, yeah that'd be Oh, when they went to the Glorb Glops fucking planet to <laughs> negotiate trade deals. Bro. Like, who gives a shit? Hey, guess what? Hey, guess what? Stop trying to watch your, like, serious political show on your dumb fucking sci-fi. Because guess what? It's not serious. It's not interesting. It's not fucking uh, yeah. pseudo-intellectual. It's just some fucking dumb idiots dressed up in their fucking uh, costumes uh, with the stupid fucking insignia. Oh, look, my little piece of shit plastic fucking uh, universal communicator. Please go shove it up your fucking ass and die, Dude, why don't you, you stupid fuck. Go listen. How about you Dragon take a phaser and you Sack shove Z. it up your cunt? You watch a kid's show, Dragon oh. Ball Sack Z. Yeah, a kid's show where yeah. they fucking beat the shit out of each other. They Dude, show, you could just say Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Just watch Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Same thing. Dragon Ball Z. Uh, Pikachu, it doesn't Star Trek Pokemon. have the same production value as Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Pokemon. Yeah, fucking What's Pokemon the- and. Pokemon, Pokemon and Dragon Ball Z, at least at least they put some fucking effort into the animation. You got the same fucking stock footage of, of the fucking Enterprise going off, and you fucking probably cum your pants every time. Sorry I didn't cry over season three of Picard. Oh my god! I can't believe yeah. that there's the Enterprise again! <laughs> <laughs> you really should be embarrassed that you're an almost 40-year-old man and you cried over a fucking television I show. I know, I said I that to my mother. I don't cry for anything. I didn't cry when I found out Bray Wyatt died, because I'm not a fucking pussy. You know, I yeah. was just saying, Bray Wyatt is still listed on the current superstar list. Oh, boy. Back. Well, he's a star, all right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell I, you, I didn't cry when I found out, but I did cry when they did his tribute. I still can't believe means- he's dead. I st- it's like still is just like I don't even believe that yet. It's still well, Joe. He's fucking dead. He's fucking dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Dork Knight goes uh, in the chat. He says the only silver lining is that I don't have to watch AW anymore, which frees up a lot of time for me. 
Yeah, sure. True. Okay. What? To, well, I guess I he's got plenty of time. Fight. He doesn't have a girl anymore. Come on. He don't do wife. anything. You fucking you <laughs> wash the feet of some eighty-five year old woman to stay in her house. My well, you got any time. Your life he is in danger. This guy is such he's a, a blind. He's such a blind CM Punk mark because all he does is be like, "Yeah, what a horrible decision." Dork Knight Punk literally lunged after Tony Khan threatening to fucking physically assault him. What are you supposed to do in that situation? Just keep him around? I would have fucked him up. I would have got up. I would I would have got up and called his bluff. Oh, you want to fight me, Mr. UFC? Come on. My life was in danger. You, you know, Punk <laughs> Punk couldn't beat up real fighters, so he decides to pick on fucking 90-pound billionaires. Yeah. I would have got some of my my heavily paid employees to beat that ass. Yeah, dude, you know what? I, that's what I would have done, dude. I'm like, I'm not firing this guy. I'm going to hire some of these people back here to fuck him up somewhere. Like, that's what I would have like done. Oh, yeah. He wasn't doing anything. They're going to fuck him up every I think so somebody... I, I, every time he come backstage. I'm going to be honest. I think one <laughs> one thing that happened was, I think, is that, first of all, people said, yeah, this is a liability. But I also think somebody suggested to Tony Khan that this guy's trying to sue you for something or something, you know, or someone's going to get sued all over this clearly. Like this is all like the fact that it hasn't happened yet is amazing. And I think that's really what's done it. I think if he, th but also, I mean, fuck, he said his life was in danger. So my life was in danger. You know what, Joe? I've been going I, to rest. I, I like that's crazy. Probable. Oh, go ahead. Jamie. No, it's my bad. No, I was going to say what Tony Khan should have did is he should have slipped some dick in AJ Lee. That would have. Oh, oh. Mm. Yeah, I don't well, think that would have happened, though, because, I don't know, these people are pretty solid to each other, you know? I mean, listen, I don't know, Punk is, bro. The irony, though, is Punk is Maybe. in the right. Like, How we, did... we mentioned that earlier. Punk's in the right here with not using real glass, and it is to protect It's to protect the well-being of Jack Perry. Like, hey, man, he doesn't want to see you get fucked up. I think the point so... is, but, Nerdy, I think you're right, but I think the point would have been that Stan Punk should have just... I'm sorry, but the bottom line is Jack Perry said something, then he confronted him on it. I think it would have been fine if Punk had just said, like, what do we got a fucking problem? And then he was like, no, nah, man, I'm, I was just trying to, I'm just talking shit, trying to get heat and whatever the fuck else. Oh, yeah? yeah. Watch your fucking mouth. Or like, or like, <laughs> yeah, like, don't be a pussy about it. Like, you know, because I, I don't believe that. You're, you're being a fucking pussy. Like, but he didn't need to uh, just attack him, which is what True. is being said that he just well, assaulted him. Well, yeah, Punk him. seems like he's very temperamental. And again, Jack Perry is getting all the shit for this. But for all we know, maybe Jack Perry was just like, you know, he was being way too persistent about it and he should have dropped it. But maybe Punk was just a fucking condescending prick to him and being like, yeah, I don't know what they did. I don't know what you're fucking thinking, kid, but that's not what we no, do. No, that's what like, he did like do. You, what you said. He insulted, but he insulted. No, that's what he did do. He said, dude, we don't do that shit here. And Jack Perry was like, all right, dude, what the fuck? What a dickhead. And then this came up and he went, oh, I'm going to say something. You know? Yeah, gonna... like, I don't get it. Like, Punk is such a guy, is a guy who would do shit like that where, like, he would... He would bring up shit that he had a problem with. But, like, when somebody does it to him, he has a fucking, like, a temper, you know, a big yeah, temper he's tantrum. a fake. He's like, a he... fake person, dude. He called, AJ Lee's a racist. That's all you gotta know. No one else. Well, AJ is... Lee's a racist? Or, or AJ, Styles, AJ... AJ Styles is a racist. But no one, no one else has dude, ever said that. what would he do if his own wife was a racist? Would he, like, just kill himself? Yeah, he'd, no, he'd probably call her, a, he'd probably turn on her like he turns on everybody. No, he probably just no, he probably just betray his own uh betray his own. He's morals, a fake. Like he he's he's whole. an extreme left wing psycho, is what punk is. And that's why he'll join his wife him. on women of wrestling. What? Maybe he'll join his wife on women of wrestling. AJ, Joe. yeah, maybe he will. Maybe uh, maybe he I will. A, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Now, this is completely inside baseball. This is conspiracy theory one on one. Is there any chance? That they kind of not that like CM Punk getting fired as a work or whatever, but is there any chance that this just is going to elevate Jack Perry into being the heel that they're trying to make him? Because now the fans are going to boo the shit out of him regardless. Yeah, I mean, I guess he could get to a Dominic Mysterio type heat, you know. You know what I but mean? But like, like, is that possible? Honestly, I think he might just. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets let go soon too. Not for Jack Perry, they wouldn't do all this. You I mean, they might. Jack Perry or Dominic? I don't even know what Mr. Pico said there. No, I'm saying they wouldn't do do all this 
for you know for Jack Perry's sake. Like, yeah, like I don't know. It, it wasn't it strange too that they chose today to fire Punk. Like, he, why not just wait until the end of the Monday. weekend? You know, because it's the best yeah, time. Wait Monday. It's that they didn't want it lingering for Chicago. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But now the whole show tomorrow is going to get shat on. Like that, it, the whole show is going to get just nothing but shit. No. Especially because the card isn't even built up very well anyway. You know, no, and like the Dark um, Order versus MJF. Well, Cole. we can. I I think <clears throat> it's going to be similar to to tonight or last night now, but where it's like thirty percent of the show was smeared around with Punk something chance, but seventy percent they kind of were accepted the show. Like okay, this is different though. This is like. <clears throat> this is WWE. We're talking about literally the company that fired him. This tomorrow. No, like, we're, I'm <laughs> ta- no yeah, but I'm talking about Collision tonight. They're oh, in, okay. I thought you were talking sh- about. I thought you were talking about Payback. My no, bad. Tonight, it, no, 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 yeah, t- yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were in Chicago for Collision tonight live, and 30 percent of the time, the crowd was popping out with CM Punk and We Want Punk and mm-hmm. things like Punk got screwed. All kinds of chants about Punk, but 70 percent of the time, they they just backed off. Like, okay, now let's. Watch the show. It's not a big deal, you know. I so. guess it will make the show a little bit more interesting to watch, you know. Well, if you watch, I'm not even watching it. So, Danielson is coming out help. I mean, uh, what's his name? Oh, why do I say what's his name? He's on here all the time. Jag Depenzer is gonna probably stream it. Okay, well, maybe I'll pop in here or there. I don't know, man. But I'm just gonna try to relax and not think about wrestling. And now that they got rid of Punk. I'm like, all right, fuck. Okay. Yeah, has, yeah. Like I know anyone... it's such a chore now. Well, it's just I'm I've had no time to break and like I said, I just wanna no, I'm, I just, feel, I'm gonna take a day. I feel you. It, I'm gonna it honestly the just does take up your whole fucking day, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, it does. And it, it's like I've been but I work every day. It's like it's like, dude, today I came home from work. You saw me, I showed the video. I ran up the stairs, opened the door, Leah was like, What the fuck's going on? I'm like, They just fired punk, I gotta go live. And I ran downstairs and went on live. So I've been at work all Saturday and now I come home and I haven't done anything with the family. I've been doing work all day from regular work to this. So like tomorrow I'm just gonna hang out with family and that's that's it. I'm not gonna do shit. And last week when I did uh W uh, AEW, I made like sixty bucks. It's like that well, tomorrow eight hours. Tomorrow you wanna hang oh, oh, sorry. Fun. What? Well, tomorrow you want to hang out with your family, and then you find out like the next day, CM Punk signs with WWE. Yeah. Oh no, nope. going live. Yeah, yes, yeah, son. Let's play baseball. All right, here comes the ball. Oh, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. I'll see you later. You just my life. You like you like was throw the baseball, and you're not even paying attention. It hits him right in the face, and you're like, ah, oh, uh, sorry uh, about that, bud. Yeah, what are you what are you gonna do? I gotta go. Grow up. <laughs> Time to it's grow like, up, oh, son. Daughter's first dance recital, but uh, CM Punk died in a car crash. Dance I got to go recital. live on. It was my daughter's. I thought daughter's... you were going to say, thought you're say daughter's first period. You know, it. Oh my god. <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't want to go there. That actually is more coming. But uh, the dance recital yeah. thing was five years ago, so we did have that first five years ago. She was nice. adorable. I actually, I played the video on the show of her dancing. It was hilarious. I remember my first cumsies I had. She'll be a woman oh. soon. Soon. All right, guys. I'm out of here. All right. Later, Joe. Love you, boys. Good night. Love I had a night, blast Joe. tonight. I'll see them. I might see you at some it point a, for NFL talk It was tomorrow a good night. show tonight. It was a really good show. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was pretty good. Uh, our show or the <laughs> WWE show? No, tonight. I think it's been a really good show tonight. Oh, yeah, like, no, no. A, I, yeah, this was fun. good. I had, I, yeah, this is an entertainment for days. Rest in peace, Jimmy Buffett. Let's, uh, I'm going to bed, but let's, uh, let's go out to Buffett. Where's the Buffett? Let's whip out the Buffett. Whip, whip out the Buffett. Let's go whip out the Buffett. Good night, everybody. We love Jimmy Buffett. Wanted to sail upon your waters Since I was three feet tall You've seen it all Oh, you've seen it all Jimmy! 
Jimmy's up in heaven. Watch the man who rode you switch from sail to steam in your belly. You hold treasures you have ever seen. Most of them dream. Most of them dream. Buffett Daddy. Shout out to all the people in the chat. Shout out to Ghost from the Coast. The top donation from Ghost from the Coast. It's Margaritaville tonight. Heading up to San Francisco. By the way, this is the perfect song because Jimmy Buffett passed away. On uh, Saturday, right? Saturday morning, Friday night. I don't think it was Saturday morning today. And it's Labor Day weekend. And there's not a better song than Come Monday. Come Monday, Labor Day. Labor Day weekend is when Jimmy Buffett would want to go before the working year kicks back in again. You know what I'm saying? It's unbelievable. Guys, hit that like button in the chat, man. Fish me all your questions tomorrow. Please become a patron on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. And if you want to donate, uh, always do so when we're live. We have a lot of fun, and there's a brand new $16 donation, brother. We're having a good time. I love Jimmy. And up to San Francisco for the Weaver Day Weekend Show. I got my house puppies. i 
it's been quite a summer running cars and westbound trains and now you're off on vacation something you try to explain and darling yes I love you so that's the reason I just let you go come on day it'll be our a gay sailor and I put myself in him enjoying the scenery I know that it's pretty up there we can go hiking on Tuesday with you I'd walk anywhere California has warmed me quite thin I just can't wait to see you again I've been going to wrestling shows for over no, 30 Jimmy! years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. My life was in danger. My life was in danger. My life was in danger. His life was in danger, everybody. My life was in danger. Now I don't know.
CM Punk, man, he fucking tried to kill Tony Khan, according to Tony Khan. Wouldn't it be funny if CM Punk sued Tony Khan for just insinuating that his life was in danger? I could see CM Punk suing Tony Khan at this point, because now they're not friends anymore. Imagine if this whole thing was a work. It was like the greatest work ever, and CM Punk showed up at the show tomorrow night and attacked people, and this was all an angle. It'd be like the greatest fuck. It'd be like one of the best works ever. Oh, my God. It's too bad. It's definitely true, but it's... Man, it'd be great if it wasn't, you know? Biggest, most jacked guy, and please let me come. I love to play real Jimmy Buffett music, but I'd probably get hit with a huge copyright if I played real Jimmy Buffett. Biggest, most jacked guy, and please. I've been going to wrestling shows biggest, for over 30 years. Guy, and please Never let me come. in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. That is fucking crazy. I mean, like, I still can't believe I'm hearing that. You know, like, I am, um, I'm still blown away that, that he said that. Like, that is some crazy shit. Hmm. Good old Jimmy Buffett. I think we about did everything, though, tonight that I wanted to do. It's probably... Um, we don't know the con the cause of death for Jimmy Buffett, though. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. We don't know. I mean, old age. Did he, you know, some cancer thing we don't know about? I, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know why Jimmy died, man. We don't know. Too bad. It was nothing like a drunk, you know, Jimmy Buffett concert. You know? Except for when you went there when you were younger with your... The drunken uh, mother's boyfriend guy. That was a little weird. You know? That's a little weird. It took her three days on the road Looking for some peace and quiet Hope to see the sun again Fuck it, give me the copyright! She lives down by the ocean She's taking care to look for sharks They hang out in the local bar And they feed right after dark Can't you feel them circling? Jimmy Buffett! And shout out to the biggest, the baddest, the top donator, the man with the biggest erection. I love you all so much it's hard. I want to shout out to the top donator of the night, guys. Single-handedly saving the show, potentially. The man, the ghost from the coast, coming in clutch with a $100 donation. And everybody else who donated a little bit here and there throughout the night, thank you guys for supporting the show all night long. 
The ghost from the coast, especially, he really, I mean, dropped the bigger one there. Uh, Jay and Joe's World, uh, El Tapo, 90s car guy, Latvarian Savage, Pacharo, and uh, Bonesaw McGraw, Jake Nyhaus, Joshua David, and uh, did I miss anybody else? Allison Tuckwab, Mr. Pico Boulevard. And I think I got everybody. It's kind of a fairly quiet night for a for a big stream like this. Crazy, actually. I mean, we had like 500 people in here at one point, too. But you know what? Either way, I had a pretty good time here tonight. But I will say thank you to Ghost for saving it. And be in the top dono. Spiffy AC, thank you, bro. Brian, thank you, brother. Um, what did uh, Pacharo said? Pacharo is AIDS. Jesus Christ, Pacharo is AIDS. I mean, uh, Pacharo's a weird fuck, but AIDS. Jesus Christ, imagine calling somebody AIDS. You're AIDS, bro. I, I do it all the time. I don't know why I'm saying that. Imagine calling someone AIDS. I do it all the time. I know. I'm kidding. I'll call people AIDS all day long, bro. Uh, but I feel good as the champ. I, I, I um, Dork Knight, thank you, bro. Probably not. You know, Dork, you know, with how tired I am and all week and how I want to kind of wake up at some point tomorrow to have a life, you know, I um, it's not fair to say the amount that it would take to keep me on the air tonight, you know? I'd stay on for another hour maybe or, or so, but, um, yeah, I don't even, I don't even want to say it. I'm not even going to say it cause it's just, I don't think it's proper. I'm just going to, um, you know, I love you though, dork. Good to see dork night here. Um, but I appreciate it, bro. I mean, listen, we didn't, I was, I, you know, we've been on for how long? Five hours. Um, plus all the wrestling watching tonight. I mean, shit, it's been 10 hours. Plus, I went live when I got home because of CM Punk. I worked until 4, so that's what? Eight hours at work. And when I got home, I went live right away for two hours. Nine ten. Then I had something to eat. Then I watched wrestling, which I consider work now because I don't always want to do it. Um, 11, 12, 13. And then we were live. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 hours. 18 hours of my day was dedicated to... My regular shoot job that I have to work at now, and the rest of it was dedicated to this, which is a job. Um, it's not a bad job, though. It's a pretty easy job, but it becomes a harder job when you have a regular job on top of it, and all your kids are like, where are you? So I would say that um, that I worked about, I pretty much worked about 18 hours today. I feel pretty accomplished, you know? So to keep me on for another hour, you know, it would... You know, I'm pretty tired. I feel like it wouldn't be. I feel like it wouldn't even be fair. I feel like if somebody was like, "I'm gonna keep you on for 50 bucks," I feel like I would. I would. I almost want to send it back to them because it'll be the worst hour of the night. You know, because I'm so tired. So it's like I feel bad. But um, see, so yeah, I wouldn't even want to throw out a number. It'd probably be like, probably be a high number to keep me on, and I wouldn't do that because that's just weird. So I'll just sign off and say thank you, uh, to everybody. Uh, Jay Savage is going to eat uh, tuna fish. That's hot. Dork, you come on. You should have been on earlier. Where you been, you fuck? Come on uh, tomorrow, though. Well, actually, no, tomorrow I'm not doing anything you're right. I am. I, I will be live tomorrow for an hour uh, later in the night um, to do my my uh, the football show. So if you're into football and you want to talk about that, we'll – Probably will be live with that unless something catastrophic happens in my life. I will be, uh, I'll be there. Cena has skin cancer. Uh, is that true? I don't. Th I don't. I think Cena doesn't look old as fuck. I just think he he's you know he's losing his hair, and so when you see Cena balding, it's hard to like. You know why he looks old is because he's always looked young like Cena, and now as he turns forty six. Cena is 46. He is dressing the same way that he always dressed, which is like an eight-year-old. 
So Cena's dressed like an eight-year-old, and he's balding. So that's what's making you feel like, wow. And also, he's losing weight to be more cut in for movies, and that's giving him that earnest look that he's got going on. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's like me. It's like at a certain point from here, maybe I look younger a little bit at certain takes. Like if I go like this. And I look at the camera and I'm like, yo, what's up? What's up? It's like, how old do I look? I don't know. But if I take my hat off. And we look at my fucking balding hair. You know what I mean? I I just put five, six, seven years on myself right there. I'm 40. I'm going to be fucking 40 in like six months or whatever it is. I've aged all of a sudden, like from, and I looked, I looked young. And and so three years ago, my hair, I started balding ish, going thin hair about three, four years ago, like when it really started aggressively going. And in the last two years, it's like, boom, it's fucked me in the ass, bro. So it's like, when you think about that, it's like it can just hit you all of a sudden. So imagine, like, what am I going to look like in seven years when I'm seen as age? Do you know what I mean? So, like, I get that. Like, that's why. So it looks shocking what Cena looks like. You know, and I and I dress like the, I've always dressed the same way, too, for the most part. So it's like you're watching the person who's still dressed like they're. 16 20 and 25 and 28 and 30 but now they suddenly hit that older age and they're still wearing the fucking same gear so it just looks silly and at some point you almost have to dress older like dress your age in a way to like to where it's like yeah you're you're dressed like an older person that sucks but like you are older so it matches up whereas if you're an older person dressed really young it looks weird so it's like, what do you do? You know, but you, but it also does help you look younger. So, you know, I don't know, bro. So, I mean, I, I can remember bitching about shit when I was 30. When I was 30, I was like, oh my God, I'm 30. I'm fucking old. Ugh. Like, but now it's like, I'm almost 40. It's like, why did you say that when you were 30? When you're 30, you were so young. Same thing when you're 30 and you remember 20. You're like, damn, you were so young when you were 20. You always do this. You always look back and go, damn, I was so young. Why did I think I was old? You're like so. It sucks when you get in the mindset of always thinking you're old, because then it's just that's just stupid. Jimmy Buffett passed away from cell. Oh, skin cancer. So he did have it. He had skin cancer. Wow, that sucks, bro. How did that take his life? Like the was his all of his skin burning, or like did it get into his blood? What kills you about the skin cancer? Like what about skin cancer kills you? Like did he look all fucked up from it dude it's got to be because he was in the sun all the time you know what i mean he was always in the fucking sun you know in the caribbean and shit always in the sun that is so but, but that makes sense doesn't it for jimmy buffett that's crazy it's a very rare type of skin cancer that forms when the cells grow out of control wow it's a rare skin cancer. That is crazy. Dude, so what, like, how does that kill you, though? Like, how long does it take? And, like, is that horrific? Or, like, oh, my God, dude. I feel like, but, I, you know, he passed away, like, in his, surrounded by loved ones in, in, in his sleep or something, they said, I believe. So it's like. Like, what type of... I just feel awful. That sounds like it, it just slowly would destroy you. Oh, it's awful. I'm looking at pictures of people with it. Oh, no, bro. Oh, my God. It's awful. Don't ever look this up. I'm telling you guys. Don't ever look this up. These lesions grow in your eyes and stuff. Oh, my God. You don't want to look this up. 
man, I would like, I would tell them, please kill me. So I don't get to that point. I would never want this stuff growing out of my eyes. Oh my God. It's growing all over you in crazily. It's so weird. Oh, it's so bad. Don't ever give somebody this. This is terrible. Dude, if somebody gets this. Oh my God. No, dude. This is actually really terrible. Oh my God, bro. This is so awful. They blank out most people's eyes in the pictures because it's that bad. Jesus Christ. I like, why would you let someone live through this? Oh my God, no. Oh, this is real. I wish I didn't look at this up. I wish I did not look this up, man. This is terrible. Why did I look that up? I oh my God, please God, let them have ki of like. I hope they they like. I hope they like drip. They they took them out. Oh my God, it's awful. Oh, J Jim Ross has the skin cancer in the leg, but I mean they've they've got that sorted now. But that was so painful and stuff. But this one is really ugly because it grows in your eyes a lot of times. Oh, it's so awful, guys. Don't ever look this up. I'm telling you. Oh, my God, bro. I hope that I hope that I would please I would beg to be taken out before ever dealing with that. Never would I want to deal with that. I would, dude, if there's something that's going to grow over my eyes and be painful and grow in my eyes and stuff, please take me out. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, guys. I better get out of here. I'm just, I'm shocked by what I just saw. Uh, but um, I hope that Jimmy was, you know, I hope Jimmy, um, I hope they, they took him out. You know, I hope they, you know, we do it to dogs. Put people down just like you put dogs down. There's no reason not to do it. If somebody is, like, really going to fade away, like, just put him down, you know? Um, hopefully he was put down in a calm way or whatever. Um, rest in peace, Jimmy Buffett, goddamn legend. Um, thank you all for being here tonight. And uh, I had a good time. And everybody get some good sleep. And uh, thank you guys so much for, uh, for, you know, supporting the channel and everything you guys do. We'll see you uh, for the, the football show briefly tomorrow night, maybe. Um, and that's it, man. I'd say uh, Payback was a – I'd give Payback a 6.5 out of 10, maybe. 6.5 out of 10, thumbs up in a way. And, uh, you know, and that's it. I think we I think we did it all, man. Tony Khan is afraid he was in danger for his life, and I'm going to bed. Good night. I've been going to wrestling shows for over 30 years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show.